No, we had to suffer yesterday, and uh, <laughs> uh. I, I just realized it might be muted for that. I didn't check. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Re, re. Anyway, it's just in case it was muted, I'll say it again. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well today. Yeah. Uh, so, um, oh, some very amazing, high-quality products have been released lately. Um, the, the title of the video is actually a bit inaccurate. I said there's two pieces of garbage out right now, but She-Hulk is also being released right now, but none of us have watched that, so we can't cover it. Yeah, Thank can't God. talk about. Yeah, can't talk about She-Hulk. But it's it's pretty fucking dog shit. I have not reason. heard a single good thing about it. Same. Um, I know in the suggestions channel on Discord, uh, someone wanted me to respond to or not respond, but wanted us to react to She-Hulk twerking. It's just like, no, no, no. Don't. I mean, I've seen it. But... With, I've seen it too. Unfortunately, I don't know why this exists. You didn't like the twerking? No, I have standards. Yep. It's right up there with uh, Zootopia porn and Resident Evil. <laughs> God, it's amazing that show got cancelled. I'm so happy. Yeah, thank God. Man, I, I, I can't understand how such an amazing show got cancelled. Why would you do this, <laughs> Netflix? <laughs> I'm sure everyone is terribly upset that your dog shit Resident Evil show got cancelled. Oh yeah, for sure. Hey, don't bring those things down to She-Hulk's oh. level. <laughs> yep. Uh, the Resident Evil show got cancelled, Thunderstruck. Thank fuck, too. Yeah, now let's hope uh, Rings of Power meets the same fate. We'll be getting to that a little later. Absolutely, yes. They've almost they've almost wasted half a billion dollars already. Please, please let it get canceled. Please let it completely destroy Amazon Prime. That'd be <laughs> fucking incredible. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe not completely destroy, but damage it to the point where it's like, oh, we can't do this dumb bullshit anymore. Hey, Invincible Season 2, let's make it good. Hey, let's make another thing of the Terminal List. That'd be fucking great. Even though Terminal List wrapped up, you know, in a good place. I would be down for more of it because, holy fucking hell, Chris Pratt can actually carry, like, really, really well when he's given a script that's actually good. Well, that's good, at least. Anyways, um... We were going to cover a Saints Row video... Uh, a Saints Row 2022 video. And it was kind of short. It was kind of... Eh, but it was a good way to talk about how terrible the game is. Then I found another video. You guys ready? <laughs> uh, if I say no, I'm going to do it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It's more of a formality uh, asking if you guys are ready. Yeah. To just, you know... I have to do it. Oh, man. Yeah, I previewed a bit of this one, and it was way worse than the other one, so... <laughs> Saints Row, a beloved gaming IP with a history of being over-the-top, unforgivingly offensive, and all around just a bit of fun. No, actually. No. Again, that's Saints Row 3 and 4 and got out of hell. That was not... What Saints Row 1 and 2 was. Saints Row 1 was a shameless GTA clone. Uh, it's not bad at it either, but that's obvious what they were going for, right? Yeah. Saints Row 2, yeah, it had a bit more comedy in it and a bit more levity, but you still had the seriousness to it. You still had the uh, the dark tones and dark moments and everything. It was still very much grounded. It was yeah. it was definitely a gangster story. Yeah. Um, um, and as, as Cree got to see on the Saints Row 2 stream, the uh, when when he was given when the boss was giving out orders to the lieutenants, uh, Shondi, you're on you're on the Samedi. Do I have to? The fuck you say? I mean, I'm at school. The Samedi, fine. Uh, the funny part about that is, 
after being on your streams while you were playing fucking Saints Row 2022, I yeah. actually went and started playing the original Saints Row as a palate cleanser, and mm -hmm. holy shit, it is actually pretty good. Uh, I remember enjoying it as a kid, but after going through Saints, uh, the new Saints Row with you, um, it's just so refreshing to see characters acting normally and, you know, plotting what... Making plans that make sense to take out the enemy gangs, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a similar scene, a very similar scene in the original Saints Row, where um, Julius is handing out orders. Uh, I think that's his name. Um, yep. he, he's handing out orders in the same way your character is at Saints Row 2, and the same fucking thing happens. Someone is get assigned to a gang they don't want, and uh, they're just like, uh, "Do I? Uh, not them." The fuck you say? So it ended up being a really good callback in Saints Row 2. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially since it's a, your character in Saints Row 2 is supposed to be the character from Saints Row 1. So, yep, you send survived. it to the leadership role, you've, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it fits, mm. it makes sense. Like, I know Chris you, said not... Go ahead. You and... Uh, Gat are basically the only true survivors of the Saints after everything happened in Saints Row One. So yeah. it's just it's just really cool to see, like, oh hey, the the world moved on and everything like that, and because of the, the shockwaves you did it, they redid the city and everything, and it allowed this corporation to rise to provide security, and we've got new gangs that took over the places because now we we obviously when the Saints collapsed as well, a huge power vacuum is now been left yeah so new criminal enterprises came in yeah i know we said not to worry about uh spoiling these games but if he's playing the first game then would talking about julius be a it's, spoiler because yeah, he's because played, of what he's happened played saints are one already yeah i know but what about two because there's there's a the thing with julius in saints row two yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. I'm not too concerned about it. If it's something worth bringing up to talk about the series uh, for covering these, well, these videos, this video, um, just bring it up. It's more important okay. to have the proper references there than just skipping it because of spoilers for me. All right, because that was the only thing I was worried about was if you've played Saints Row 1 and not 2, then that might actually be like a spoiler for you. But if you don't mind, then... Well, that's, why he, that's up, legitimately why he said he didn't care before, because we, we, I was talking about Saints Row 2 spoilers already. Okay. I just want to make sure. Saints Row went downhill hard starting with 3. Tried way too hard to be goofy, like a clown. I, re I, I played agree. Saints Row... Th so, I played the original. I missed 2 and ended up playing 3 when it came out. I remember enjoying 3, despite how crazy, wacky, and weird it was. Um, it's actually a bit of a shock going back to the original Saints Row and seeing how restrained it was in comparison. Yep. Even yeah. even even Saints Row Two, for all the goofy stuff you do, Septic Avenger, where you're on you're on a, a septic draining tank and you literally spray shit on people's houses. It's like yeah, that's amusing and funny, but you can understand why they're doing it. They're not just doing it to spray shit on people's houses. They're doing it to fuck up the housing market. Like, I didn't they, know they you get to logical... play a Dutch farmer in uh, Saints Row 2. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they're, they're doing it for logical reasons. Like, why are you why are you dressing up as a police officer and beating the shit out of people? Well, it's fun gameplay, but there's a logical reason to it. The one guy is doing it so that, you know, he can get his clients off because his clients right now are screwed. He's a lawyer, and he's a dirty lawyer, and he needs to make the police look bad so that the jury and everything will look less favorably upon the police that are bringing the charges. So he wants you to go out there and be as corrupt and horrible as possible. Like, you can see the, the logical series of things. Like, yeah, are they fun? Absolutely. The, you've got a cameraman driving around with you while you're dressed up as a cop, and he's like, it's like, do you guys ever use chainsaws? So you pull out a fucking chainsaw and you cut a criminal in half and stuff like that. And like, <laughs> obviously that's completely like unacceptable for a cop to do. But you know, you're again, you're trying to make them look bad. Yes, it's stuff like that. Here's this jaywalker. My favorite, my favorite one is when you're playing as the police 
uh, we got a call that a bunch of people are committing insurance fraud. Go take care of it. So you go over there and they're doing the exact thing that you do when you play the insurance fraud mini game. They're literally running around and jumping in front of cars and ragdolling and going, ah, ah. <laughs> so you have to go shoot them. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, that yeah, is great. great. I fucking um, love that. And, and playing Saints Row 1 again, I think I said this in one of our uh, private chats, but it's worth saying here uh, for the stream. Um, it very much seems like a lot of the inspiration for Saints Row 1, just from playing it, is uh, from the gang warfare shit from San Andreas, without the big sort of grandiose story that happens uh, outside of that aspect. Because... That is all that Saints Row 1 really is, is the whole gang territory stuff. Um, doing all these missions to take down the enemy gangs, and then uh, a little bit how the main the original game wraps up. But that's, that's mostly what it is, it's just the gang warfare shit. And it's great, I've been having a blast with it. Yeah. I did have fun with three, but I definitely like even when I was younger and played it, I was like, ah, I don't like where this is going. Like I could tell that it was getting too goofy and weird, and uh, especially once once the uh, the DLC came out, and then four, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, I, I would... sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, so yeah, I would say I would agree that three was kind of the uh, the start of the downward trend of the series. Yeah, yeah, uh, because they, they went total absurdist there at that point. They're like, yeah, this could be our brand to differentiate ourselves. You didn't need to differentiate you differentiate yourselves. Saints Row Two was different enough. You just need to do Saints Row Two again. Um, cryogenic and chat. Uh, Such actually told us that story yesterday. Uh, yeah. There's a part in Fuzz where you have to stop a college prank. It's a bunch of students chainsawing civilians. Yeah, they're and just the running around is, chainsawing people. And, and the objective is stop the prank? Yeah. Because <laughs> you get called, there's, we've got a dangerous college hazing ritual going on. Go break it up. And you're like, okay, so you get over there. And the cameraman's like, what the fuck? Because you just see a bunch of college students running around with chainsaws, cutting people in half and stuff. And then your mission objective updates to stop the prank, in air quotes. <laughs> so, so the dispatch, your, your character, because the objectives are basically in your character's head. So dispatch your character and the cameraman with you are all like, what the fuck? Honestly, realistically, that fuzz mission should be fucking impossible to complete because it's supposed to be making the cops look bad, and there's no way to look bad in that situation. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the vibe I get for Saints Row 3. I, I'll play, I played, like I said, I played through Saints Row 3, got everything. When I got the immunity, like, god mode, I... Uh, changed my character to female, cranked the tits all the way up, put a couple stickers on her nipples, and then jumped out of a plane and said, I'm reenacting Hiroshima. <laughs> and, and again, because that's all you could kind of really do in Saints Row 3. And as Tyler McDonald puts it, LOL, we made a giant purple dildo melee weapon. So random, right, guys? That's just kind of all Saints Row 3 was. Yeah. And it, it, like I said, it, the series was lesser for it. It went downhill. Saints Row 2 is still the height of the series. There's no way to look bad in that situation. You'd be surprised, Cree. It's students chainsawing random civilians. I think you're pretty just, pretty fucking justified in blowing them away with a shotgun. Yep. It gets even funnier when it's like, there are peaceful protesters out in front of the mayor's house. Oh, do you guys still use rocket launchers? <laughs> <laughs> Boom. 
unforgivingly offensive and all around just a bit of fun. This new game is a reboot of the franchise and by looking at any game review on YouTube or Google you will quickly see the general public opinion. But in spite of all this criticism, negativity and hostility towards this new release, I wanted to find out for myself, is Saints Row really that bad? I can answer that question for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It um, is offensive to people that actually enjoyed Saints Row. This is one of some of the biggest dog shit we have ever seen. Why do you think there's so much hostility towards the games? Well, game. Maybe yeah. there's a reason for it. Most people don't get out of bed one day and just go, Man, I'm gonna hate this thing for no reason. There, there's usually a reason behind it. Yeah, um, and so and sometimes, to be fair, like Mike, uh, some people are contrarians. That's absolutely true. But for whatever reason, they don't want to go with the crowd, so they the mind will invent reasons why they don't like the thing, and then they'll just go against it. So, if you ever watch Red Letter Media and you ever watch um, uh, Best of the Worst, you'll you'll find out very quickly Mike's a contrarian <laughs> to the point that all of the co-hosts and everything like that, everybody else on the show is. Is like, oh, shut the fuck up. We know exactly what you're doing. Get it over with. <laughs> I, I just love the fact that he invented a show called Best of the Worst, where you're supposed to pick the best movie of all these garbage movies you're watching, and he always goes for the worst. Yeah, he can't, he can't help himself. <laughs> bad. But before we get into things, I want to make a few statements that will be important throughout the rest of this video. Firstly, despite what many people may think, the technical quality of a product does not directly correlate to the enjoyment of said product. It's okay. partially correct. Yeah, but it can. Again, if the product is a complete bug riddled mess where you can't even get off the main menu, that's going to affect your fucking enjoyment of the product, isn't it? Yeah, or if you get fucking locked out of progressing through the game because a cutscene keeps crashing your fucking game over and, you and over. Play the entire mission all over again. Yeah. <clears throat> Just, oh boy, it's it's almost, you know, I, I wonder what we could be referring to. Like, that might have fucking happened to me. Yeah. I thought you were just mission. replaying that mission so much because you really, really liked it. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> so again, also, like I said, I will agree to an extent that they're not a direct correlation. I will yeah. agree. I mean, because yeah. you have how... games that are buggy, but they're still fun because the bugs can be hilarious. Like weird, goofy things can happen. Well, and it's not intended. It's obviously it's jank. It's not programmed well, whatever. But it's something funny happened and it increased your enjoyment of it. Not even that, Sash. Look at how many people like Skyrim and Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, and those are fucking disasters when it comes to being buggy. Not just yeah. buggy, but the quality overall is dog shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something I wanted to um, clarify as well was that while something being buggy doesn't necessarily take away the enjoyment of it, it still does hamper the overall experience of the game. Like, it, I, I'm still totally fine with games getting a lower score if. You know, if the game is a bug-riddled mess, like, uh, like New Vegas is a great game, but I do agree, like, taking a point or two off of it because of how buggy it was. Now, obviously, they had a lot more excuse than fucking Bethesda because they had way shorter of a time span to actually make the game. But, you know, yeah. it's still, I, I'm still totally fine with, like, them losing a point for, you know, the for the quality because it was buggy at release, especially on release. Oh, my God, the release was super buggy uh they did patch it and it got a little bit better but it was still it's still a problem and it deserves to lose some points for that now i would still argue it's still a really fun and great game i don't think that hampers the enjoyment but it does lower the quality it seems world everyone expects everything to be a perfect product and when they find any little mistake in it, that apparently makes it a failure. While the quality... No. 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 I'm so fucking sick of this argument. Yeah. I Remember when we covered that video just before the 50th stag? It's like, fuck, we dealt with this in the very first video we covered. 
all the way back in stag one and here we are at stag 49 and we're still dealing with it and we're dealing with it again here it, it's just this argument needs to fucking die people need to leave it alone people aren't saying oh uh, a prop is jittering in the new saints row that means it's a zero out of ten no one is fucking saying that no yep, one is yeah. saying that fucking anything is a terrible worthless piece of garbage because of slight issues no one yeah okay maybe there's some people demanding perfection they're very few and far between yeah yeah but yeah no it's not just nitpicking that's bullshit like there are entire missions for some people that they can't even play because it, it just won't work like the missions won't start properly um they get to an objective marker and it, it, the, the thing won't update, so they can't play that mission. Uh, we had the whole fucking, you know, cutscene issue where anytime the cutscene would play at that specific part, it would crash the whole fucking game and we'd have, and such would have to replay that, that whole section again. Yep. And all kinds of shit like this. It's, it's all throughout the whole fucking game. It's not just, oh, the, the fucking, when cars drive into a parked uh, monster truck, they flatten for some reason. It's not just that. It's everything else that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And my god, the, the amount of time... Like, the monster truck thing is so fucking stupid and so obviously incompetent design that if, if your enemy, if the Panteros bring monster trucks, shoot the drivers, and then put the monster trucks wherever you don't want to look anymore, like, you just want to be like, <laughs> oh, that place is secure, the enemy will keep driving underneath them and killing themselves. Yep. Um, only two? She-Hulk exists, my gamer. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier. None of us has watched it, so we can't uh, talk about it. So yes, yeah. the title is a bit inaccurate. Yeah, we would we would add She-Hulk if any of us have seen it. None of us here have seen it. So Yeah, yeah there, I am terribly sorry, but there is only so much suffering I could take at once, and I still work a full-time job in a factory. So... Maybe once mm. I can get rid of that, maybe I'll cover something like She-Hulk. But oh, right God. now we've got Saints Row, which I had to suffer through the streams Setch did. And mm -hmm. Rings of Power currently coming out. Dear, dear fucking God. Yeah, I'm really holding back on that Rings of Power stuff. I want to talk about that shit oh, so bad. Because it's so, oh, high. so bad. Yeah, hopefully She-Hulk goes the way of Bebop Flicks and Resident Evil and gets cancelled. Hopefully yeah. Rings of Power does the same. Yeah, hopefully. Oh yeah, not to mention, that's another key example, key thing. Uh, the new Saints Row is an Epic Game Store exclusive. So you already know that this game was fucked to begin with. Yeah. Anybody that takes like a game store exclusive has no fucking integrity. I don't give a shit what anyone's like. Oh, but it's an indie dev. No. If you take exclusivity on the PC platform, you have no fucking integrity. Yeah. Deal with it. Yeah. Epic Game Store exclusivity is definitely a big red flag. It doesn't mean the game is going to be poorly made. Um, this just happened to be one that is. Well, it usually means that they don't trust the game at all, so they want to get that cash influx, the cash flow up front. They want to get that big cash wad. Yeah, that's why I refuse to buy, um... Uh, Outer Worlds... Okay. Outer Worlds did not by choice. They did not do that. They were with a publisher, and that entire publisher went to Epic Games. Over Obsidian's objection, by the way. Yeah, they got fucked over. They were actively against it, so... It's not the same. Yeah, the um, publisher got all the money, too. Obsidian didn't. Fuck, I forget fuck. the name... I forget the Private name of that, that last... Yeah, the last Metro game that came out, I forget the name of it. Exodus. Um, Exodus, yeah, I refused to buy that game specifically, because I have all the other Metro games, but I refused to get that one because it was, um, I don't, I think it was only temporarily exclusive on, on that, but I, th that was enough to make me go, I don't, I don't want anything to do with it, fuck off. Yeah. Also, it didn't help that they were shit-talking their fans and stuff, and I was just like, okay, fuck you. So, yeah, Obsidian. I, Obsidian's entire history is them getting fucked over. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's it's Obsidian's fucking curse. They're they're always getting fucked over by their publishers. It's you it's know insane. You you just saying that reminded me of um, 
it, it's sad to think that Obsidian gets fucked over so much, and then we have fucking weirdos out here that are like, man, I'm glad Project er, Cyberpunk 2077 failed so I could have revenge upon Obsidian. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking rainbow cut. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn schizo. He is a fucking weirdo. Yeah. yeah. Quality of rising graphics, gameplay, etc. is a contributing factor to the enjoyment of a game. Having these things all be perfect is not necessary to create a positive experience. And it's nobody normal. says that, and nobody wants that. Yes. Point to me the people who are saying this needs to be perfect. I fucking despise this stupid goddamn straw man so much. Yeah. Oh, people are being critical of a thing? Well, clearly they demanded perfection. What if the thing is just fucking dog shit? Have you ever considered that? Like... Why is it always this? There's criticism against uh, this... Uh, entry to a popular media franchise that people don't like? Well, that just means they're all demanding perfection. Fuck off! Which, fuck holy fuck. Fuck off! Go to yeah. hell! How can anyone say that? Like... I'm, maybe there those people exist, maybe, but I have yet to see a single person demand perfection from any of these things. Anything that I've seen criticized, I have not seen a single person ever demand that it was perfect. Neither have I. Um, I've seen a lot of criticism against games in my time on the internet. I've never, like, ever seen anyone demanding perfection. Like, absolute perfection. Yeah. People point out the have, flaws in something. It doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't mean I you're demanding absolute perfection. I have seen people claim that there are games that are absolute perfection before as a way to be like, well, well, that game is buggy, but but Knights of the Old Republic 1 has no bugs in it whatsoever. And then you point out all the bugs that it has like that, but I didn't experience them, so they don't exist. It's like, yeah, I've seen those weirdos before. Yeah. I dealt with them mm. in Mahler's Discord. <laughs> Fucking piece Sky of weirdo sh Skyrim wow. is 10 out of 10. Badass seal of approval. It's perfect. Mm. Yeah. I want this thing to be competently made. It does not equal it needs to be perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, New Vegas is another great example of that. You know, it's it was a buggy game. It, it did have a lot of issues, but then look at it now. It's it's loved. It's it's a cult classic. People love it. Yep. You know, it's people still... don't need perfection. They just want good. What is it? Isn't it still the most played Fallout game to this day? Even yes, with Fallout 76? Yep. So, there you go. Second, although comparison can be a helpful and constructive tool, especially when talking about a franchise release, it shouldn't be heavily relied upon to criticize a new game purely because it's different to one of the originals. Call of Duty... Uh, it absolutely should. This is a reboot. It should. And so that's it 100% also... should be compared to the original. Yeah, that's also not the only reason why people are disliking it. It's not that it's because it's different. It's the changes that they made are for fucking insulting. Yeah, they're for the worst. They're just insulting. Like I said, this game is... Uh, completely offensive to anybody that actually likes Saints Row. Especially if you were a fan of Saints Row 1 or 2. I mean, there's a reason, like, I was fucking pissed for most of the streams. It's kind of ironic. It, it's offensive to people who like the original Saints Row, specifically because it neutered itself so much and took out all the offensive stuff. Like, that's and part of the reasons why. fucking retard. Yeah. Every single character in the new Saints Row is an idiot. Every single one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even even the one we thought was going to be good, and we actually thought, oh, hey, you know, like a normal Saints Row character stuck in this reboot. It, like, that's kind of funny. But, like, at least we like this guy. And then towards the end of the game, he turns into a complete fucking retard worse than everyone else. And it's like, what happened? <laughs> like, this, he completely changed into a completely different character. Yeah. I mean, literally, he... he... 180s and goes into fucking bizarro world like just on, on a dime it is fucking weird yeah i i could not believe it it took me completely out of left field yeah uh political commentary re jim robs rip freckle bitches yeah yep. it, it it is insane how much fucking politics are shoved into this game in like the first hour 
Oh, I took on this job for my student loan debt. We're gonna go rob this uh, morally bankrupt comp. No, I don't deal with morally bankrupt companies, so I'm gonna rob them instead. Uh, oh, we need to steal cars to get there. Can we take a uh, hybrid? I love that you're concerned about uh, fuel efficiency, but we're gonna need acceleration. You always gotta worry about your car- Even when one of the guys gets fucking shot! He's saying we need to take a fuel-efficient car to drive him to the fucking hospital. No, 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 no. I watched part no. one of your stream, by the way, Such. No, he doesn't He doesn't say that. He does. He doesn't say that. No, he doesn't. He says, wait, but but Eli will want us to take a fuel-efficient one. Fuck that, I've been shot! Is that how it happened? Yes. Oh. It's one of the other characters saying it on Eli's behalf, and Eli says, Fuck that, I've been shot! Get me the home fast! Oh. Well, still, the fact that any of them even fucking consider that during that situation is just fucked. Yeah. Also, hey, it's still, it's still completely fucked. Like, the, the, the thing is just stupid as all hell. Yeah, it is near constant and obnoxious. And to the yep. other things, uh, based no bark mentioned to chat, Jim Robs and Freckle Bitches. Yeah. So in the original series, there's a, um, I forget what it was called in Grand Theft Auto, but there, you know, car modification, you can paint your car, you can change how it looks, so it looks, you know, so it looks the way you want. Their version of that in Saints Row was rim jobs, because cars have rims, and it's a joke about eating ass, or doing a job on the rims of your car, so, yeah. ass eating joke, it's fine. Paint yep. spray, yeah. Um... Anyways, they've changed this to be Jim Robs because I guess that joke was just too raunchy for Saints fucking row. And yep. they give it this derp fucking logo and uh, it's just dumb. It's just like, why did that need to be removed or changed? And same for yeah. Freckle Bitches. Like, sure, it's not subtle in the fucking slightest, but who cares? Now it's just FBs. Yep. I guess they uh, didn't bring back the Chinese restaurant either. I don't actually know if they did or not. No, no, they didn't. This is much more about... This is uh, Mexicans, uh, Latino influence here. It's far that, more far more that influence. But than, that still brings up the question of why the fuck is there a, a, a flur in the church? Yeah. Yeah. Now you can you can make an argument that the French were the most engaged with the Mexican population and the Spanish. Uh, France and Spain would oftentimes go against the British, so it, it does make some semblance of sense. However, it's a fleur de lis, and that's not a common symbol when it comes to like religious iconography, even in France. So it's just it's it's just fucking weird. It, it, it's really fucking weird. Yeah, and and the re, for anyone that doesn't know, the the restaurant's name was Fuck Me, Fuck You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. That's amazing. Yeah. See, it's it's uh, not too subtle, but it's fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> Bang I... ding ow. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up. <laughs> Um, some Ting Wong. Yes, yeah, some Ting Wong. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fook. <laughs> <laughs> shitty walk. Welcome to <laughs> Shitty Walk. Now we take your walk. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, I don't think there's anything funny in the New Saints Row. Not that I saw. Maybe I was just too busy being annoyed by all the dumb shit in this story and the obnoxious characters. But, yeah. We too low? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, it's all been stripped away and sanitized. It, all the gangs and everything. Well, gangs, I say, because there's only two. And then a paramilitary corporation, a private military corporation. And the gangs are, like, they're so fucking generic, it hurts. The Saints, the Saints, I have no idea what the Saints are even supposed to be about. They're, the Saints are completely fucked. Like, how they even got the name Saints is incredibly stupid, too. It's 
none of it makes any fucking sense. That entire, that whole yeah. fucking scene of them getting their name is, is the stupidest fucking thing. You can see it coming from a mile away. Where are we going to go? We're going to go to the old mission church that's uh, that's up for sale. It's on 3rd Street. And then, for whatever reason, there's a fleur de lis there on the floor. And they're like, well, we've got our logo. What are we going to call ourselves? I don't know. And your character's looking at the statue of an angel. He's like, we're going to call ourselves the Saints. The 3rd Street Saints. How do you get Saints from yourself. Angel? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to call ourselves the Angels. That could have happened with the way they came up with the the, uh, the name. Yep. Yeah. It's fucking annoying. The, it is it's so also weird because they don't seem to want to, like, identify as a gang, like gangbangers yeah, or anything. No. They want to... Uh, th- they're, yeah. more, they're more of, like, a, a college youth group. That's yeah. legitimately yeah. what they try to come off as. I think one of them even describes it as, like, a business venture or, like... Something to that effect. Not a corporation, but not a gang either. Yeah. Yeah. To the to the point where the par- the private military corporation, Marshall, actually says, due to your non-compete clause, we now own the Saints. And they're like, oh shit, he's right. This legal documentation says he owns the Saints. So now you have to do this whole convoluted shit to get a new member of the board place so you can do a vote of no confidence against Marshall and get him ousted so you can get the Saints back under your name legally. And it's like, the fuck? You're a criminal enterprise. You're drug running, you fucking idiots. Yeah. Well, also, that that whole fucking setup doesn't work anyway because he was fucking fired. He doesn't work for them anymore. The contract is null and void. Yeah. Fucking, oh, it's so stupid. And then, of course, there's that fucking scene where you got to go get a fucking toy for your stupid friend from McDonald's or whatever. And at the end of it, he's like, we're going to give these uh, toys to the orphanage down the street because Ooh. we're not gang. We're good guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is so annoying. Fucking hell. Um, what was the story behind uh, the Saints in the original game? Julius made the Third Street Saints to stop gang vo- uh, violence, kind of like antiheroes. Yeah, yep. that's um, cryogenic responding to key man there. Uh, yeah, that's why they were created in the original game. Though, it does come off as a bit weird that um, he created the gang to stop gang violence, and then the entire game is about committing gang violence against the other gangs. Well, it becomes <laughs> it becomes more obvious that Julius is a bit uh, mm, just kind of ambitious. Let's yeah. Put it that way. Um. Technically, in Catholicism and Orthodox, uh, angels can be saints too, like Saint Michael, the Archangel. See, the thing about that is, the I don't think the average person is going to know that. Yeah. Like if you go and, to and some these random, characters, if you these go, characters especially aren't going to know that. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it is hard to overstate how stupid every single one of these characters are. They go and rob a place without masks, with one of them even having his shirt off so that, you know, they could see all those tattoos. This is like, you know, we are talking about people that are so stupid, they make children look intelligent. They make children look like fucking Einstein. (laughs) People are brain dead. Yeah, and see, the very first mission of the original Saints Row is you fighting a bunch of the Saints and them you, you either win against them or you get the shit beaten out of you. Because that's like the entry thing to the Saints. You need to be canonized. That's not in this game. And it's fine that it's not in this game. But the point I'm getting at is... The original really made it seem like an actual gang. Whereas this one, it's just a bunch of fucking weirdos LARPing. Yes. Um, oh, and speaking of LARPing... Oh, God. Speaking of... Eli... So, everybody else in in the crew of your lieutenants you're all living together in a shitty apartment and nobody can make rent or anything like that which is why you rob the store to begin with the the cash advance place to well hold on with. can i jump and in just quickly it doesn't matter no i'm gonna continue um eli is the only one that isn't a part of any gang yeah but he is part of a larping group and this larping this is this LARPing group is offensive to anybody that actually does live action role live action role play, because they just do it out of cardboard, and it's really shitty. It's obviously Game of Thrones, like obviously painfully 
it's Game of Thrones. And the developers were so fucking lazy that they throw in the excuse of, uh, uh, why is that guy acting so weird when I shot him with a cardboard gun? Oh, everybody's in on it. If you shoot at a car tire, it pops. The car tires are in on it. If you shoot at a car, it explodes. The cars are in on it. If you fight bosses in the fucking story with these cardboard guns, the bosses are in on it. Yeah, it's insanely fucking stupid. Yeah, it is It is so beyond fucked. And again, talk about being so dismissive of LARPers. Oh, it's all just, it's all just cardboard and duct tape and everything. Instead of people actually putting in enough work to learn blacksmithing and actually forging their own armor and weapons. And, like, people that go really into it, they get deep into it, they turn into their own business. I also want to point out something here. Steve Urkel looking ass? What a fucking insult to Steve Urkel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He does not deserve to be associated with this dumb fuck Eli. Yeah, Urkel is way more intelligent, well-spoken, and has more social grace than Eli. <laughs> God, it is it is fucking absurd. No, no, no. The way you beat the final boss in the Saints Row game is oh. beyond fucked. We're going to talk about it more. Your character draws a Glock and fans the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that know a single thing about guns, or even if you don't, Glocks don't have hammers. A Glock is a striker-fired weapon. Oh, it's so fucked. It is just yeah. beyond fucked. <laughs> like, he doesn't even react to getting shot. Like, he barely even, like, winces or anything. Like, you wouldn't even know that you hit him if it wasn't for the fact that he falls over a second later. And it's like, oh, we did hit him. Because the way that the cutscene plays out, it looks like you both miss each other. Not yeah. just that. You're at such a range where you shouldn't miss, and he fired at the same time, so you should be hit, too. Yeah. Yes. Um, I want to grab this comment. Chad Urkel versus Virgin Eli. <laughs> Just yeah, imagining you're... Steve Urkel drawn as the Chad is fucking hilarious. Dude, somebody needs to do that. Oh my god, please. Anybody with actual artistic <laughs> talent, you need to make Steve Urkel look like the Chad. And I fully give him everything. Give him the goofy glasses and the pants pulled up to his fucking tits. Do oh, do all of it, right? <laughs> but but still, have him be the Chad, yeah, obviously. Still with the Chad body Eli. type. Yes. <laughs> Please do it. Please, absolutely. Oh, and if anyone does do this, when you draw Eli, be sure to draw, uh, draw the version of him that got shot so there's blood on him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tentacle dude, you know what to do. Get on it. <laughs> <laughs> the original one, and Black Ops 3 are both seen as some of the greatest games in the Call of Duty franchise, but if you were to criticize and condemn Black Ops 3 because it doesn't reflect the qualities and style of COD 4, then you would be missing out on a new and enjoyable experience. Now, just to- No, no one is saying that the games can't diverge from what was there originally. Diverging yeah. and still being good is one thing. Diverging and being do well, being dog shit in general, is another is thing entirely. Absolutely. And and not just not just to mention that, but Black Ops is not a reboot of fucking Call of Duty. It was made clear that Black Ops is a side branch. It is branching off of Call of Duty to specifically focus on special forces. I I just had a funnier idea because of a super chat. So we'll we'll get the super chat at the end, but I'm gonna read it out now quickly. Urkel tell slapping Eli somehow that just gave me the mental image of, um, you know that picture of Sam Hyde choke holding the woman, like with his arm around her neck? The weak should fear the strong. <laughs> Urkel doing that to Eli. Oh my god. <laughs> <It's> amazing. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and tell you if this game is objectively good or bad because I believe that enjoyment can be found in anything. In this video, I will be sharing with you the opinion of a typical video game lover who just wants to sit down after a long day and relax with a fun game. With that so, being said... So you're not going to have any standards or weight to it, so why should we take anything you say seriously? This is all going to be completely subjective nonsense. My feels... See, that, that this is a problem with... Um, 
not to say there's anything wrong with being subjective about something, but what one person personally feels isn't very valuable because you could take any movie and get an entire range of feelings that aren't going to inform... I shouldn't say aren't going to. Aren't necessarily going to inform how someone else might feel on them. Um, yeah, like a, a certain movie we watched recently in my community. Petey Wheatstraw! Um, my community, we had a laugh fucking riot, and we thought it was a great B-movie schlock from... It was a black exploitation film from the 70s. Fucking fantastic movie. Hilarious. Show that to some leftoid NPC and watch them, like, their brain melt as they scream themselves to death. Yeah, we were talking about that during the movie. Just, like, there were some scenes where I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, if this played today, people would lose their fucking minds. Yeah. Holy shit. Even, even just the start of it, the Jewish doctor shows up and pulls a watermelon out of his mom. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then pulls a full grown, like, well, like, I don't know, he was like 10, 7, yeah. like, I don't, like around that age when he comes out as a baby and starts whooping his dad's ass. No, he starts whooping the doctor's ass. He goes, I ain't up for no crack of slapping my ass, motherfucker. And he jumps on the doctor, and the doctor's like, ah, get him off of me. Get him off. And they get him off, and he's like, and he's like, it's like, so you gotta calm down. Wait, was you the one that was constantly annoying me while I was in my mama belly? I will whoop your ass too, but I'm your I'm your pa, son. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it Holy sounds, fuck. Certainly sounds like quite the movie. Oh, dude, it it's is. a great movie. It I love hilarious. the fact that the hero doesn't win in the end. That's the best part. Well, thank yeah. you for spoiling the ending. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you can you have got to see that that ending is fucking great. But anyways, back <laughs> back to the point. Um, so, if this guy plays the game and says, you know, I find the shooting to be fun, well, it doesn't necessarily mean anyone else is going to find the shooting fun. Yeah. And that, that's the whole problem with, oh yeah, I'm just going to give my subjective feelings on this game. Well, I'm sorry, but your uh, subjective feelings are probably going to be useless to a lot of people. Yeah, unfortunately, like, these kind of videos and stuff and these kind of arguments can just be uh they could just be countered by saying well i didn't find it fun yeah yeah that's it that's all you got to do they're like well i found this fun it's like well i didn't find it fun okay now we're on equal footing what are you going to do now yeah again you, you, like, like again and we're not giving weight to one way or the other but this is how easy it is to counter like, if I say, I think the sound design... <sighs> no, because that one, that one you can actually put a lot of evidence for. Um, if I say the shooting feels really good in a game, and then somebody else says, I thought the shooting was terrible. You can't weight that one way or the other. Both of us can be correct in that. It's both of our subjective opinions. Now, I can then go through and try to do evidence for it, and then go through and do evidence for their point, too. That's where you start getting more to the objective critique of things. That's, then you can actually weigh up, well, you have actual evidence, they don't, sort of thing. Or, they have actual evidence, you don't, sort of thing. Yeah. It's why your arguments need to be based in some sort of objective critique in some form. Otherwise, it's literally just garbled nonsense. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter what you say if you don't have some sort of facts or evidence to back up what you're saying. It just well, doesn't matter. Well, just imagine yeah. if you go through a game and just say, well, I found this part of the game fun. I found that part of the game fun. And I found yeah, this exactly. part of the game fun. It's just, uh, okay, you're, you're just telling me about your experience. You're not telling me about the quality of the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. It'd be like somebody like trying to do a review of The Godfather and just being like, Oh, well, this part where they're shooting was fun, and this part where they're shooting was fun, but this part where they're talking is boring, snore. But, it's just like, oh, fuck yeah. off. Yep. Let's have give you my two cents about the newest Saints Row. When we begin the game, we can see the first hour or so of gameplay as a sort of tutorial to acquaint you with the world of Santo Eliso before things really- As a sort of tutorial? You mean of the most blatant fucking tutorial hand-holdy bullshit you've ever seen? I agree. Now you want- a sort of fucking tutorial. You wanna know how much Good tutorial God. there was in Saints Row 1? 
not much. You know how much, you know how much like, tutorial there was in Saints Row 2? You could choose to skip it. No. You you either you pick which which method to escape the prison. If you pick the one method, you pick the tutorial. If you pick the other method, you don't. They yep. give you the option. Yeah. Um, and the original Saints Row is very loose with its tutorial. Like, there'll be pop-ups that say you can do this at this place, or this is how you do this thing. And the the first mission is, hey, let's go buy a gun, now let's go shoot some people. And it, it was just that simple. Why do you need an hour-long fucking tutorial? Yeah. And the yeah, tutorial... Especially the for a game this dog shit. Yeah, the tutorial in the new Saints Row is fucking awful. It is hand-holdy as shit, and it is annoying as fuck. It, it is really, really bad. Well, I guess we know what kind of audience they were expecting. Yeah. Oh, God. Lots of un unrail sections and everything like that. It, it's really just it's really fucked. Why do you yeah, mean... and again, there, there's not, there's nothing advanced about it. Um, sorry, I'll let you get the. I know a comment you're gonna read. Go ahead. Yeah. Why do you need an hour for a game that does literally nothing new at all? What well, does something new? You have the the burst from side to side in your car thing to knock people out of the way, which is fucking stupid. Holy shit. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's completely fucked. It's just, it's just so... The, the game is just so shit at everything. Like, none of the vehicles handle particularly well. You'll have some that'll actually be responsive, and it feels like, oh my god, whoever whoever on the team designed this particular vehicle actually knows that a car should be drivable. Come on, Setch. Let's be real. No one on this team designed that car. They just ported it from the last game. Yeah. Oh, god. It's, it's, I just don't I fucking understand. And and again, this is the game. Like, there is nothing special this game does at all. There's nothing you need to tutorialize in this game. What do you do? Oh, you shoot the person. Okay. Well, what if they get in close? Well, melee the person. Okay. That's it. That's all you need. You don't. You don't even need the car shunting thing. That literally is completely fucking useless. You then have the, the thing where you're supposed to be able to jump from vehicle to vehicle as well, which is, you know, something they ripped off from other games, because that's this game doesn't have original ideas at all. But you you these are all like super context sensitive things and only really work within like quick time event things. It's really fucking annoying. Yeah, when I, when I was watching your part one of the stream and you played that, the fucking physics on that were fucked. You were jumping like to the car ahead of you, which should not work the way it did, but it did. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so fucking bad. Yeah, it's just, it's... It's incredibly fucked. And again, in the shooting, all the guns sound terrible. Every single gun in this game sounds awful. And then they, they all have to have, like, goofy quirks and gimmicks to them. Especially the martial weapons have to be, like, unwieldy, damn near unusable things. It's just so, uh... Yeah, isn't there yeah. one you got on that stupid Battle Royale Island where it was, like, a laser that needs to charge up and then you fire it? And it yeah. will... It'll kill someone if it hits them, but, like, so can a bullet. Yeah, oh, and speaking of, speaking of Battle Royale Island, that's when we learned that nobody uh, on the fucking Volition team knows how swords work. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, that so, was that, fucking painful to watch. Holy fuck. That pissed me off so much. So, chat. A sword. There's a handle at the bottom, and then there's a big fuck-off blade attached to the handle. Now, Keep in mind, this is a claymore, by the way. So, we're talking about claymores here. Yeah. So, we're talking about a big fucking sword. Now, if you were to use this weapon, where would you grab it to, you know, stab someone or slash at them? Would you have both hands on the handle, or would you have... You know, one hand on the handle, and maybe um, one hand on the blade sliding up and down it like they're stroking a fucking dick. Holy yeah. shit. And yeah. swinging it like a baseball bat. And swing it, yeah. God, yeah, you literally hold it from the hilt 
to the middle of the blade. Actually, and then when you go to swing it, you just yeah, almost it, the middle, it's, very it's, close. It's, it's very it's, close. It's less like swinging it like a baseball bat, because even with a baseball bat, both of your hands are down at the bottom of the bat. It's more like swinging an axe, where your hand starts up higher, and then as yeah, you're swinging, your hand slides down the shaft to your other hand. That that's what swinging the sword is like in the New Saints Row. Oh, even even fucking better. A lot, not all of them, but a lot of the melee weapons have ammo. You literally run out of ammo using a melee weapon, and then your character just loses it. He just throws it away. Even even if you miss, it costs ammo on the weapon, so it's not like a durability thing. Yeah. Yeah. God, that was so stupid. I'm fucking retarded. God, remember when the sledgehammer was just a fucking weapon you could use in the games before and you didn't have to worry about an ammo count for them? Yep. Oh, what a novel concept. Jesus Christ, this game I, is so fucking shit. I, I just like the confusion in chat fucking immediately. What? But why? <laughs> and the, yeah. just like a bunch of question marks. Yeah. Melee me, weapons have ammo. I didn't ammo. expect it. I didn't fucking expect it either. I picked up a sledgehammer and I was going to town on it. And then I realized there's an ammo counter that was going down every time I swung. And I was like, what the fuck? And I pointed it out on stream and then I swung it a few more times. And suddenly my guy just throws the sledgehammer away. Like it just goes, Poof, gone. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, that was fucking annoying. I can't believe they did that shit. Ugh. Yeah, there was so much shit about that game. I'm already annoyed with this guy. Like, right out of the gate, he's just like, oh, well, it sort of kind of has a tutorial. It's like, it has an hour-long tutorial. What do yeah. you mean? You don't get to sit here and say it sort of kind of does. Well, it he could does. be considered. He said it could be considered a tutorial. It's like, it's not could be considered. It's fucking obvious as a tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right out of the gate, he's trying to give this game passes it doesn't deserve. It's just, all oh, that pisses me off. Yeah. God, it's just it's fucking sad. And again, it's not again the ammo thing is not a durability meter, guys. Because if you swing it at the air, you still use the ammo, the ammo in your sledgehammer, and then you throw the sledgehammer away. Even if you haven't hit anything, so it's not durability at all. Are you being tutored? Then it's a tutorial. Yeah. Yep. Kick and Start off with a scene of a huge party at the Saints' base where we meet our main character, which is you. Stuff happens and we find ourselves buried alive and presumably dead. A little bit of an ominous start. No, 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 no. You are, you are way overgoing it. That start is so fucked. It, it makes everybody look completely stupid and unlikable. Right off the get bat, you already know these people are fucking, you know, not a single one of them is going to be anybody you're going to give a shit about. But then your character, like, after something happens, they keep it mysterious, it goes to your phone. And your phone is cracked and it's just repeating this really stupid scene of your friends over and over and over again. Yeah. Your guy goes, <laughs> why? <laughs> your character was filming like a recruitment video at this party to get more gang members. Like, I, it is hard to overstate that your character is a pathetic beta cuck in this game. Intentionally so. Like, the whines and cries and feels sad and mopes around and eats his feelings. Oh, put, dude. Put, this thing is insufferably shit. Put the lonely waffle in the toaster. And then it just keeps popping up and your guy's like, mm -hmm, keep popping up. <laughs> Push the toaster back. It popped up again. <laughs> and then it flips onto the ground and your guy looks at it and he's like, of course. <laughs> I'm gonna go soak and mope on the sofa. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that part. <sighs> yeah, it's yeah, it fucking is... dog shit. God, this this new game is so fucked. Yeah, they literally should have called their gang the fucking Soys. <laughs> <laughs> the Soy Boys. I, I oh, agree man. so fucking heartily, Crestless King. Holy shit. I mean, honestly... Oh, no, no, take that's off... not the worst problem about that, by the way. Uh, some nascent void said a toaster that doesn't have a power cord attached to it. Yeah, that's a huge problem. It's not the worst problem without the scene. What was what was fucking um whatever dipshit idol guy who never puts on a shirt? I can't even don't even want to fucking remember his name. Um, Kevin. Kevin 
comes into your bedroom while you're moping around. Literally, you're playing a mini game of you having to roll over in bed and mope and cry and whine like a fucking woman. And Kevin here is like, oh, well, I, I made you guys a bunch of food. When, whenever you feel like getting up out of bed, there's a bunch of food for you. So then you get up out of bed finally after finishing this stupid mini game and walk into the kitchen. There's no food in the kitchen. There's no food in the fucking fridge. Well, there's no food in the freezer but a single waffle. Hold on. It's it's actually kind of worse than that. There is no food in the fridge. There is the waffle in the freezer. But there's still, like, food on the counter. There's a loaf of bread. I think there's, like, apples and stuff. And your character doesn't even acknowledge that they're there. Oh, I didn't see the apples and stuff like that. I was just expecting, you know, when Kevin said he made us some fucking food, there was going to be some fucking food. Yeah, you'd think there'd be, like, a, a container, a plastic Rubbermaid container that just has fucking whatever in it. Spaghetti or rice or yeah. a steak or something. Because Kevin's one character trait, besides him refusing to put a shirt on... Hold on. Besides is him, that he cooked. Besides him not putting a shirt on him, besides him being bisexual, which they reference frequently... Which I have a huge problem with that, too, because they do the thing. ID. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, <laughs> they, they do the thing um, where the person who's bisexual is a freak, where they're constantly sleeping with everybody because they reference how he has dozens and dozens and dozens of sexual partners. Kritosis, after this video, will you show that cutscene of Johnny Gad in court? Yeah, we'll pull up such a stream. Yeah. We'll pull up such a stream of uh, Saints Row 2. And show that scene. There's a cat meowing on stream, and it isn't mine for once. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's D. It's the stray cat I've been taking care of. And so D hopped up in my window and was looking at me and was meowing at me like, Hey, get out here, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but then flash back a few months and find out that our character is currently a member of the military organization within this world known as the Marshals. No, no. What was your character doing before that? Yeah. Um, he is not in the military organization. It's a private military company. There is a difference. Military implies that they are part of some government or anything. This is a private military, so it's obviously a corporate military. Again, there is a difference. And the worst part about it is, is, is this thing points out how completely incompetent how beyond incompetent Marshall is at everything. Oh, you and your and your squad leader are the you and the squad leader are the only two competent people in all all of Marshall. It's fucking frustrating. Later on, that we have signed up for this to help pay off student debts. As a student myself, this is pretty based. This mission. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Holy fuck. Oh, okay, You're one of those so... losers that's advocating for this $10,000 thing, aren't you? Oh, we'll pay yeah. $10,000 of your student debt. Yeah, you know, guess where that $10,000 is actually coming from? You're going to get in your fucking taxes, you moron. Have fun. Yeah. That's going to be billable income for you, dipshit. God, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god, this game did the thing. It has the same agenda I do. It's so good. How dare these people criticize it. <laughs> oh no, yeah. is he going to say the environmental car shit is based to and Probably. robbing the morally bankrupt companies? Oh, please Probably. Don't. This guy please. This guy feels like total leftoid NPC. Please have standards. I mean... We already know your standards are pretty low, considering you think this is a good game. But please have some, instead of none. Yeah. This game is so relatable. <laughs> Dry Complimentary has just become a permanent shit poster now, especially with the name Vincent Complimentary. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mission T6 of combat and gives you an introduction to one of the main forces we will be fighting against in this world. It is a simple but fun way whoa, to Whoa, 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 no, 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 no. That is fucking wrong. This is the only time, here and the ending are the only times you ever fight this group. One of the main forces will be fighting in this world. No, it doesn't. And unless they're talking about, unless they're talking about Marshall. Which, trust me... Your introduction to Marshall is how constantly incompetent they all are. That's not like a good thing of like, oh, these guys are going to be a threat. Yeah, so just to show how incompetent Marshall is super quickly, 
your character is on the roof of this uh, VTOL thing, right? Yep. Because they're chasing after the Nuwale, who is currently piling it. How did this gang leader get in control of this fucking extremely high-tech military craft? Because the guy piloting it was hovering at roof level with a building, uh, building that Nuwale was in, and he could just pop open the uh, uh, door to the cockpit, the roof, and throw the pilot out and get in himself. Yeah. It is absurdly fucking stupid. Again, the Nawali just knows how to fly this thing, by the way. Just He just knows. If you're over at this point, please go and get a life and stop being negative. Thank you. Hold up. Uh, Hold up. Go fuck yourself. To one of the is it if you're complaining you'll already fighting. at this point? Please go get a life and stop being so simple. negative. It's yeah, like, I'm, how about trying, you go fuck yourself? I, I'm trying you to call it the fucking soy he... beta cuck. Pay off student debts. As a student myself, this is pretty based. This mission teaches you the basics of combat and gives you an introduction to one of the main forces we will be fighting against in this world. It is a simple but fun way to open up the game. And if you're already complaining at this point, please go and get a life and stop being negative. That's not being negative if it's dog shit, you fucking moron. Yep. Just shut up and consume product. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what that is. There's yeah, this so much is what wrong it looks with the game already. Yeah, this is what it looks like to be an uneducated NPC, everybody. This exactly on screen is what it looks like. Just consume product, get excited for next product. Beep, boop, beep, it was fun. Beep, boop, beep. Yeah, go fuck yourself. No wonder, as a student myself, yeah, so you're, you're fucking college educated, aren't you? God. It, yeah, again, what do I say constantly on Stag? Only someone with college education could be so fucking stupid. Yep. I'll turn that back on him. Why doesn't he get a life rather than playing White Knight for a trash video game? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking meme, like, stop bullying the multi-million dollar company! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, God, I fucking hate these people so much. Yeah, he's probably a liberal arts degree, I agree. Just the probably. idea, though, that, oh, I'm having fun with it, and if you're complaining about the game already... You need to get a life and stop being negative. What if there are legitimate problems in the first 10 minutes of the game? Especially considering there's legitimate problems in the first 10 minutes of the game. Absolutely. Like, it gets, it gets to the point where, like, when we even started the stream, remember how long it took me, chat, uh, for those of you that watched my stream, remember how long it took me to even get the fucking mouse cursor and anything to work properly? And we found out that like, you had to go into accessibility options to find the actual mouse control options to, to try to fix anything. Oh, God. Also, he already showed the scene of it happening, but I, I think he did. Or was that the other video I was previewing? Either way, um, your character fights the uh, Nawali on top of this uh, VTOL, and their gun is dropped, and he's got them in a chokehold, and you're character will kick the gun into the engine. There's a little problem. The the vents for the engine are vertical. The gun is horizontal. It would not go into there like that to blow up the yep. engine. Absolutely. It, it, it would just get stuck on the fins. That's all it would do. Yeah. Okay, but honestly, who gives a fuck about the game being criticized? There's a lot of people out there who, I don't know what it is about them, but if something big is being criticized negatively because of legitimate issues, these people will feel almost like an instinctual fucking need to defend these properties, whether they're games or movies or TV shows or whatever. It's insane to me how, how many people will leap to the defense of utter trash. Well, it's because they tie their self-worth into it. I yeah, like but... that thing. It's being criticized. Therefore, I'm being criticized. That's that's their methodology. That's their mentality. Yeah. Yeah, which is hilarious because of these same people are the same ones who claim that, like, Dark Souls fans, like, that's all they do is they tie their self-worth to a hard video game. So they don't like it when people criticize it. It's like, no, it's because you're fucking just being a dumbass. You're not criticizing it for the, pri for the right reasons. Yeah. 
but then these very same people, it yeah, you you get it. It's just so annoying that they're like they tie their self worth to shitty games, and then if you criticize the parts that are shit, they fucking lose their minds. But then they themselves will immediately turn around and be like, "Oh well, you like hard video games, so you tie your entire self worth to that." It's like fuck off. Kritos yeah, let's, is... let's ask Dark Souls Two how much that worked for them. <laughs> yeah. Kritosis, did you see Oni Play's video on Saints Row, the new one? No, I haven't, but I'll probably watch it after the stream now that I know. Oh yeah. Is. Um, Same. Fallout Three is my child. I have to protect it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Oxford and many a true nerd have pa uh, practically made careers out of defending Bethesda. It's freling bizarre. I assume he meant meant freaking as a substitute for fucking. Yeah. Because yeah, the thing is. Mm. Thank you. Being a badass and saving the day, we are rewarded with zero extra cash on payday. Because you weren't a badass. Yeah, you're like, a dumb okay. shit that endangered everyone. Yeah. Again, Marshall is incompetent, but again, you went against orders and risked everybody else. That's not being badass. That's you being arrogant. That's you being self-serving. That's you being an egotist and a narcissist. Like, you're not special. In, in this game, the game tries to treat you special, like, all throughout this. It, it gets... The game story is, gets so much more fucked than that. Like, it goes way beyond that. But you, the person, are not special at all. Like, you should have listened to orders. You should have followed orders when they said, it's too dangerous to go after the Nawale. Fall back with us. Regroup. We've got to get out of here. So what if they needed your help... Like, for cover fire to get out of there safely. And also, what if it was a bit of a dumb fucking idea to throw a grappling hook from an APC onto a VTOL? Yeah. Because, yeah, that was pretty fucking dumb. God, I find it funny that a fucking children's cartoon explained this better than this fucking game. Uh-oh. Are you about to make a <laughs> pony reference again? <laughs> yes. No, of so, there's, there's an episode in G4... Where there's this new character that comes in. Uh, so one of the main characters, Rainbow Dash, wants to be a member of what is essentially their version of the um, the Blue Angels. And so she like she wants it, it's all she cares about. It's all she wants to do, and she's obsessed with like going fast, speed, all that shit, flying. And she finally gets uh, gets in to the point where she can start training. To become one and the this new character comes in uh called uh, lightning dust and she is just uh, she's just like the main character in this game where she doesn't listen to her orders she doesn't care about her squad she doesn't care about any of that stuff she just wants to show how special she is and how much better she is and how she deserves the title and all this stuff and dash ends up getting partnered with her so they have to work together and while they are good together in terms of like they're like the best the two best uh candidates uh in the course but because she's always putting everyone else behind and like not caring about the squad and the team and putting everyone else in danger all the time she straight up is like i'm going to quit i'm going to drop out of the core if you don't like do something about lightning dust because this is bullshit and uh, yeah, she basically is going to resign from her training, but fortunately, the uh, the uh, the lead um, the person in charge, the main blue angel, is like, yeah, no, this is ridiculous. You're you're fucking out. Get out of here. And they fire her, or they kick her out of the course. Uh, but yeah, it's like I just find it funny that a uh, a fucking children's show got this better than fucking yeah, Spitfire is pretty based. But yeah, they they kicked her. Uh, they kick her out, and it's just funny to me that a fucking cartoon show is, portrays a similar situation far better than this retarded, woke bullshit can. Kritosis, uh, ask, are... ask Pagan if he means she's a giant cunt. <laughs> yeah, she is a giant cunt. Uh, versus, what are the Blue Angels and Air Force Division? Yes, they are a 
highly skilled coordinated flying division. Uh, they're the ones that you'll see at the air shows and everything. The ones that do the incredibly, incredibly dangerous uh, tricks and stunts using jet aircraft and everything. Yeah. And the, the way you can tell it's Blue Angels is they, they literally, they're, they're all their jet aircraft are painted blue. Yep. Oh. So that's yeah, where and the Wonder Bolts. From. Yeah, no, and the Wonder I, Bolts are a direct reference to them. I disagree, Threadnought. Uh, Threadnought says they're the best uh, pilots in the Air Force. I disagree. That'd be the 160th Soar. The Black Helmets are, I, I say, are the best pilots in the Air Force. Like, hands down. Hands down. I, if I had to choose between a Blue Angel... Like, I, don't get me wrong, I ain't saying Blue Angels are bad pilots. They're really good fucking pilots. But if I had to choose between a Blue Angel and a Black Helmet, a SOAR member, I'm gonna choose a fucking SOAR member every day of the week. <laughs> and a squend once again. This conversation leads into the infamous piece of dialogue that everyone has been heavily memeing on since the game was released. Yeah, people yeah, don't because, talk like that. Yeah, people don't speak like that. Sure, they'll have that one where you're like, God, that was fucking dumb. So fucking stupid. And then they, they just move on from there. You have that pause. Your character literally does this for miles and miles and miles on this drive. He's constantly talking. My character, because I picked the personality that didn't get the fuckity fuck 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 fuck, was balls. Balls, balls. Balls, balls, horse balls, horse balls, horse testicles, nuts, balls, uh. big, sweaty, swinging, dangling horse balls. Why does he keep talking about me? <laughs> Ree! <Yeah. laughs> but yeah, it's like this. It's like, a human being doesn't speak that way. Like, this is the fucking, these are the weirdo NPC people that think that people talk like this. Like, no, people don't speak like this. <laughs> They have a Vosh option in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had no idea. I was picking the country accent guy, and now, uh, yeah, it just fucking... Whoa. Did I accidentally create Vosh? No. <laughs> so the place I work at, a lot of their machines are pretty old and not uh, the best maintained. So there's frequent issues with them running, resulting in stuff happening, such as product getting damaged or just a lot of frustration lines getting backed up and shit now it's frustrating when something happens i'll usually get annoyed and go like fuck and if it keeps happening i'll i'll say fuck when it like if more stuff is happening but if one thing happens it pisses me off i just don't go fuck 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 because that's dumb yeah absolutely Now, I will say, the amounts of fucks in this dialogue is a bit over the top, but when paired with the context surrounding no. it and the personality of our main character, it isn't as bad as people make it out to be. And no, it is. is! It is! It is. Your it character is a complete is. fucking retard. Yes. What do you say about <sighs> context? The context of the situation? The context of the situation and who your character is, it's not that bad. It's like, no, it is that so bad. The context to the situation is your character ignored orders and fucked up and endangered lives. Yep. Um, it's entirely reasonable that you want to get... Most places don't even give a fucking bonus for performing your basic tasks. That's just your regular fucking pay. First of all. Uh, second of all, the personality of your character is an obnoxious fucking twat. Like, their entire personality is, oh yeah, I kill things. I'm really good at killing. I love killing. Yeah, seriously, that that is that is entirely it. There is no depth or motivation to your character whatsoever. There is no... Like, they, they don't think beyond this. It, it gets to the point where they need to listen to a motivational tape about being your own boss to even think about going on their own. He acknowledged it was bad and immediately tried to hand-wave away the complaints. Yeah. Yep. 
It is as bad as they make it out to be. That's right. It's worse. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah. And that discussing the first major point of criticism within this game, which is the writing. Now, for reference, I am a person that loves cringy teen romance films and George... Well, that explains a lot. Yeah, so you just have really shit tastes and, like, yeah. no standards. So we just shouldn't care what yeah, you have yeah. to say about this entire section. Yeah, but if you don't like it, go get a life loser. Yep. Shit, <laughs> yeah. So... God, what a self-report. Yeah, exactly. What a fucking self- Like, sure, it's fine if you like these cringy, shitty movies, but you're pairing that up moments after saying, oh, and if you already have a problem with this, go get a life and stop being negative. Yeah. Like, maybe there's a reason people are being negative. Maybe there's a reason you're acknowledging that, oh yeah, these types of movies are pretty fucking bad, but I enjoy them anyways. It's fine for you to enjoy them, but don't- like, don't act like people are wrong for criticizing garbage. You fucking weirdo. Yep. Pierce. Yeah, a, leftist in, a leftist NPC with shit taste. Color me shocked. Yeah, absolutely. Pierce, when did you grow a vagina? The boss, Saints Row 2. Yeah. <laughs> yes! Oh, I love that. Because, yeah. Because Pier Pierce has just a brief moment of where... He doesn't want to do something, and your character... Oh, no, 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 sorry. That's the one where you're in the fireworks truck. And Pierce is like, puts on classical music. And the boss goes, what the fuck? He goes, hey, I'm driving, I'm putting on the music. Pierce, when did you grow a fucking vagina? He goes, fuck <laughs> you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, I love Saints Row 2. It's so fucking good. And comparing it to this, it's just like, God, how far this series has fallen. Well, there's yeah. also a similar moment uh, with the player in Saints Row 1 where um, you go to one of the activities, a chop shop. And in this one in particular, a mechanic uh, comes out, he's all greasy and dirty, and he shakes your hand. And your character looks at their hand and wipes it on the mechanic's shirt. The mechanic fucking immediately, why the fuck are you here if you're going to be such a goddamn pussy about doing dirty work? If you want to get your uh, hands dirty, fuck off to... I forget where he says, but it's just <laughs> making fun of your character, just roasting him for being a little <laughs> bitch. <laughs> nice. It's like, why are you doing gang work if you if you don't want to get your hands dirty? Yep. Yeah, Saints Row 2 boss, making a guy kill his own girlfriend. Yep. It's fucking incredible. I, what a great way to get revenge. Holy shit. Is it the Saints <laughs> Row where you uh, have to eat a frozen waffle because depression? Yes. Yeah. That's yep. the one on screen right now. The bad one. This Wolf game, Row. which is the writing. Now, for reference, I am a person that loves cringy teen romance films and George Clooney Batman films, so I can say that poor writing doesn't really bother me. In fact... Hold on. But... Mahler and EFAP like that Batman movie, too. Be yeah. They like it specifically because it's so bad. It doesn't mean they have low qualities for writing. Yeah. Yeah, you can he, enjoy... He just, he just associated with this as bad quality. So he's already admitting, right here, right now, that terrible dog shit writing, Saints Row 2022 has terrible dog shit writing. He's already acknowledging it. Yeah. And you can like you know, dog shit stuff. You can enjoy it, it and still fucking admit that it's bad. Dude, P Petey Wheatstraw, as we even mentioned yesterday, I'm like, how can a movie simultaneously make complete sense and be so fucking nonsensical at the same time? What the fuck is happening? Yeah. But we were having a blast with it. The fucking, <laughs> the fucking fights, the, the, the kung fu fight. Petey Wheatstraw gets trained to be a kung fu artist by a hobo he, he, and we jokingly called it Hobo Fu. And after he gets taught the waves of the Kung Fu, he says, yeah, but it feels like I don't want to, this is what I want to do with my life. Well, what do you want to do, Petey? I want to be a comedian. And then he just grows up and he's a comedian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <What the f> <laughs> we're, we've like been introduced to all the things. So like we now we know he's a comedian, but we also know he knows Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Oh. Also, I love that Cree brought up... Uh... EFAP because I was going to make a joke that this guy sounds kind of like Jay and it's it's evil Jay. 
Um, you keep Clooney out of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, exactly. If you don't like the trash writing that he likes, you need to get a life, as he said. Yeah. I also like how Threadnought just quotes a bunch of uh, Saints Row stuff. I'm gonna skull fuck that bitch. Hope you like hepatitis. The fuck you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I, I, it is hard for me to wrap my mind around how much of a team of bitches this, this, this crew is in a new game. It God, almost, not... it almost reminds me of a certain quote from Predator. <laughs> uh, we cannot say it for fear of the YouTube coming down on us. This shit will turn you into a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Is the line proceeding? It. <laughs> yeah. Following it. Following it. Following it. Not proceeding. Yeah. Following it. You can't say yeah, we, that line. We, we cannot say the line that comes right before that line. Well, we cannot say it. Well, actually, Pagan can. He has the F word pass. No, 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 I, <laughs> no! They don't. They don't they care. Don't, YouTube does give not a give a shit. Yeah, re they do. Uh, Cree. YouTube took the N word away from black people. Okay, like that's the level <laughs> we're talking about here. <laughs> like, if they can't say the N word, like even with a with a with an A, I cannot say the F word. <laughs> yes. I love Fallout Three. Many nerd is holding me hostage. Please help. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, base no bark. You're gonna have to fend for yourself. Yeah. God. In fact, I find it enjoyable. But from what I've witnessed so far in Saints Row, I would never go as far to say the writing is pathetic, terrible, or shallow. The writing it is, is all pathetic, of those. terrible, and shallow. It is absolutely all of those. It is pathetic, terrible, and shallow. It, it, every single one of those. In spades. Like I said, mm. your gang leader mopes and cries and whines like a little baby in bed. Yeah. That's completely fucked. Sure, with the character depth and plot complexity as we would in a game like Red Dead Redemption or The Last of Us, but it's- Or Saints Row 1 and 2. <laughs> Sure, we're not going to get that level of depth and complexity and all these other games and, and the games that this is, game is a reboot of. We're not going to get that level of depth and complexity. Nope. You could even say the original Saints Row is shallow in some places. Like, oh um... My God, hang on. I just... But... Because uh, I so wanted to ignore Kevin, his entire existence, I only just now realized what his fucking tattoos are. Yeah, there's one of a waffle and... Oh, it's food. Yeah, and a happy smiley face, milk... I saw the waffle before. I didn't notice the. Um, yeah. There's like a strawberry there. There's a the milk. I, I can't tell what this blob is under the milk. I'm assuming it's just like a pool of honey. Or maybe a pepper. It's supposed to be. I'm... It might be a pepper. Yeah. Yeah. I only just now realized. Oh Jesus Christ. Are you telling me the most badass gangsters in the world don't have a tattoo of a waffle? No, actually, I'll tell you that if a gangster, if somebody who calls themselves a gangster and is actually gangbanging actually has these tattoos, they probably are a scary motherfucker. Because they got no fear. Yeah. But again, the, these people, like, what is Kevin's personality? He can cook, and he, he DJs for the idols. Yep, so okay. his tattoos are food, and he's always wearing a set of headphones. Yeah, and he doesn't put on a fucking shirt, ever. Well, I shouldn't say ever. The A character that we thought was going to be normal, then went totally fucking batshit insane, makes him put on a shirt. And it's just, it's so fucking dumb. It is. It is incredibly dumb. It's not like up some Spider-Man and Elsa skit either. The main cast of this game yes, is we are. ourselves as- we, we, we absolutely are Hold watching on. that level of shit. Is your character hanging their gun on the fucking- Yes. Yes. Okay. 
But here, we need to go back because we need to hear that because we are absolutely getting uh, some Spider-Man Elsa level writing. Sorry, my my brain just shut down and reset for a minute after seeing that. Yep. God, I fucking hate this so much. The more I look at it, the worse it gets. Yeah. Well, they're trying to pull that fucking like, yeah, you know, puts gun on wall. Lucy, I'm home. Yeah. Because remember, they do a callback to it later with the Nuwale doing the same fucking bullshit. Yep. Redemption or The Last of Us, but it's not like we're being served up some Spider-Man and Elsa skit either. Which the we are. The cast of this game includes ourselves as the typical badass, sarcastic, no care in the world main character. Then there is e No care in the world, that's why you're worried about rent and you're robbing a payday advanced place so you can pay the rent. And you constantly cry and mope you, and worry about you, your friends and everything. You, no you, care in the world. You you don't care. You don't have a care in the world. That's why you cry for 20 minutes and mope around after getting fired on day two of your job. Sorry, day three of your job. Yeah. Yeah, and, and badass? No, he's, you're not a badass at all. If, in fact, the only reason that you even look like a badass in this game is because everybody else is so weak and pathetic. Like... What do what the Panteros stand for? What are their motivations? Why do they do the things they do? Why are they a gang? No clue. By the way, that big fucking MacGuffin throughout the uh, entire game, the Hummingbird Codex, what the fuck is it? Why does everyone We don't know, because it, it goes nowhere. It doesn't oh. go anywhere with it. Oh, so it's uh, unexplained. And, okay, alright. Yeah, it's an unexplained MacGuffin. It does, all, the only thing that matters is Marshall wants it, that's it. Uh, Scrub Lord in chat. My name is Benjamin motherfucking King. I'm the man who took my crew from being a bunch of baby gangsters in Sunnyvale to being one of the most influential and feared forces in the goddamn city. Not just that, yeah. but they, the Vice Kings were made because they wanted to combat gang violence, uh, specifically the Carnalis, uh, or the Lost Carnalis if, uh, <laughs> if you're, uh, listening to one character a little too much. Um, he, he wanted to push back this horrible gang violence that was in the city, and his gang ended up becoming an actual threat to the city as well, which is why Julius makes the saints, and the same thing happens to him. Yeah. Except it's, it's more obvious that Julius actually wants it to, you know, be that way. Hector, Hector says, says... Buenos noches, yeah. <laughs> Dude, nothing in this game makes any sense. The Los Panteras, I, I don't understand their motivation or why they do anything. They, they're literally just the gang of cars. That's it. Yep, you've got the car gang and the uh, anarchist, An anti-establishment. Anti yeah. yeah. Who all wear really expensive electronics and have rave paint on them at all times and Literally can twirl around fucking rave glow sticks and that deflects bullets. Yep. And this is kind of what I was getting at earlier. I should have explained it more earlier, but in the original Saints Row, your your gang is making plans to take down the enemy gangs that make sense. So I completed the Carnelli storyline and it starts off with Okay, this gang has been around for 30 years. They're extremely dangerous. Uh, their leaders, um, Hector and... God, I'm forgetting the other guy. The the Lopez brothers. They're fucking insane. You don't fuck with them. Uh, but they're also getting their drugs from the Colombians. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut down some of their drug labs, cut off their supply, tra uh, take over some of their drug labs, and uh, do this and that to, to weaken them. And you eventually take them out. You even uh, get them fighting with the Colombians because you assassinate their leader. And this is also kind of what I meant earlier where it's a bit shallow in places. You don't get a whole lot from uh, Hector Lopez or his brother. Um, but for what they are, they, they're they still like decent characters, especially in comparison to what we have in the new Saints Row. Yep. They, they have goals and motivations. They want to take out those that are fucking with them but they're also in the business to make money. Um, there's a logical plan to take them down. Whereas in the New Saints Row, there is no real plan to take down the enemy gangs. It just kind of happens incidentally as you're doing other stuff. 
oh no, yeah. Kevin got kidnapped and we're going to save him. So in doing so, we ended up killing one of their leaders by coincidence. Oh, we yep. need to get this stupid book thing back because we want it for some reason. Even though we don't know what it is or what it does or what information it contains or why it's so important. Um, but we want it anyways. And we just incidentally happened to kill two of their leaders. And to the point where there's still two of the leaders of the idols left at the end of the yep. game. They even tell you that. They even say that there's there's two idols left. And they just, but they fuck off. They never show up ever again. You never deal with them ever again. They're just gone. Uh, there's just two, there are other two idols just give up. And he Hector, the leader of the Los Panteros, he he dies in a fucking cutscene. Not 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 Hector. Um, Hector was lost. Carnales from the original. Hector and Angelo. Um, no, no, no. no. I, I th I'm pretty sure that this is also Hector. No, it was something like it, it started with an S. Um, yeah, it was Sergio. Like, yeah, Sergio. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he dies at a cutscene. Uh, you get pushed to the side, and the Nawali comes in and stabs him for you. Yeah. And, and again, what what was Sergio's motivation? She, your, Nina just says that he's becoming more hostile and aggressive. But why? For what? Yeah. And, and, and it's like... And, and this is a gang that's so... They go out of their way to poorly characterize this gang that, you know... Killing them? Ah, oh, it's not a big deal. But if you fuck up their car, that will completely ruin them. So like, Yeah, they, they it, lose their minds if you touch their cars. So, like, how is ruining their cars worse than ending their life? Yep. Oh, and keep in mind, Sergio, the big threat at the start of the game, because the Los Panteros are kind of the gang you're, you're set up to fight against the most, shows up three times. That's it. One time... He's screaming over a loudspeaker in his fucking, like, monster truck as he attacks the convoy. And he magically hears over the roar of his engine and the sandstorm that there's a drone above his head and shoots it. I don't know how he saw the drone or anything like that. It doesn't make any fucking sense. He just looks up and magically knows, oh, the plot told me to look up. I'm going to shoot it. Yeah, most then people, he shows up. Most people don't tend to look up randomly. That's why there's yep. a lot of secrets in games that are actually hidden above your fucking head. Yeah, that, that that old meme of gamers never look up, it's true. Valve, through tons of its testing and everything, well, found that people just don't look up. Not just gamers, but people in general. If you're in the situation being, uh, being presented, your convoy holding a bunch of valuable fucking ancient artifacts and this magic book. Mm. I, I'm just saying magic because, you know. Uh, yeah, but it, it, it's, it's super. Yeah, it's super important to you. You're going to be focused on that. You're not going to be randomly looking up into the sky. Yeah. And, and like I said, there's no way he'd fucking hear a drone's engine over his fucking monster truck. But then, yeah, and then you, you fight his truck and he, he has to call off the thing because the truck gets too damaged. Then he shows up in, an, in Nina's car where he pushes the car off the cliff into the, into the quarry. Then he shows up on the Great Train Robbery and gets killed by the Nawali. That's it. Three times. Yeah. Gang even, leader. Even Hector Lopez in the original Saints Row gets more screen time than that. And he, I'm not going to say he was a nothing character, but he does die very quickly because you end up assassinating him. And it, it, he's just not a part of the game for that long. Yep. And they, and they make him look like he's going to be a badass that you're going to have to fight later on. And no, you take him out with a single shot from a sniper. Mm -hmm. Which again, makes logical sense, right? Yeah. Again, this was, it was so stupid. Like, Sergio shows up, he knocks you to the ground, and the Nawale jumps in and kills him for you. So you don't even, you didn't even do anything. I don't it's even so mind... I don't even mind the big boss getting killed by someone else like that if it's done in a way that makes sense. But here it wasn't. Your character just gets slightly pushed to the side and suddenly they're unconscious on the ground. Yeah. But no, not even unconscious. You're still moving around, remember? Because that's how you knew the Nuale did all that stuff. You, and that's you, why it, it You might sets as well be your... unconscious. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're a dead fish. You're, you're playing a dead fish. You're not doing anything. You're not helping. You're not contributing to the fight at all. Um, 
But that's why it's part of your character's mental psychosis when your character gets stabbed by the Noali later and left in a grave. You couldn't even take out Sergio. I had to. And your character's like, no! Because again, your character's but, but, pathetic and weak in this. But that's the thing. You could have taken out Sergio if they had fucking light you. Yeah. And again, like I said, what, what do the Panteros stand for? What do they mean as a gang? Like, the Brotherhood in Saints Row 2, yeah, they were the car gang, but... They were about tattoos and metal, and they they had stuff where they were they ran the docks. Okay, do you get it? They're they're running drugs and counterfeit items. They're smuggling. They they help with the black markets. You can get what they do. What do the Panteros do? Nothing. Oh, they have the Forge, which makes more cars. Okay. What? How does that do anything? For them? Are they selling the cars? Like, what? what is their criminal enterprise? Because they, they aren't even running drugs. You find out it's the food trucks that are running drugs. Kratosis, I watched a guy play Black Mesa, and he legit walked into a barnacle every single encounter. He refused to learn his lesson, and I won't le uh, let him live it down. Good. <laughs> By the way, we'll get to the super chats at the end. But multiple people have been posting this. Well, a similar thing to it. Well, no, people are trying to get you onto another I know, Halo Reach I know. rant. I know. We're, we'll get there. We will get there at the end. Yes, at the end of the stream, everyone, Setch will tell you about how great Halo Reach is and why it's such an amazing oh, game you should yeah. all play. Yeah, no, it's don't completely lie to fall flawless. Don't lie to these people. 10 out of 10, badass seal of approval. Do not gaslight the people. <laughs> <laughs> the bikes of Ronin use are named after the main characters from Akira. Oh, mm. I like uh, that. And, and again, then then you've got the the um, Samedi, like who are named after Baron Samedi. In fact, the the general's car is called the Baron. I, I fucking love that. That is so fucking cool. Um, yeah, Baron, they're named after Baron Samedi, a uh, voodoo, um, what is it? He's not like a demigod or anything. He, he's the voodoo lord of the dead. But yeah, what are their whole thing? They're running drugs. Where are they set up? At the college, at the university. That's their clientele. Which is why um, they, they even mentioned a mission where you actually have to stop the Brotherhood, who are like doing drugs and guns and stuff on the university. And they're like, wait a minute, why? Why are we going after the sons of? Why are we going after the Brotherhood? This is Sons of Samedi territory. Yeah, well, the Sons of Samedi couldn't couldn't get all of it because the Brotherhood managed to fortify these particular blocks, these apartment blocks. We're gonna take it out for them. Oh God. Oh yeah, Mr. Sunshine. Yeah, that that scene was great. Holy fuck. Why won't you die? <laughs> Dude, I'm um, speaking of great fucking scenes in, in Saints Row 2. The way like to show your character is a badass is how your character thinks when he comes to getting revenge on the Brotherhood. So the Brotherhood in the Saints, you have your lieutenants. Carlos is one of your lieutenants. Carlos is the one that's in charge of giving you information on the Brotherhood. But you've kind of, he kind of runs into a dead end because the Brotherhood do something smart. They stop talking about their plans. They stop letting things out of the inner circle. They get very hush-hush and they keep everything close to chest. So Carlos can't find out anything and he, he apologizes for it and everything. He's like, I'm sorry. So your character comes up with an idea and he goes and breaks in the nuclear power plant and takes some nuclear waste and puts it in Marrow's ink dye. Oh, fuck. So when he's getting tattooed, it burns the fuck out of his face. Marrow, to get revenge, rounds up Carlos, and they tie him to the back of a tow truck and drive him around the city. As he's being dragged on the end of the tow chain, you have to stop the tow truck. And when you get to him, your character isn't thinking. 
he, he's flipping the fuck out. He tries to drag Carlos, and Carlos is screaming in pain. And then he realizes the chain's still hooked up, so he starts kicking at the bumper to try to knock the chain loose. Then finally, he walks up to Carlos. He gets down on his knees. He grabs Carlos's hand. He pulls out a gun and blows his brains out. Put him out of his misery. Does your boss fucking mope? Does he cry? Does he whinge? No. Instead, he finds Marrow's girlfriend, fucking holds her hostage in a bank, so the police are after him now. This is how much he wants revenge. Throws her in the back of the trunk of her own car, drives to the arena where Marrow's going to be running with his, with his giant monster truck, and parks her car in the lineup of cars to be crushed. Marrow finishes, crushes the cars, and he's all cheering and happy because he won the race. Your boss claps, and Marrow's like, I'm going to fucking kill you right now. Oh, 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 before you do that, why don't you check what's in the trunk? And you throw him his girlfriend's car keys. He opens the trunk to find her crushed body in it. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Then what What fucking, um, like, like this, what happens next? Well, you still don't know about the shipment. You need to figure out about the shipment. So you go to Marrow's tattoo artist, who is currently playing a band gig. You walk up on stage unopposed. <sighs> You crack him in the fucking head with some cymbals and a guitar and start beating the shit out of him. You hold all the rest of the band members at gunpoint and shoot in the air to get everyone to run off. You grab him, you pin his hand to one of the fireworks displays and set the fireworks off while he's screaming in agony as his, as his wrist bubbles away. And you said, hey, enjoy your retirement. Holy fuck. Because he's never going to play in a band ever again. Yeah, your your character doesn't fuck around in Saints Row 2. He doesn't mope and bitch. You, you fuck with him, he fucking ends your entire fucking <laughs> he, he your career, yeah. your life, your your relationships, everything. He takes it from you. Yep. The only reason that he did not kill this guy is because he wants to piss Marrow off even more, and he knows this guy is technically civilian. But, hey, you run with Marrow, you tattoo Marrow, Marrow talks in front of you, tell me what the fucking shipment is. I don't know, they don't tell me anything. Bullshit. All I know is that it's a ship coming in at the docks, that's all I know, I swear. Huh, well, enjoy your retirement. <laughs> Burns his fucking hand, even bubbles and pops. It's like, oh, God. Yep. Oh, it's so fucking brutal. So yeah, there's how the gangs in the previous game, well, not all the gangs, but some of them, are characterized and uh, dealt with. And then we've got the shit game, where it's like, the gangs feel... See, the problem with this game is that nothing feels like the main focus of it. Everything feels like peripheral to a main story that just isn't there. Yeah. Eli, one of the mill brainiac nerdy guy that doesn't like getting into fights or trouble, but will do anything for his friends. No, 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 no. You, you left out the other part. He's completely fucking insufferable. Constantly has to listen to be your own boss tapes to motivate himself because he's so fucking weak and pathetic and is so obsessed with the environment that he'll even critique what vehicle you take for missions. Yeah, I'm doing the Ronin. I'm doing the Ronin mission last. I, I could talk about it, but I kind of want to wait for people on my stream to see it. So I'm just talking about stuff that we've seen currently on my stream, because that's the playthrough we're doing right now. But there is some brutal deaths. And, and actually, going back to the Brotherhood for a second, Mero, when you first start out the game, Mero contacts you and talks. And he says, hey, I know who you guys are. I know you were a big deal back in the day. Things have, times have changed. What if we work as a partnership? And the only reason it doesn't work out is because Marrow offers you 20% of the entire pie for taking over the city. And you're, you're, the boss is insulted. Naturally so. But again, Marrow tried to be a partner with you. Right? It, it didn't come out of the gates. He doesn't come out of the gates swinging and like trying to be a big dick or anything like that. But he's like, hey, my gang is established. We've got our rackets. We've got control of a third of this fucking city. And, but you know what? You guys are just coming back up. I know what you guys, I know who the Saints are. I know who you are. So I'm going to offer you 20% of the pie. Oh, God. Yeah. 
Yeah, you even fight side by side with Mero when the police try to do a fucking bust to get you and Mero because you're gang leaders. They, they try to get you. And you actually fight side by side with him. So again, what a great fucking way. Yeah, 50-50 would have been the right call. Yeah, in fact, your boss will even mention that after he tells him to open the trunk. He says, also, keep in mind, when you, you should offer me more than 20 fucking percent when you're walking away as he's crying over his girlfriend's mangled body. It's like, Jesus Christ, the boss does not fuck around. <laughs> it's so good. Oh. If the uh, if the boss was anything like in the old games here, he would have executed the cast of this game out of sheer humiliation, and maybe keep the girl alive to fix uh, up their cars for free. Yeah. 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 God, it's just. But when you think about it, it's like there's just nothing, even remotely close to that in this game. Like, no, not the at all. one time. Yeah, the one time your character gets a chance to do something like that, and the fucking new Wally does it instead. Yep. And then your character bitches and moans like, "That was supposed to be my kill." <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the other gang leaders, the the gang leaders for the idols are so nondescript; they're literal NPCs, actual NPCs. Yeah, you wouldn't even know you were fighting a boss if it wasn't for their health being slightly more. Yeah, they have two health bars. Yeah, that's, because, the only, yeah. that's the only way you know. Because they don't do anything to make them have a unique personality. They literally call them the collective. Yeah. They're, they're just a bunch of fucking weirdos in uh, helmets that have unique displays on them. And there, there's just nothing there. That, that's the problem with this entire game. Is, I was making the same criticism against a certain TV show last night. There's nothing to latch onto here. It's all just fucking garbage. Yeah. And their it's motto so is so fucking stupid. Um, what, what was their motto? The the idol's motto was uh, no gods, no masters, no leaders, no idols except us. Oh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. God, that's stupid. Yeah. Uh, God, it's so fucking boring and dumb. Yeah, the bosses in this game are so shit. The fucking idols might as well not even exist. They're, they're all just the same NPC over and over again, basically. Sergio dies in a cutscene, then your character mopes and bitches about it. Marshall doesn't even really get properly resolved. Yeah, you have an option with Marshall. When you, become, when you come on the board and you go to fire Marshall, it gives you a choice. Do you shoot Marshall in the fucking face and kill him, or do you just tell him he's fired? And I did the, the option that I think would be more satisfying. I told him he was fired. Because I, I liked seeing him seed, cope, and mauled. But the thing yeah. is, he swears vengeance. This isn't over. I'm not done with you. Never see him again. Yep, never see him again. And the lady that takes over Marshall, who becomes the new CEO of the company, um, she just says, now quit fucking with Marshall. But you don't. So it, it, it literally just doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, it just doesn't... It just ends in a very strange way. It doesn't feel like it's properly resolved. And then... Uh, wait, was there even any other gangs? Is it literally no. just the Idols? No, it's the, the fucking... Idols, the Panteros, and Marshall. That's it. That's, that's it? how little content there is in the new Jesus Saints Christ! Row. That's fucking ridiculous. Like Saints Row 1 had three enemy gangs. Saints Row 2 had three enemy gangs. Saints Row 3 had three enemy gangs. Yep. Yeah, fucking, it's annoying because Saint Row 2 had three enemy gangs and their equivalent of Marshall was the uh, the private security firm for Vogel that you uh, have to deal with at the end of the game. Ultor? Oh, yeah. No, uh, Ultor um, is in 2. Oh, he was talking yeah. about 3. Yeah, 3 uh, is Stag. Yeah, yeah 3 is Stag. Funnily enough. Yeah. So, Sorry, I it's just annoying. That... 2 for a second, but yeah. I was talking about two. Oh, then yeah, it is Altor. Yeah, it's Altor. Yep. Yeah. Because Vogel was in charge of them, and then you kill Vogel at the end. Uh, yep. Yeah, so it's just annoying to me that, like, they they literally just basically did three again, but then cut out one of the uh, one of the gangs. I just realized yep. something from a comment in chat. Oh, God, where'd that go? I think, I think it might have been the comment Tony Danning deleted, or... 
What's okay. the quit quit forking with Mars? No, the one where it's like, would these people even be able to execute someone? Um, yeah, if you were to give Eli a gun and tell him to kill someone, it would just be that image of like the four year old holding the gun, and then the second p uh, image, he's just crying. That that one that gets Dude, memed a lot. You go to teach Eli how to shoot. Oh God! Oh, and it is some of the most painful fucking dog shit I've ever seen. It gives, it's nothing but bad shooting advice. It it is it is really fucking bad shooting advice. How to yeah. know the writers know nothing about guns? Yeah, because he asks all these questions like, like I always heard about the breathing things. So like, so I don't fucking pay attention. I just yeah, just watch what I do and emulate and stuff like that. Well, I heard that you you want to. You want to squeeze the trigger, not pull. And then I had to explain to chat because people in chat were like, "We're curious about that too." It's like, why, why do we, um, you know, why, why do you do the whole squeeze instead of pull thing? And I explained about pulling. If you pull it, you're actually pulling the muscle momentum into it. You're going to move your barrel up. You're actually going to misalign your sights and fire and miss. That's why you squeeze, as if you're like squeezing a stress ball. You're just squeezing, keeping your hand stable and normal. You squeeze in the trigger. If you pull it, you're actually putting the muscle tension with your trigger finger and will actually cause the gun barrel to rise. Your sights will go out of misalignment and you'll fire high. God, yeah, that, that was annoying. Because it's literally just your guy going, I don't know. I, I don't know anything. I can't tell you anything. Just watch what I do and just try to copy it. Yeah, and, and so like, then fucking hell. Eli knows how to shoot like and before where he kept constantly saying he doesn't want guns because he believes in karma no yeah. not just that he can't use guns like the, during the store robbery um the the payday advance robbery uh eli says something like oh give me a gun i'm ready and then your character is like oh um didn't you shoot yourself last time and then eli's like you know what maybe you're right i won't take a gun yeah. so from Jesus. the very start, they're just portraying these characters as constantly pathetic. And you can't take them seriously as these, like, gang members. Um, you know what? Hold on. Um, I want to bring up such a stream of Gad in the Court right now. Okay. Just, just for comparison, because it is so good. Yeah, well, you grab that. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Just to show the night and fucking day difference between these two groups. The tower. I died. No, no, shut up. Uh, why is it? No, mute. Okay. There we go. Man, the lawyer in that cutscene was a Chad. Yes. All right, um, where was the first? It's paired up with the last, uh, okay, yeah, I think that's it. Or was this it? Ah, there we go. Okay, give me just a minute. <laughs> uh, gunshots in the courtroom. Does anyone hit need a lawyer? Okay, hold on. I'm almost there. Because this cutscene is great. Um, hmm. How am I going to do this? If I make this a bit smaller. Do that. And that. And that. Alright. Oh. Hold on. Re. Need to unmute. Shit, well, sorry, buddy, but you were near the cops when they were shooting at me, so. 
<laughs> Get fucking tasered. Mr. Gat, you've been convicted of over 300 murders. Do you really expect this appeal to work? I figure with the statute of limitations, it really should be closer to 250. There's no statute of limitations <laughs> for murder. Why the fuck not? Watch yourself, Mr. Gat. For what? You hold me in contempt of court? You're already planning on giving me the chair. You think I give a shit about you not liking me? Fuck off. I'm curious if you can keep your cavalier attitude when 2,000 volts are running through your body. Oh, yeah? And I'm curious if you can keep acting like a douchebag when I shove that gavel up your ass. My client would like that stricken from the record. What's that? Drop it. Anyone hit and need a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. About time your burnt ass woke up. You are okay, Johnny? Yeah, aside from almost getting sent to the chair, I'm fucking great. Hey, you look different. You do something with your hair? You ready to get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> it, see how fucking simple and effective it is? Like, it really goes a long way to portraying the characters. Um, like, like, their personalities and attitudes, rather than just, Oh, I can't use a gun. I listen to Be Your Own Boss tapes and not music in the car. Wah, 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 wah. Yep. So and by the way, the fucking... game will actually force you to listen to those fucking Be Your Own Boss tapes. Yeah, there's twice where it happens, right? Yep. And will make you listen to, like, really shitty music, too. Oh, yeah. Most quests have random music playing. And, like, you can't turn it off. Oh, shit. You can't turn it off. There we go. Then the bisexual social butterfly with connections all around the place and an extreme love for waffles shown by the tattoo or he You forgot the fact that he's a fucking horn dog. He has so many lovers and sexual partners it's ridiculous to the point where they can't even keep each of them straight anymore. Well, I mean <laughs> They can't they can't keep who is who uh, correct in their minds anymore. That's how fucked he is. He's a fucking yeah. degenerate. I hate that trope, too. Anytime there's a gay or bisexual character in anything, it always has to be this fucking horn dog, fucking always horny, just pervert. Yeah, can't keep it in their fucking pants, can't think about anything but dick. It's like, yeah. oh. God. Has to constantly make sex jokes, even at the worst time. Oh, your dad died? Oh, that sucks, man. Oh, man, if only I could have tapped that before he died. God, like, he literally that kind of shit. Ugh. See, I, I get the impression you're quoting something and not just making up an example out of thin air. <laughs> I is think that is from something. Remember Invincible. I, oh. Yeah, Invincible does something similar to that, but I don't know yeah, who says right, that. Yeah, I exactly. forgot about that. Oh. Yeah. Because that character eventually came out as gay later. No, they, they had to make him super flamboyantly, oh my god, he's so gay. Gay. Which is so fucking yeah. offensive. I hate that trope. Are you telling me all gay people aren't super flamboyant? Nope. Not at all. Surprisingly, no. Hmm. He has on his and I just want to mention this. I have seen so much criticism just because this guy has a waffle tattoo. Like, a <laughs> just because I, I sincerely doubt. I yeah. I just pressed X to doubt so fucking hard I broke the X button. Holy shit. This yep. is so bad faith. Just because he has a tattoo of a waffle. Um uh, no, it's his entire character being stupid. Yep. People are upset by such an insignificant detail. It's a tattoo, guys. Come on. And then finally, we have Nina, who is probably my favorite character in the game so far. Nina loves cars, enjoys the old... How, 
Wait, so far, so you haven't beat it yet. This game is short as fuck, by the way. Yeah, like, it's very short. It is, it is crazy how short it was. I was kind of surprised how quick it ended. I mean, if you're counting actual time, it is short. But when you're playing this game, when I was on the stream with you, Sedge, we were having fun making fun of it, but the minutes were still ticking by, like, hours because of the actual content. Yeah. It was so dog shit. The stream did not go by quickly. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It felt like a drag. So Nina is a discount Lin, and not, uh, tough. Got it. Another copy and paste from the first game. Rip. Dude, she, uh, she has an entire thing where she whines and cries about her car getting thrown into the fucking, uh, mine canyon. <laughs> it got thrown quarry, down a mine quarry. shaft like Palpatine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets thrown down the quarry, and she starts giving this sob story about how it was her mama's car and she would you she would drive no, her mom would let nobody else drive it but then when mama got sick with cancer i drove it for her to get her to her chemo it's like it's just a fucking car i don't give a shit we're a gang you fuck nugget what are we gonna do to get revenge if it means that much to you let's go attack the forge or was that after the forge that think, was their revenge back. I think that was after, yeah. You'd think after betraying her own gang and destroying a vital operation for the Panteras, they'd just want to fucking kill her rather than ruining her car. But they've already been characterized to be so fucking stupid as to only care about their cars and killing them is like a lesser offense. Literally. They, they even say like, well, we just round a bunch of them up. Nah, that won't do nothing. They don't give a shit. What we need to do is we need to fuck with their cars. It is so stupid. It is so, so fucking stupid. You even have that moment where to get a guy to squeal and tell you all of his secrets, you customize his car. Yeah. And he starts going like, like what the fuck? No, man, not the rims and shit like that. And when you when you when he gives in, I kept going because I thought it was so fucking dumb. I just kept going to see how far he took it. And then he eventually started just repeating himself, and I was like, "Ah, oh, well, that's fine. Fun's over." Yeah. I do think it's very, very, very slightly amusing that they had lines for him after the car was fucked up, but still based on something so broken that it's just, it's like a. Not even a nugget of goal, it's just like something extremely minorly positive in something that's overall shit. Yeah, it's the, it's that fleck of yellow corn in the shit. <laughs> Though you might have that fat bastard moment of, what the, I didn't need corn! <laughs> God, I need to watch those movies again. Yeah, I, I love that. Fun's over. Fun was over the minute you got this game, Such. I'm, I'm fat because I eat. I eat because I'm fat. <laughs> By such an insignificant detail, it's a tattoo, guys, come on. And then finally we have Nina, who is probably my favorite character in the game so far. Nina loves cars, enjoys the odd fight or petty crime, and can be an absolute badass at times as well. Now this- When, when, when. When and where? Yeah, I yeah you can't remember. just say- She's a badass, and then move on and never clarify how. Yeah. By the way, this is one of the leaders of the idols. Yep. And the other the five look exactly the same as him. Yeah. There's a seven. Is there? Is there six or eight of them? Well, we've got one who looks like they're they might be dead. They're leaning against the wall, weird. Oh, one that's... coming out from the side. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the leaders. Oh, yeah. There, there's six. Idols leaders. There's six idols leaders. And one of them gets killed off in a very early mission. Like, before... So early to the point you haven't made the saints yet. Yeah, so... The, and here, here's how dumb this idol guy is. It was it makes you realize how cartoonishly evil they are. Um, Eli gets shot by a stray bullet. The Panteras attack the idols. 
So Eli gets shot. This is during the your characters moping around. Nina gets a phone call, uh, a text message from Sergio that the Panteras are going to hit the idols at their party. And they're like, huh, it sucks to be everyone there. Oh my god! It's, Eli it's, and Kevin are no, there! We gotta go! Hold, hold on, Setch. It's even worse than that. It's even worse than that. Yeah, because they uh, mentioned I sucks. feel bad for, for Kevin and Eli, and then they realize. Yeah. Yep. Because they, yeah, it sucks to uh, be anyone who's there. Yeah, it sucks to be Kevin and Eli. Yeah. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck, we gotta go. So they go there, and they, you you fight off the Pateros, and the idols are still shooting at you, so you fight them off as well. The, the collective leader comes out, and Kevin's like, No, no, man, bro, they're with me. They're They're cool. And he looks at he looks at Kevin and he's like, "Well, if they're cool, you get to kill them then." <laughs> it's like what? Yeah, it is so Wait, retarded. Yeah. How much is this game? Too much. If this game was sold for one cent, that would still be too much. Yep. Yeah, and again, the idols are so fucked. They talk about how they they support the little guy, but then they attack the little guys constantly and steal from them. Because the big corporations are just too too much for them. Well, it's the it's, system it's as so a whole hard. they want to bring down. Yeah, well, that's what they said when they, they said, you know, we're fighting for the little guy. But you just robbed the parts from the little guy. The little guy is a cog in the system, man. Yeah, oh, they, they say off. something to the effect of there's only the idols and everyone else. So it's either you're with us or, or you're against us. Yep. It is, it is just, it's completely fucked. It is completely fucked on every level. It is so bad. What if you got paid to play it like Setch did? The price is still at 7000 Yeah, for Kree it's 7000 I should have had my price my, higher. My my soul is a bit more expensive than Setch's. Wow. <laughs> you're, the one, <laughs> you're the one who priced it that low. Don't blame well, me. Well, it wasn't it wasn't low, but it was it was too low for what we got. Uh, Kratosis, did you play Saints Row Two? Um, I have it now. I've played like a half hour to an hour of it the other day, but I'm focusing on playing Saints Row One right now, which I've really been enjoying. I'm gonna play two after that. Yeah. Well, since you did join the core, hey, the core are not cheap dates, motherfucker. We just don't get paid that much. It's because he's a lever, uh, lizard slave, Cree. Yes. Farm equipment gets play, uh, paid less. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> One, I'm not a lizard. Two, lizard. fuck y'all. You don't even know that snakes aren't lizards. Snakes are lizards. <laughs> <laughs> God. Snakes are the lizard lizardiest lizards that have ever lizarded. God. I, I like how the fucking. I loved how I showed you the legless lizard. You're like that's a snake. I'm like, no, it's not. That's a fucking lizard without legs. And you're like, that's a snake with a fucked up head. <laughs> it is. <laughs> is this as bad or worse than the DMCA reboot? Sorry, DMCA, DMC reboot. Um, I've never played any Devil May Cry game, so I don't know. Yeah, no, I uh, I can't say either way. D I didn't the DMCA play that series one, so... has never been been on my like thing i want it's it's too much of a, just about spectacle and i'm not really into that i played a couple of them they were good but i never played <laughs> the reboot so i couldn't tell you also i like how fucking <laughs> i like how Setch is considered farm equipment and he's like <laughs> it's supposed to be the lizard it's like but the horse the literal horse it's like no you you don't you're not farm equipment <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> if it has scales it goes to the fields hippity hoppity argonians are property <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I'm not an Argonian, though. <laughs> By the way, someone did ask earlier um, how far into this video we were in. We are 4 minutes and 15 seconds into a 12 minute and 42 second video. Yeah, we gotta get to the ring, to the, sorry, the rings of power. We was hobbits and shit. Yeah. We gotta get to that. Now, oh that, god, we have so much shit to talk about that. Now that video oh, yeah. did come out before the show did, um, but there's still some shit in there. 
Yeah, fair. This is by incredible. They are all relatively stereotypical and display many surface level character traits and not much deeper than that. But there are moments that show a high quality of writing and attention to detail. For example, like? my personal favorite mission in the game so far for this reason is called Nina's car. Of course it is. <laughs> Just of because course. she cries about the car. <laughs> this fucking awful mission. Of course. Yep. You... God. I can't believe so many people have such low standards. Yeah. Just so easy to please. God, yeah, he's literally just going to reference that her car gets dropped into a quarry and she cries about it and talks about her mom. Is he just a simp for Nina? Well, he's simping for a shitty game. Just fixed. Nina owns a car. It's like her baby. She's been working on it for years, and after she betrayed the gang Los Panteros, which she was in, they took the car to presumably trash it or sell it for parts. So being the good friend you are, you drive around with Nina, fighting and interrogating members of her gang to find out where the car is. After searching, you were told it's been taken to the quarry by the Los Panteros leader, Sergio, and instead of selling the car parts, which would allow Nina to eventually buy it back and rebuild it, he pushes it off a cliff into the quarry, destroying it completely. And this is the scene that follows. No! Please show the entire scene. Look how pathetic this is. Then our characters somehow can't shoot straight. Get fucked, Nina, you fucking nothing character. I drove that car all the way here from Guadalajara. My family's so far away, you know? It felt like I was keeping part of them with me. She never let anyone else drive that car. Who? My mom. But when Kimo made her weak, I drove her around. We'll see. Ah, fuck. Hold on, hold on. I need to contrast this with something very quickly here. Hold on. Hold on. Rewind. Rewind. Sure. They're the cops <laughs> and they're shooting at me, so... <laughs> fucking no, I, if you want to talk about a scene that actually hits hard... No, 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 no. This is what you need to see. Don't, don't do that. Well, I wasn't going for a scene that hit hard, just a difference in tone. But sure, which, which one do you want? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm... go to the one we just recently did. Yep, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we're gonna go to fucking Carlos' scene. Yeah. Hey, Ooh, Green, yeah, finally get to see this. That's a good one, yeah. Just yeah. Based on what I've heard. What lazy characterization? Yeah. And that's all we get from her, too. Like, as far as her family goes. It exists for this one scene for... just to make it sad, to try and make the audience care. That's how fucking shallow this game is. Yeah. Okay, that's past it. That's past. She like car deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she could salvage the car and rebuild it but no um yeah there's probably parts of that you might be able to take you out there and reuse and even if you don't oh absolutely even if you don't just buy the same fucking car and, and the frame the frame's the the tricky part that'd be the one thing if the frame is mangled then you're then you got to start with a new frame other than that all the the parts all the car parts and everything can be fixed or just buy a new fucking car of the same model. Yeah. And fix it up the same way. Like, I get it's supposed to be, but it won't be the same vehicle and everything like that. It's like, who, who cares? Again, the fact that this is your only motivation for that car, and you tied your entire personality to it, is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It'd be like your Especially character because throwing a fit you... because he lost his gun. 
it, she she is literally the stereotype of the Panteros. Again, look at her getting all weepy about a car. Yep. All right, one thirty-eight sixteen. One thirty-eight sixteen. Go. There's that. You go to one thirty-eight sixteen. By the way, look at that uh, tweet I posted above that such. And page. Yeah, I saw, but the one thing it's missing is the the book of the left behind. That that that's what that's what the first picture is though. I mean, I guess. Yeah, we established that they're communist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so what was the time code? 139? 13816. 13816. Nope, oh, there it is exactly. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to recenter this again. It's pretty close as is. Oh, it kind of helps if I unmute it. Uh oh. There we go. And keep in mind, this is the guy who helped you escape from jail, too. Ooh. That's what I'm talking about. Moments like this are what's missing from yep. from the Saints Row series onwards. You don't really get moments like that. That is so much more effective than uh, what we just what we just got in fucking the new Shits Row. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh man, this part and the part with Aisha and the funeral after where we get to see Gat like how he really feels now that it's over. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Dude, just that cutscene alone though. Like, Gat, watch out, it's a trap whoosh. Slow motion yeah. of him drawing the sword. And then it doesn't show her at all. You just see the flowers that she was that she was sitting next to in the vase. You see the the top of the flower fall and hit the ground and you know what just happened. Oh, so fucking good. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, during the funeral scene, like, you know, cause he knows Shoujo is the one who, uh, ordered it. And he fucking takes all of his anger out on him. Finally. Like now that he finally has the person who caused all of it. He, Oh, it's so good. That scene is just so fucking good. Yeah. As he's giving his whole, as he's beating him to death, he's giving a whole speech about like, like what he did and why he's such a little pussy for everything he's done. And oh god, I fucking I I love that scene so bad. I want to see it again so bad. Yep, and that's what I mean. This is the type of stuff you miss, and instead we have this this weak ass shit. Like yeah, I get it. It's a connection to your family and your mom, but. That's not enough to get this worked up about it. And you, you're literally being the stereotype of the Panteros right now. It didn't matter that they tried to kill you or shoot at you or anything like that. It's more, oh, they, they, they fucked up my car. It's like priorities, Jesus Christ. I promised her I'd take care of that car. Ella confiaba in me. Let's go. We can still catch up to him. Nah. If Sergio's gonna fuck with my family, 
I'm gonna fuck with this. While this yeah, go show yourself. The most revel it, it comes off as so fucking lame. It is, and it is so fucking lame. <laughs> you fucked up my car. Hunt down the row. Yeah, <laughs> you fucked up my face. That's still the bounty. So I, we'll be doing that eventually. <laughs> Such, you want people who never had any struggle in their life to write a good tragic scene. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> you should still be yep. able to take inspiration from other things. Like, didn't you say this game, like, stole... Not stole, but... Um, oh, it blatantly copies so many other games and movies, it's ridiculous. Because I remember making jokes about, oh, it's the frontier. Yeah, and it really is. Like, they, they just rip off things from all these other games and movies and stuff. They don't have any original ideas at all themselves. It's so fucked. Sergio's gonna fuck with my family. I'm gonna fuck with his. He fucked with your car, Why not your family. may not be the most revolutionary and genius bit of writing in video game history, it does have enough heart and emotion to evoke a feeling towards the character and situation. Nope. But it no. does. That, that's just you, my friend. Um, yeah, it, no. it doesn't. It, again, she's so flat and a little character and substance that it just comes off as like being annoyingly preachy. It feels so manufactured. Yeah, and it's so shallow. It yeah, it just it, feels so fucking fake. It, it seems to me like this guy is extremely susceptible to emotional manipulation. Mm -hmm. If yeah. if this one singular scene that this character has that is attempting to be emotion, like gets you that much, then yeah, you that that's a bit fucked. Of course, mission in the game is going to be like this, but when listening to reviews of the game, they make it out to seem like the whole game is washed with superficiality and staleness. And that, while, like, that was that absolutely scene was superficial. Superficial, yes. Yeah. That scene was completely superficial. You could tell that they were trying so hard to manipulate your emotions, and it's people like you, the weak will, that fell for it. It's like classic uh, emotional manipulation in media where, oh, if we give a character family they care about and something bad happens to that family, the audience is suddenly going to care. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it works on weirdos like this guy, but for anyone else, it, it just it falls flat or it comes across exactly uh, what it is. Fucking shallow and superficial. Yeah. You want to see something like this done well? Terminal List. Seriously, watch Terminal List. It's fucking fantastic. But it has the same thing where we're introduced to his family and everything. And he has constant flashbacks to his family. And again, because his mind is, is... He's losing his mind. I don't want to go too much into spoilers, but yeah, he's he's got problems. Can't is untrue for all missions. It certainly isn't the case 100% of the time. The right it is. I, again, it, by the way, yes, it is. It is true for everything. It is completely superficial and flat. But you're doing this defense thing and review without having beaten the game, you dumb fuck. Did you notice that again? Because so far, she's my favorite character. I can't say if it's all of them like that. It's like, then fuck off. Yeah, why are you even making this video if you haven't beaten it yet? He's making the video because he saw mean people on the internet were being critical of this game. So I have to jump to Milady's defense. Yeah, he, he yeah. again, he's such an NPC robot that he had to actually defend and white knight this game he hasn't finished yet because he's already tied his self-worth into it. Yeah. Yep. He's like, probably one of those people who kept saying like, uh, guys, stop judging it. It's not even out yet. You don't even know if it's going to be bad. Blah, 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 blah. Then it came out and it turned out to be shit. And now he's a he, fucking egg on his face and he can't accept it. Everyone who is critical of that announcement trailer is fucking vindicated by how dog shit this Absolutely. game Absolutely. Because yep. I remember seeing God. it for the first time myself and thinking, God, this looks so goddamn shit. Yep. Um, I 
trust me. I was, I so wanted to present a proud fucking stiffy to Mahler's Discord and be like, suck it, suck it all down, you piece of shit. <laughs> and again, there's nothing wrong with Mahler, and not everybody, but my god, the game's discussion thing. They were like, well, you can't say that, you don't know anything about it. He's like, you can obviously tell where the fuck it's going. Anybody who can put two and two together to make four can see where the fuck this is going. And it's not just that the trailer looked bad, it's that there's a history of Oh, there's a trailer for this thing. It looks bad, and then it ends up being bad. We've seen it time and time and time and time again. And um, their whole thing of pushing the woke agenda, like, on stage, talking about, like, powerful boss woman and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, God. Fucking gag me with a spoon. Yeah, Vincent Martin's on Mueller's Discord as well, so, yeah. yeah. Being on that Discord does not automatically make one intelligent. Yeah, but that goes for anything. Yeah. Exactly. We uh, we had our own little thing uh, for a while on our server. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> just, just to go back to the thing, we don't care if this guy likes the game. It's the fact that he's saying that, oh, yeah, these issues aren't actually issues. Yeah. That's the problem. I made fun of him in the Discord server and he cried. Yeah. Um, I, I assume you mean Vincent Martin. Uh, the moment he posted the video uh, about me to Mahler's Discord server, someone responded in like a joking manner. And Vincent but he is, Martin. Though, is what he said. Yeah. It's still sort of a joking manner, though. And no, Vincent... no, 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 no. I know. Uh, but I'm, I guess I, I did leave out the context of the name of the video. Yeah. But anyways, um, Vincent Martin instantly lost his shit at this guy, insulting him and talking shit. It was fucking hilarious. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the context was, the name of the video was, Kratosis isn't better than many a true nerd. And the guy immediately responded with, but he is, though. And Vincent Martin immediately was like, I should have known that the usual dipshits would be in this Discord as well. Because this is where I found Kratosis' channel posted to begin with. <laughs> Yeah, he fucking lost his shit and started crying. Yeah. And then the fucking mods had to step in and tell him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, we told you to shut the fuck up. You did no such thing. In fact, it was Box. Box didn't say that. Where put me to where he said that? Jesus, were you this fucking insufferable and terrible when Kratos' comments? I understand why now he told you to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> Anyways, we're over halfway through this video. Yeah. Writing your masterpiece. It isn't super deep and thought provoking, nor is it over the top and hilariously offensive like other games in the series. But from what I have played so far, the story, characters, and writing have been enjoyable enough to keep me interested and in wanting to go back to play more. Which for That's any because you are pathetic and have no standards. Yeah, you just admitted that it has nothing that other games have. Like, it, it's literally just a fucking gray mushy soup that has no worth. Yeah, um... This, this again, is why the, the whole subjectivity argument is just really weak when you're reviewing a game. Oh, I found the characters interesting. Well, none of us did. In fact, we can point to reasons why they're fucking insufferable and annoying and we don't like them. Um, yeah, they don't why they're shallow sense. and poorly characterized and they do stupid things that don't align with their fucking goals. How fast did such complete Saints Row reboot? I think like eight hours. No. What, what, what was it? Two and a half streams? No, it was like, no, it was four, three and a half streams. Well, not even three and a half, I guess, because the one stream was, wasn't it was even half. an hour. It was, it, it was half. About. No, it wasn't even an hour into that stream. Well... Okay, so, what, three, six, uh, eight, nine. Nine hours. Yeah. And that's with some fucking around, too. Yeah, and some of it was forced. Forced padding. Like, it forced me to do some of the side stuff to continue well, the story. That's... But it, and it wasn't stuff I was interested in. But that's also kind of the thing I said before, too, is that a big, big chunk of this game feels like fucking padding. Yeah. Like the going to McDonald's to pick up a fucking kids meal toy. Yeah, that's not a mission to take down one of your enemies. It's just 
bullshit that's happening for the sake of something fucking happening. Yeah. Yeah, so we got three hours here, and a lot of that was technical issues trying to fix everything. Three hours, 20 here, three hours, 20 here. So I'd say, altogether, if I get rid of all the technical issues and try to fuck with everything, nine hours altogether? Yeah. And keep in mind, a lot of that was padding. A lot of it is padded out. Yeah, it didn't help. We had to replay a... You had to replay a uh, fucking really annoying mission like three times because of a fucking cutscene. Yeah. I I guess I could shave another hour off for that because that was... That lasted for quite a fucking while. Yeah, it did. Especially the rebooting and then verifying integrity thing and, you know, trying to verify that everything's working. Yeah. Padding can be good, like on a bed. <laughs> I prefer the uh, Plinket quote. Uh, Filler can be good, like in Twinkies. And then he yeah. goes to that horrifying cat thing. Ugh. <laughs> What are you guys covering today, Kretosis? Uh, Woke Row and Ranks of Power. I, I prefer to call it Shits Row. Uh, Shits Woke now. Yeah. It just fits so perfect. <laughs> Padding can be good, like in my cell. <laughs> <laughs> Far, the story, characters, and writing have been enjoyable enough to keep me interested in wanting to go back to play more, which for any game really I think is good enough. Now I want to discuss- Again, huh. you have no standards. It, it's just- As long as the keys jingle enough to keep me interested, that's good enough. Yeah, it, it's just such a worthless statement. The characters, writing, and story were interesting enough to keep me coming back. Not that they were well done. Not that there's any actual quality to them. It's just, they're interesting to me. People find the fucking room interesting. Doesn't mean it's well written. Yeah. That's the game things. And once again, as I said in the intro, I'm not going to preach for the objective quality here. I'm only going to express whether this was an enjoyable experience for me or not. And so- Which is useless. Yeah. Yeah, it it's means completely nothing. completely useless as critique at all. So all I have to say is, this was a miserable fucking experience. It was terrible. All the weapons sounded awful. The gunplay was terrible. In fact, the game is so fucking buggy that my, my machine gun bugged out twice and gave me infinite ammo. So I just started using the machine gun to get through stuff faster. Even though I was using the fucking foam dart gun to show off how absurdly ludicrous it was, which also added more padding to the game because it takes so long. Infinite ammo across multiple play sessions. Yeah, and then it finally, like, fixed itself later. Yeah, unfucked itself for the last stream. Yeah. Wasn't this game made in California? Because it feels like it. This game is good because I like it, guys. Smiley face. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's literally what it amounts to. I'll be Stop right. being negative. Stop criticizing it. I like it, so therefore it's good. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this sucks. I fucking hate this game, and I hate this fucking... This mentality of, well... I I, I personally invested my stakes into this thing to be good, and... I, God damn it, I'm gonna defend it to the end. Fuck Friend off. To the ends of the earth. It took ages for me to get my pimp cane unlimited ammo in Saints Row 2. Yeah. Uh, such as you play Saints Row 3 or 4. I played 3 to completion and didn't play 4. And 3, I was like, I thought was really bad. Well, I should I should more say, was very mediocre. It was clear they were trying too hard to focus on... Um, they were trying too hard to focus on the wacky, zany, gonzo comedy. And yeah. you had far less of the 
the great like heartfelt moments so those moments where you got to learn about the the different people learn about the different gangs and everything and why they do what they do Four's gameplay loop is pretty fun, but it's not Saints Row in the slightest. It's Saints Row name only. That's kind of what I've heard about it because the whole alien invasion thing and it has to do anything about gangs and stuff because you're the leader of the world or whatever. You're the president of the United States and then, then the leader of the world because the earth gets blown up or something. Something like that. Yeah, all the gangs in three just kind of felt like one gang with three different limbs. They didn't really feel like... They didn't feel unique. Again, it's not like Saints Row 2. That's why I still hold the Saints Row 2 is the high water mark of the series. The Brotherhood, the Ronin, and the Sons of uh, Samedi, they feel very distinct and different from each other. And they feel like they have their own culture. They have their own reasons for why they're doing what they do. And they have logical areas that they set up their influence in. The Brotherhood are gun runners and everything, and they set up at the docks so that they can smuggle in shipments into the city. The Sons of Samedi, their entire thing is about drugs and everything, so they're where the youth are. They're, with the, they're at the college campus and everything, peddling and pushing drugs and narcotics. You've got the Ronin, and they're set up in Chinatown and everything, like as their base of operations, and they spread out there through extortion and protection rackets. Uh, Rachel Samil says Saints Row 1 and 2 were great, 3 was okay, 4 was really bad, and the new one made me want to commit self delete. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. To be fair, the gangs in Saints Row 3 all came together to create a large scale criminal enterprise. Yeah, yeah. God, I can barely even remember the gangs in three. I remember the I remember the Deckers. The, yeah, the nuclear power plant guys, the Deckers. They had all the fucking fancy lights and neon stuff and the Tron bikes. Yeah, I remember them. Uh, God, I remember Stag. Yep. What were the other two? Oh, yeah, the Luchadors and the Syndicate, right. I think the Syndicate had the most interesting look to them. Yeah. God, I could barely even remember that they existed, though. The Deckers were the only ones that I really remember, and it was because they were, like... It was, just, it was literally just a gang of gamers. <laughs> yeah. Which the, was kind of funny. The Luchadors were the only ones I remembered because they had the fucking... Hulk for their leader. Yeah, he, they did. They basically had Bane. Yeah, <laughs> as their leader. Actually, yeah, that's um, a better. Oh wait, wait, no, no. The Syndicate was the ending gang, wasn't it? Wasn't there another gang that they all the gangs formed together to make the Syndicate? Uh, I don't. <laughs> know. I know the Syndicate was at the beginning as well. They, like they, they were. Uh, you rob their bank and they Pete. get mad. People in chat are saying Killbane was his name. <laughs> oh, I just looked it up. It was! It was Killbane, yeah. That, <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, just, I just looked it up, and yes, um, that the Syndicate is when they all form together, they make the Syndicate. It's made up of the Morningstar, the Luchadors, and the Deckers. So the Morningstar was the one I couldn't oh, remember. Oh, the Morningstar. God, I could not even remember that that was their name. That's funny, because... The reason I would remember Morningstar comes from Secret World, not from that. So maybe that's, I just naturally thought I started thinking about Secret World again. <laughs> Morningstar yeah, is a fantastic enemy. Uh, horrific cult um, in, uh, more, in Secret World. Fantastic villain. <sighs> All right. 
Yeah. So far, say yes, I have had fun while playing Saints Row. Damn, I know, right? What a controversial opinion. Now, many people have- It's not- the, the opinion of having fun isn't the controversial part. The problem is, is when people then conflate that, I had fun, therefore good. Yeah. It's annoying- Yeah, that's the problem. It's annoying going into a video and you say, oh, this is going to be all subjective. Anyways, there's no problems here. The characters are fine. Um, yep. th this, this scene with Nina is highly emotional and really makes me care about her. Even And the game it totally isn't shallow, even though it's the most shallow, superficial shit ever. <laughs> Bezen says, dude, Secret World, why do you hurt me so bad? Bezen, Illuminati for life. <laughs> the Pyramidian sends his regard. Uh, yeah, we, we're we constantly dealing with this shit, though. Everyone always seems to do this, where they conflate... Oh, well, I enjoyed it with... That means it's good. Which is kind of funny that he says that, because he's like, I'm not going to have any objective opinions or statements in this video. It's all going to be my subjective feelings and how I felt about the game. Then he, and keeps then, doing objective and then he keeps statements. doing like, yeah, if he keeps doing objective statements like, well, actually, this character actually does have a lot of depth and oh, but this thing is actually really good that they did this. And it's like, that's that, that's an objective standard. That's an objective statement you're making. Yep. And again, it's because he knows deep down, he knows that just saying I liked it isn't enough. You, that's not good enough. Everybody was going to look at him and go, like, who fucking cares if you liked it? Yeah. to scare this game is, whether it be in terms of mechanics, glitches, or what have you. However, apart from the odd character teleportation and strange driving at times, I have noticed zero game-breaking glitches or problems that have inhibited my playing experience. Okay, well, one, that doesn't matter because you haven't beaten the fucking game. You've probably yep. barely gotten halfway through. Two, everyone else has, and it's been documented. They've recorded it. That's what, also, so what, yeah. what are you going to do now? That's also extremely anecdotal. I haven't experienced yes. any game-breaking issues. Oh, well, what about, I don't know, what if during one of the big long quests in the game, the game crashed every time a cutscene played? Because, yeah. you know, hypothetically, if such a thing were to happen... That would absolutely affect someone's experience of the game. Yeah. No, no, of course I'm not saying this has actually happened to anyone, especially not anyone <laughs> in this call right now, but what <laughs> if? What Currently holding if? a gun to someone's head. <laughs> holding <laughs> a pagan's head, judging by our icons. Yeah. Just, I keep saying we. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? We suffered we... just as much, damn it. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> oh. I'll be right back. I... The suffering we endured was pretty bad from the story side. We d Sure, we didn't have to shoot the guns, but we still saw everything. Yeah, you didn't have to experience the controls. Well, sure. Yeah, the, the, the act of playing the game in and of itself was a fucking ball ache. Oh, but yeah, it, it's... And again, it, again... Let's take it for an example here. I, when I first played Fallout New Vegas, did not experience a single bug at all. I didn't have a single bug when I first played New Vegas. Neither did I. And I bought it day one and played it day one. Yep, I did as well. Does that mean, therefore, there weren't bugs and everything? Of course fucking not. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> It was it was obvious. I knew I got lucky. At least Such had some mild fun while playing. You guys just watched the worst movie ever. I don't think Such would count any part of that game to be fun. Would you? Yeah. No, not at all. Hmm. Like uh, again, I, I had that moment of like Eureka discovery. When we were first doing the fucking LARPing session, I shot and missed one of the sandworms. Whatever, what do they fucking call themselves? The the worm crew or whatever. Yeah, I don't. Doesn't 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 matter. matter. So I missed them and I hit the tire and I saw the tire pop. Cree and Pagan didn't notice that, and I was going on to shoot someone else. And then I stopped and I was like, wait a minute. And then I told Cree and Pagan, I'm like, Cree and Pagan, pay attention to the stream real quick. <laughs> 
There's the tapeworms. That's right. Yeah. I Get like... it? Because because they're they're the sand people, and they also steal all the duct tape, so no one else can make stuff for the LARP. Get it? Tape worms. Uh. Why don't you just go to fucking Walmart and buy some tape there? Like. You can't. Remember, Eli says they bought all the duct tape in the entire city. So first of all, if being able to LARP relied on duct tape, I feel like that would be outright cheating, first of all. Mm -hmm. Second of all, all the duct tape in the city. Like, y you realize that's an absurd amount of duct tape, and it's going to be extremely expensive, and they're probably going to get a new shipment in a few days. Yeah. They're just going to buy it all again? I didn't realize LARPers ran a criminal fucking empire just so they could buy out all the duct tape. Yeah. It, it's incredibly... It's, it's, the game is incredibly fucked on every level. Like, the, the writing and everything is so dog shit. I said, that scene with Nina, it, it's so... Because that's her only defining moment, and it's kind of, like, weak. It's just, oh, God. The Especially because everything else, she's just she's presented as she mopes and cries and lays around too. The family we didn't know she had is suddenly an issue, and we'll never hear about them again. Yeah, it's the imagine only time they're brought up. Imagine if instead you actually you actually had to interact with her family and her mother and see her driving her around and stuff like that. You know, build up that this is a thing that happens. You don't need to spell it out. You're like, yeah, I can't. I gotta go take care of my mom. And then you see her driving her mom. And then maybe you get worried about Nina because she's been acting weird lately. So you follow her in the car and you realize that Nina's dropping her off at like the radiology clinic and everything where she's getting her chemo for her mom and stuff. And then that just that associates in your mind. Now you understand it. You didn't need the game to tell you in words. You got to see it, and that lets you build the connection. Trust me, connection you build yourself instead of it being told a connection that totally existed. It just it was never shown. It, it's, it's real, though, guys. Yeah, way more impactful. You know what that just uh, reminded me of? What's that? Loki in the hit TV show Loki having oh. his backstory played to him on TV. Not, yeah. not his backstory, but the story he had in the Marvel movies that he didn't experience because he's an alternate version of himself. Not even an alternate yeah. version, but a split timeline version of himself. And that just uh, speed runs all of his character development for those movies. Rather than actually experiencing those moments, he just saw them on a TV. And that, that had the same effect as actually experiencing all those moments. Yeah. Fuck I'm back. Oh, I'm back. Welcome back. Now we can continue the suffering. E. Now, it's that I am playing this on PC and have not tried out every single mission or event in the game. It's obvious people are not lying about bugs and issues, but from my experience so far, it seems they are overselling how broken this game actually is. Are they? No. They are no. not. Pro provide They're overselling it. Provide examples. And again, this is I entirely anecdotal. Street. Just because. Yeah. You didn't experience bugs doesn't mean they're overselling the bugs. What if someone playing the game has it crash every five seconds? That'd be pretty fucking annoying, wouldn't it? It seems pretty fucking significant, but because you didn't experience, uh, experience it, what, that's overselling it? No. Fuck off. Yep. Yeah, it sure would be bad if someone on his side actually made a video recently talking about all, all the bugs they experienced and how shit the game was. Hmm... Jim Sterling. Oh, yeah, I was going to say you meant James Silver. <sighs> I forgot he made a video talking about how shit this was. Yeah, hmm. and he went over all the bugs he experienced and stuff and how he couldn't even play some of the game because the fucking uh, objectives wouldn't update. Hmm. Like, it was really bad. Kritosis. I barely uh, had any bugs with Cyberpunk, but I know that I was an exception because the bugs were meme-worthy. Yeah. 
Skill up didn't even finish? What, Saints Row? That's right. Yeah. I don't blame him. The whole city is on duct tape shortage from what they say. That's dumb. Jim probably found a way to have a shit take on explaining all the bugs he found. I wouldn't put it past him. To be fair, he did criticize the game and like said it was shit and it was terrible and stuff because of all the bugs and the writing and stuff. But at the same time, he did also defend like the woke aspects and shit and was like, of course. like that's not the actual problem with this game. The woke stuff, like it's not actually woke and anyone who calls it that is a fucking idiot. Well, Jim Sterling isn't someone who should be commenting on other people's intelligence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking. Yeah, Jim Soiling is. That's a great <laughs> fucking way for it. <laughs> Dude. Uh, but yeah. Uh, you guys should watch EFAP 200 where they're uh, covering Jim Sterling's Sekiro video. It uh, is so similar uh, to the one we covered on Elder Ring, just without the racism. Oh, God. Oh, it's hard. I can't believe that Jim held himself back. <laughs> well, no, that was old Jim Sterling. See, he's advanced since then. He's let his inner racist out to say people want these games difficult so minorities can't play them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were about to watch Acer Thorn. Oh, I know. Um, I, I think I'm going to tweet at Mauler. Like, hey, if you still want to cover that Ace with Thorn video, I'll host it just to hear you rip it apart. Because, yes. holy shit, he, he seemed excited to go in on that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. God, I would be there in a heartbeat. Yeah. is style this game is very arcadey rather than realistic you are looking at a just cause style of driving and combat rather than gta 5 and while yes it did take a bit of getting used to to get the more clunky shooting and driving mechanics down once i did i ended up having quite a bit of fun driving in this game specifically is a lot better than i originally expected it to be and it's really fun drifting around the city and running into things like crazy there is also a large variety oh god Hear all these fucking things about it's fun, it was enjoyable, it's crazy, ooh. Again, all of this meaningless fluff nonsense he's saying. Kratosis, did you see what Volition said in backlash to all the or in response to all the backlash this game got? I'm glad yeah, you they brought probably, that up. I am glad you brought back. that up because I haven't seen what Volition has said. But I've seen one of what their developers have said. Let me let me get this nice little image up on screen quickly. Let's copy oh, yeah. link. Um, it, it was going to get brought up at some point, but oh god, there's that stupid lizard snake that Seth uh, showed me on the Breath of Fire stream. Re. <laughs> Not a lizard snake. It's, it's a, a snake that's lizard. a lizard. It's a lizard that's a snake. It's it's a snake snake. It's a legless lizard. Yeah, it's a snake. No. Um, anyways, image. So, this is from... Uh, hold on, let me get the image up on my side so I can see it more clearly. A systems designer at Volition. The haters today. Uh, and he uses that classic straw man comic. You know that the writing is bad, right? Gameplay is so boring and repetitive. Quit having fun! No one says this. No one does this. Nope. Fuck off, you weirdo. It's pathetic that one of the developers would uh, unironically fucking tweet this. And he even went out of his way to edit a fucking fedora and uh, beard onto the guy. Which is what, we, you know, we, I, I'll keep the fedora and beard, but said I'll have him holding Saints Row and have them playing some other game. Be like, you should be playing this game. It's actually totally woke and about our time and it's a good moral message. Stop playing other games! <laughs> be like there i fixed it for you show his avatar now oh no i i don't have the tweet up any like i just saved the picture but is this is this avatar like really bad well no just look his avatar he, he's a fucking neck beard loser yeah the bigger i'm making this image i'm seeing the beard come in more clearly yep yeah He couldn't even be bothered to, like, edit it to look good. 
He just slapped yep. a cover over the TV. Yep. Modern AAA game designer, everyone. What a beacon of mature, uh, maturity. Wait, is he saying neckbeards and woke people hate the game? Because last I checked, neckbeards are part of the woke. Yeah. Again, he, he, he's trying to do this, not realizing that he's categorizing the audience that they specifically pander to for this game are the neckbeards and the woke fucking NPCs. Ooh. Um, when someone highlighted how the game would not get as many complaints if they replaced these clowns and give us the real saints, doesn't even have to be told the old crew, just real gangsters. Um, the official account replied with a gif of, Haters gonna hate. <laughs> wow. <sighs> um, yeah, pretty fucking pathetic response on Volition's part. of difficulties to be driven which all have different handling so it's in a unique experience yeah yeah okay which is what they had in saints row one two three and four that's not anything new or different or anything at all right but the problem is is that their variety of handling is dire oh god yeah like we saw the vast like difference i would get on one motorcycle and it was unfucking usable i get on another motorcycle it's like oh my god this one's actually tolerable holy shit God, it was wild. How and it didn't make any fucking sense, right? It didn't make any fucking sense for like the vehicles. It's like here's this one sports car and it handles like shit, and here's another like jalopy beater, but it handles like a sports car. It's like what the fuck? Um, yeah, I remember that they banned anyone who criticized them and thanked the mods who did so in the game's credit sequence. Yeah, they thanked their Discord and Reddit mods in the credits of the game. It turns out one of their Discord mods um, is on a grape forum. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Huh. Gotta thank the grapists. So so they pulled a... Oh, God. What's that guy who likes the green M&M? Um, Linkara. The, Linkara. Yeah, he pulled a Linkara. Yep. <laughs> Reset the clock. Kretosis, out of curiosity, was this outsourced to another dev team, or was this from the same developers? So considering the last Saints Row game was several years ago, I'm assuming it's a different team. Um, if it's anything, the same name. If anything, it feels like they were mandated to make this game, and that's why it exists. Oh, yeah. Saints Row was a popular series, and we haven't made a game since, like, what, 2013 or something? So, let's make a new Saints Row game. And... Yeah, just just do it, Volition. So Volition makes their Saints Row game and it's this garbage. Ooh. Also, one of the uh, Discord mods also said, fuck all the Saints Row 1 and 2 fans. Um, yeah. Pretty bad, if true. I can't believe we've reached a point where game companies are getting legitimately upset at criticism. Yeah, it's pretty fucking pathetic. Um, yeah. Not so, not entirely surprising, though, because we've seen this shit before with, like, Ryan Johnson in uh, The Last Jedi and other big things yep. being criticized for being dog shit. Um, it is amazing how thin-skinned uh, creators are nowadays who make movies and video games and stuff. Um... Fuck, there's something else I was going to say and I forget what it was. Oh, yeah. Um, just to the whole, like, grape forum thing. Why the fuck would you use, like, your your name that you use on public websites on a porn site? Meh. It's almost time we drive a car. Alongside that, wingsuit traversal is a load of fun. Going up to the top of a bill. Yeah, and Kevin has one too, while not having any fucking shirt on. Where's the wingsuit come from? Mmm. Mmm. I wonder.
building just off and glide to your destination is one of the best feelings in the world. And honestly, I wish more games had Stop one making of... objective statements of quality, you idiot. One of the best feelings in the world. So, flying a wingsuit is better than sex? Mm, yep. Yes, Sash, Kevin is a sugar glider. <laughs> Kevin is a genetic flying squirrel experiment. Yeah, there you go. How yeah, horrifying... he wouldn't know. How horrifying would it be? If Kevin had, like, the skin flaps on him the entire time. For the one time he glides. Yeah. <laughs> it would honestly probably improve the game. Probably. Because you're going to realize they're, they're mutant freaks, which they are, honestly. It's... They definitely will be with the fucking amazing criminal em uh, enterprise of dumping... Absurdly glowing green nuclear waste in the fucking city. Yeah, yeah, no one no one is gonna notice that. It's fine. It, it, it's like the people who made this game don't know what fucking gangs do. It's had this. The only main issue I had here with the gameplay is the combat. While not abysmal, it definitely feels dated. The gun mechanics ha Again, you're making objective statements of quality. While not abysmal, is an objective statement of quality. And keep talking about how this is going to be your subjective, no one gives a shit about your opinion on this game. And then you're not going to do any objective qualifiers or anything, but you just keep doing it. Because deep down you know that nobody gives a shit about your subjective opinion. I think... A lot of people just genuinely don't know the difference anymore. Like, yeah. It is shocking how many people come into the comments of my videos and say stuff like, Oh, you don't know what objective is. You're just trying to pass off your opinion as being objective. Um, good and bad are uh, entirely subjective. They're not objective at all. Stuff like that. No. Good and bad are objective qualifiers of, of quality. Of objective statements of quality. Yeah. Like, I like it or I disliked it are the things that are subjective. Even the title is objective, but the video is the total opposite. I hate that shit. Yeah, the title is, Is the New Saints Row really that bad? And the thumbnail is, No. It, yep. It's literally a character in one of the idol's helmets with a giant no beside it. Yeah. And again, you are asking an objective quality question, and then you are responding as a statement of fact. No. If you had done, if you had done, is the new Saints Row really that bad? Sure, that's an objective question. But then you had done, well, I like it, as your thumbnail instead. Yeah, there you go. You're now you've 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 made clear that it's you're giving your subjective opinion. Even yeah. though, as we've seen in this video, you're not giving subjective opinions. Yeah, but putting I like it in the thumbnail just isn't as pactful as no. Yep, exactly. Hand-to-hand -hand special abilities are all quite clunky and don't always work as intended. But it never feels like the game is trying to screw you over with... Again, you're now saying objective qualities the game has when you promise you wouldn't do that. Like I said, somewhere your brain knows that you have to, to have your criticisms or thoughts or anything on this be valued by anyone else. If good and bad is subjective, is a doctor's performance during surgery subjective? Uh, yes. You know, the doctor who um, accidentally fucking uninstalled your heart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that it's just your opinion that uh, he did a bad job because bad is subjective. I think he did a good job. Yeah. With Paul...
Almost all of the first few missions in the game are very, very combat heavy, and I never found myself getting frustrated or angry at the way the combat works. Just a little bit of getting used to and a tad of patience. In no way I would ever mm. take this experience over playing something like GTA 5. Such, tell me how you feel about the amazing gunplay of Saints Row. It's terrible. You... The, the fiddle fuckery you have to do to get the mouse to actually work. This is one where it legitimately feels better to use a controller to play this game because they clearly designed it with the controller in mind. And the mouse is so fucked. Have there we... is mouse smoothing and acceleration you can't get rid of. It's so fucking frustrating. Having played the original Saints Row on controller on um, totally legitimate hardware... Um, that, that kind of gives me a feel for how fucked the guns are in this game. Because let me tell you, aiming a third-person, like, shooter on a controller is completely fucked. Yep. Again, it's why controllers will rely so much on aim assist or uh, nudging the crosshair, something like that. If they want to make it feel more like you did the aiming thing... They won't just have the bullets magically go towards the target. They'll actually nudge the crosshair slightly. They'll auto-correct for you. Yeah. Honestly, in Saints Row 1, when playing it on uh, totally legitimate hardware, 100% for sure, it's it's way better to um, have your, I guess, not, not cursor, but your uh, crosshair. That's the word I was looking for. Have your crosshair, like, at general body height with the enemies and moving your character back and forth to have it land over them and then shoot yeah. rather than aiming for each individual one I think it's just your opinion that your femurs being turned into dust is a bad thing so just <laughs> shut up and walk it off subjective Sam probably <laughs> 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 As a former horse ranch worker, I'd rather shovel this shit out than have to endure it. Or than yep. to endure it. <laughs> yeah, can you spot the enemies here? And yeah, look at how awful the mini map. By the way, the, the, the your little fucking HUD, your radar thing is so shit in this game. Does it not actually show the layout of the room you're in? No, it's just, this just shows you even, where the enemies are. Even Saints Row 1 fucking did that. Yep. But when I am sitting there playing Saints Row, it's not like I'm wishing I was playing something else. It's an enjoyable enough experience that when you... <laughs> well, guess what? To, again, to directly counter your subjective take you just had there, I did wish I was playing something else. I got paid to play this game, and I wanted to get a refund. <laughs> I actively put in the title, like, we're trying to beat this game fast enough to get a refund. And we didn't, unfortunately, so I have to keep it. But hey, at least I got, what, um, uh, $802, so I'll take it. Oh. You heard it, everyone. Such a soul is worth $802 if you want him to play a bad game. Well, apparently my soul is now worth $300 because Hunt Down the Freeman to play the entire thing is 300 For me, how much would it cost... How much would I need to be paid to play Hunt Down the Freeman? You said 300 Yeah, that's what I have it at. I'd probably go for at least 1000 I'll give you $15 and a high five, Cree. No. <laughs> <laughs> Play Sonic 2006? That's a big no. Since you can't get a refund, how much for you to complete it? You want me to go fucking back? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, Such, how much to play it from beginning to end again? Oh, that's going 2K. <laughs> How much to play it again after that? Oh, jeez. Go ahead and cry. <laughs> Six million. <laughs> I get the impression you do not like this amazing game set. What is wrong with you? Yeah, I have standards. 
You'd be surprised <laughs> how often that gets you in trouble in modern day. Yeah, true. I'm gonna have a good time. Is the gameplay clunky? Yes. Is the gameplay unpolished at time? Yes. Is the gameplay still enjoyable? Also, yes. No, 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 no. No, you cannot, no. You cannot say that. Again, you can't make these objective statements of fact. Fuck I, off. I'm glad this person said the, it's fun for everyone. Everyone will yeah. have fun with it. Yep, everybody. Literally every single person. That's what you just said. God, yeah. I was right. This video is way worse than the other one we would have covered. This is fucking atrocious. The other one was not that good either, but some of it was like rambly and it's like, okay, yeah, whatever. But this, this is something special. Holy shit. Yep. And again, we can get into the whole thing of like, is this game shit? Yes. And you'd be like, oh, well, you can't say that as an exact thing. No, we can. And the way we do that is we start providing evidence to back up the claim. What makes it shit? Why is it shit? And we point out the characterizations, the motivations. We'll compare and contrast the, to the series it's rebooting. Like, again, we can actually make these statements. Yeah, this guy is just going, he's literally just going, well, this is bad, and this is bad, and this is bad, but it's also good. Mm. And then moving on, he's not even giving an objective qualifier for what would make it good he's, in his eyes. He's, he's not providing evidence for why it's good, or why it's bad, or why it's fun. Yeah. yeah. He's just making the statement that it is. Okay, now you have to prove it. Where's your work? Where's your homework? Said and quality are not directly correlated. So even though Saints Row might not be the most fluid and okay, okay, yes, I agree on a base level. Enjoyment and quality are not completely linked. I enjoy the shit out of Ride to Hell Retribution. It's an awful game. It has no quality, but I enjoy it. And again, if if anybody has ever been here on Stag, I've said this many times. I enjoy it because the main character is a dumbass, and the writing team knew he was a dumbass, so they made him a dumbass. Like, he does stupid things because he's dumb. It's fucking great. Is Ride the Hell better or worse than Saints Row? Ooh, objectively speaking? Uh, sure. I'd say better... Because less budget, less time went into it, um, they didn't have as big of a team, and you had somebody, you had the writing staff at least know, they understood the characters in Ride to Hell Retribution. Did, um, did any of the writers for Ride to Hell Retribution cry on Twitter or any other platform about um, how the people who don't like this game are fucking telling people to stop having fun? Yeah, as far as I know, no. Oh. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd unironically say Red Hill Retribution is a better game than, than Saints Row 2022. Drive to a power plant to turn off a fence, Setch. But as exactly. Setch has said in the past, that That's makes, my favorite part! It's, it's completely nonsense, it's not logical at all, but in the mind of the retarded main character, it makes perfect sense. Yes, to the stupid character, it makes a logical sense, right? So he sees, a, for anyone that doesn't know Ride to Hell Retribution, he sees an electric fence stopping him, preventing him from getting to his goal. He decides, I gotta get over that electric fence, but it's an electric fence. Hmm, how am I gonna deal with this? So he goes and steals a truck. Now, a normal person, be like, okay, take the truck, smash the fence down, okay? The truck will protect you from the elect electricity and the electric fence. Easy, easy peasy. Our character then gets on the road and turns away from the electric fence and goes to the power plant. Because the character is an idiot. And in his mind, electric fence bad. It shocked me. How would get rid of electricity? Turn off power. How turn off power? Power plant give power. I go turn off power plant. The power plant that is several miles down the fucking road, by the way. And when he gets back, he looks the fence... Decides that it's too much of a struggle to go up the chain links and instead climbs up the rocks, which would not be electrified, by the way. <laughs> climbs up the rocks to get over the fence instead. 
Like I said, <laughs> he's an idiot, but the writers know he's an idiot. They're actually playing with, in his mind, this makes logical sense, and it does to an idiot. I fucking, I love it. I, I, I love it so much. It's just so fucking good. I love games where the writing staff know that the that one of the characters is an idiot, and they can understand the idiot logic. They understand how idiots think, and how they're very, like, they can't think beyond a certain note. Once they go on a pathway of thinking, they, they're stuck there. They can never, like, backtrack and think outside the box or anything. They've made their path, and now they're walking it, and they're staring at a brick wall going, Duh, what do? It's so fucking good. I'd love to see ER cover this. Saints Ho, Cunts of the Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would love to see him do a video on this. Holy shit. Yeah. In Polish experience we have ever seen, it still had enough pizzazz to leave me with some really fun and enjoyable times. Now, of course, you, Saints you can't fully say that yet because you haven't finished the fucking game god damn man I hate, I hate this I hate this so much you can't make these statements I and mean, it left me with this well you haven't finished the game how do you know what it left you with already Yeah, it seems weird to me to do a sort of review like this. Like, it's not a first impressions review. He's clearly played a bunch of this game, but he hasn't yeah. completed it. So what if the rest of the game you haven't played is entirely garbage and unenjoyable to you? Would you still recommend it? Would, and, would comple you... and, and completely undermines everything you said you liked. Yeah, like, what if the rest of this game is so bad that it, like, retroactively ruins your enjoyment of the previous parts of the game? Um, maybe not the gameplay, but, like, the story stuff you liked. What if, what if you find out later that, uh, Nina killed her mother and ate her corpse? Would, would that, would that scene of her car being destroyed still be as emotional? Yeah. I don't know, probably not. It's a old game, and the world of Santo Aliso is... Good. Not outstanding. No, <laughs> no. Objective statements of fact again. Why is this city good? What's your evidence that this city is good? I guess let's see if he goes into it. But, but not terrible. It has a mix of city, town, and desert regions. Loads of locations where you can do stunt jumps, fight waves of enemies, or set up your own businesses and do missions. I don't... How does any of that make the city good? What is your qualifying standard for good? Is it laid out like a logical city? Oh, fuck no. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. It, it, it's, it is as video gamey as video gamey gets. Like, what, what is your criteria for it being good? And then again, he, he doubles down on, on this objective qualifier... It's not great, but it's not terrible either. Okay, why isn't it great? Why isn't it terrible? What are your objective qualifiers for that statement? It's not great, it's not terrible, just feels like such a fucking nothing statement to me. Just tell me what you think it is. Yeah. His standard is the bare minimum. It very much seems like it. Yep. Um... Maybe we treated Saints Row 4 too harsh. At least you could roleplay a Senator Armstrong as the president in it. Um, Nano machine, son. Yeah, perhaps I've treated you too harshly. That's that, that's that, oh god. That's that Brandon Herrera one. Or, uh, where that one a sergeant in the army uh, killed the, the commies, the Antifa fucking commies. And then it the, turns out that the, that sergeant was also a furry. And Brandon Herrera said, hmm, perhaps I've judged you too harshly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's so fucking good. No, no, you gotta have 3.6, not 3.7. Not I, great, not terrible. I wouldn't be surprised, if he gives a number score, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a 7 out of 10 middle of the road from this. Yeah, oh god. <laughs> 
Oh my god, yeah, no, if he says that shit again. That's kind of the average game, you know, it's 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10 is an average motherfucker. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's fucking shit. 7 out of 10, like it's okay. Long enough yet. <laughs> Play the game long enough yet to give an in-depth review of the world. I haven't played the game long enough yet to give an in-depth review of the world. So how do you know the city is good? How do you know it's not terrible? How do you know it's not great? I haven't played the game long enough to give an in-depth review of the world. Fucking idiot. Do missions. I don't feel I've played the game long enough yet to give an in-depth review of the world itself, but from what I've seen so far, it is a fun place to be in. At times, the world can feel a little empty when driving from location to location, but never to a point where I was wishing to just fast travel and get it over with. There's enough different cars and ways to traverse the world that it keeps you interested throughout. And like a tip- God. No, 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 no. Now you're saying what it's going to do for other people. Again, you are really bad at this. Yeah. This is you, your feelings, not what other people will experience. You even said that you're going to not do objective things, even though you've constantly done it all throughout. Yeah, but there's enough cars to keep you interested. Yep. There's enough activities to keep you interested. There's enough things to do to keep you interested. Um... It's weird that this needs to be explained, but you is not me. There's enough cars to keep me interested because it's my subjective opinion. There's not enough yeah. activities to keep me interested because it's my objective opinion. Fucking hell, this is not difficult. Yep. And keep in mind, by the way, I, I just need to talk about how stupid these characters are. Kevin, this is your new hideout. This is them getting the Saints hideout right now. This is them getting the church. Uh, that they're going to get their whole flirt at least from and everything like that. Kevin posts it on Instagram. Let's check out our new hideout and digs. He posts it all over social media. And so everybody knows where the fuck you are. This is how dumb all these characters Which are. Which immediately leads to your new hideout being attacked by an enemy gang. Yep. Oh, yeah, I, 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 re I read yep. that one, too, and that's a yep. comment I've ow. seen before, and it's not one I'm going to read out loud. Yep, ow, 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 ow. Moving Typical you can always find yourself in gang fights or running from cops, which is enough entertainment and stimulation to make it interesting at most times you're playing. And While you're most... playing, yes. while you're playing, no, 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 it's you, while you, the person doing this, um, Lank Man Dan, you, only you, you don't get to say what it's going to do for other people. No. Such did all the attacking the cops and whatever the fuck he just said, did I keep the game interesting for you? No, not at all. In fact, I tried could, to fast travel everywhere I possibly could so I could get it over with faster. Could you make an argument as to why other people might not find it fun? Because there's nothing in depth or interesting about it. They don't like try to set up roadblocks. They don't try to do intricate maneuvers. It's not like Saints Row Two, right? Even where Saints they Row try One to... had the roadblocks. They had fucking yeah, they... spike strips. Yeah, where they try to set up ambushes and things like that. They don't. They don't do that. You don't have the gangs escalating in tension like you do in Saints Row Two, for example. Um, well, it was like only the cops in Saints yourself... Row One that had the uh, roadblocks and spike traps. But yeah. When you first start pissing off a gang, they send their their lower quality vehicles, and they only have like one guy, maybe two guys, and they have their lowest quality weapons. You keep pissing them off more and more, they eventually build up to their highest vehicles that are filled with four gangbangers that are armed with, with maybe like double barrel shotguns or AKs and stuff like that. So it feels like there's escalating tension as you're pissing them off more and more and more. Not to mention, everything feels distinct in Saints Row 2. You feel you feel the district you're in when you're in Saints Row 2. In in this, they all it all blends together. Like you can't really tell what district you're in. Like what what does this district look like to you? It looks like the entire rest of the game, from what I remember, except for that one small area that has a big a few big tall buildings in it. Yeah, it has the, the stadium. Yeah. Near Marshall's but, Tower. 
but most of the game world looked like what you're seeing here, just blocky square buildings attached to other blocky square buildings and a lot of sand. Yeah. Which, fair enough, it's a desert town, but... But still. it's just weird because it's not like... It's, it's like, okay, so if this is what the town looked like, if this is what the city was, fine, fair enough, it's a desert town. But then you have the the skyscraper towers and the stadium and everything like that. Does it look like that would belong in this kind of town? Not really. Yeah, and people can say, well, it's just a different district. Fair enough, but this is a district right next to that district. Yeah, see, in Saints Row 1, there are very clear districts as well uh, as Saints Row 2. And even though you know, different building styles, it made sense that, okay, you know, this is the factories and warehouse district, this is the uh, the red light district, there's the downtown district, where you could see how all of this would exist in one big city. And we, I, I can't see that connection being made in this game. Yeah. And the, and the stuff would have a logical layout, right? Like, you'd have the docks. There's a little more dirty, and who, who wants to live next to all that, like, constant heavy machinery going around? So they put the factories near the docks. Then who wants to live next to the factories? So you get the lower rent, lower income housing that's there, and it branches out. And as you go more north in the city, you get the nicer buildings that they slowly start weaving in nicer businesses and nicer neighborhoods and high rises and everything. So you're saying so, the city in the original two games was built, uh, probably three games. I, I don't remember what Steelport looks like off the top of my head, but what we're saying is they were built with logic in mind. Yes. Oh. Logic is the enemy. Kill it. We need our dumb fucking city for this dumb fucking game. Yeah, burn logic with fire. And I'm sure progress in this game further and expand your influences as the Saints, you will see more missions, opportunities, fights, and mini events pop up, which will fill your- No, no you don't though. You don't. You don't get any of that. They don't ever attack territory or anything like that. It's not like in Saints Row 2 where you're actually actively taking territory and the enemy gangs fight back and try to take their territory back from you so you have to go defend it. It's Saints not like that at all. Saints Row uh, 1 has that feature as well. Yeah. And, again, you have the fucking drug truck missions. Remember how easily I beat all the, the... Sorry, I only had to do two of them, but I needed to do two of them to actually finish the fucking story. So, do you remember the food truck missions? I would just show up, shoot the people around the food trucks, get in it, drive it back to our base, we would win. Hmm. Did that ever change any of it? Did it ever escalate? No, it was the same thing. Go out. Shoot everybody around the food trucks, take the food truck, take it back, get it repainted. It's just it's just fucking terrible. There's there's nothing good about it. There's nothing unique about it. Do do the other food trucks try to fight back against you or anything? No, and guess what? You only do it three times and then you go back to your place for the fourth mission to talk to the guy and he's like, Hey, we did it, boss, we took over all the food truck drug uh, you know, drug rings. Bam, done. Wow, how interesting. Oh god, he's how on unique. Oh god, he's on Saints Row again. I just joined. We're all on Saints Row right now. It's a video we're covering. It yeah, we're talking bad. about Saints Row. GTA San Andreas sounds like it has better territory wars. Well, having the mechanic at all is certainly better than not having it at all. Yeah, this 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 game doesn't have that mechanic at all. It doesn't exist. Unless it's there, but it's just one of the things that was bugged and never triggered. I can imagine that being the case. Yeah, but you don't take territory. That's true. You, you don't... You, you, you kill... Or, I should say, you take the land deeds for the church and a bunch of other places, and then you just build buildings there. And then the, those buildings are your, si your side story, your missions. Maybe that is how you take the territories from the other gangs, but it kind of doesn't make sense to do that, it, like, th to have it done that way, because once you're in the post-game, the leaders of those gangs are dead. The gangs are practically the wiped idols. out. Well. Yeah. And again, we talked about they fucked up on that one real bad. Yeah. But then that's just them leaving a loose end. Or 
how fucked would it be if it's a side mission, an optional quest, to kill the final two idols' leaders? Yeah, that would be pretty fucked. But, like, again, you you can put any of your businesses anywhere. So I was at least trying to be logical about, like, well, where would we put the doctor, you know, the insurance fraud thing? Well, I'd put it near the downtown buildings, right? That just seems logical to me. It'd be the place that would have the money, the insurance buildings and everything. Where would I put the drug thing? Well, I'd put it out here more the outskirts thing, because I don't want people to be too close. I don't want to be too busy. I don't want people looking too closely at the food trucks, given all the drugs. But you can literally put these anywhere. So they, they don't feel natural. They, it, they feel like, literally, it, you're just Lego snapping in this, this prefab wherever you want. It doesn't fit in with the rest of the terrain unless you go out of your way to make it fit in. And keep in mind, you don't actually take the territories from it. You don't get territory for it. You just slot it in. It doesn't change anything. You don't have more of your gang showing up around the area or anything. None of that changes at all. And you have to do this to progress the story, to just slot these in wherever willy-nilly. Oh, it's just, it's, it's such a shit system. You could tell that they threw it in at the last moment. Like, it, it feels very half-baked. And, again, to reference Saints Row 1, and I believe Saints Row 2 has the same thing, to take territories from the enemy gangs who are completing main missions or stronghold missions. Yep. Um, you do a mission in this district and you take out the whatever thing they're doing there, whatever the quest is related to, and that district is yours now. And you're eroding their control over the city as you progress through their quest line. Or, yeah, quest line still works. Um, yeah, yeah. But not all of them are necessarily going to be, oh, hey, this is a main quest mission. Some of them are strongholds where you choose to go in and wipe it out, and then you take that territory. And I believe the way it works is you have to take all of the strongholds and complete all the quests before you can get the final quest. Obviously, you have to complete all the missions before you get the final mission, but I think you need all the strongholds, too, to get the final mission. I don't think they did that anymore in... Two? You don't need all the strongholds anymore? Really? You just have to do all the missions. Okay, because I had one stronghold left, and it was a bit of a bitch to capture, and I don't think the final mission was available until I did that. Yeah, fair enough. At least for the Canarlis. I, 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 can't, I can't remember specifically in Saints Row 2, because I just remember the, the story beats and everything the most. Well, you'll be getting there fairly uh, soon, from the sounds of it. Yeah, for the Brotherhood, at least. Yeah. Well, we're almost done this video. Your world, but as I have not gotten to that stage yet, I can't promise anything there. Now for my final thoughts on this game. If you- Again, how do you have final thoughts when you haven't beat the game yet? I know I had my final thoughts of Skyrim after the first five minutes of playing. My opinion has never changed since that in any way. Yeah. It's- <sighs> It's just fucking weird. Here's my final thoughts on a game I like and haven't finished yet and I'm going to continue playing. So you don't have your final thoughts because you don't have all the information. Yeah. Here's your final thoughts for the video, not on the game as a whole. Yep. To do the last mission for each gang, you need all the strongholds completed. Okay. It was just uh, for getting the last mission to unlock. It makes sense because you're getting... The gang at their weakest. Yeah. Yeah. You were going into this expecting a typical Saints style game, whether this be emulating the styles of Saints Row 1 and 2 or 3 and 4, you will probably be a little bit disappointed. Maybe that's a big fucking problem for a Saints Row game. But you said everyone would enjoy it, so how yeah, could they you... possibly be disappointed? And you already said that it, there's enough to keep everyone entertained. Yeah. Like, there's enough cars to keep you entertained. There's enough. Maybe you should have scripted your fucking video. Yeah. Also, again, this is what I'm talking about, chat. That is an idol, and they are spinning around those fucking glow sticks on on ch not chains on string, 
like they're at a rave concert and that stops all bullets. So he threw a satchel charge and notice that the satchel charge isn't sitting on the model itself. It's sitting on the hip box, the outer hip box of where the glow stick would be. I also want to point something else quickly. Take a look at the pattern being made with the glow stick there. It's mostly a pink circle with white triangles um, breaking it up in even spaces. When you're spinning something around that has different colors on it, that's not what it looks like. You would never get the... It would be a circular line of that color. It wouldn't be a triangle. And yep. by circular line, I mean it follows the shape of the circle. It, like... God. Yeah, yeah. No, it is the same shit as was said with the last one. So Denode says, Don't expect a Saints game to emulate a Saints game. This is the same shit with Seven, Last of Us 2. Yeah, it really is. How dare you expect the Saints Row reboot to be like a Saints Row game? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like it's, you know, named after that fucking franchise or anything. Why is this such a common fucking thing? Oh, you shouldn't expect Fallout 3 to be like the original Fallouts. You shouldn't expect the new Saints Row to be like the old Saints Row. Why not, if you're going to do something different, just make a new fucking series. This game would have stood yeah. on its own if it was called something entirely different, but, like, it has no connection to the Saints Row series, besides from, oh, the gang is purple, they use a fleur as their fucking logo, and it's called Saints Row. At least if they had made their own thing out of this game instead of giving it the Saints Row skin and title and everything. Like, I doubt as many people would be shitting on it. Like, they wouldn't be getting as much well, backlash as they are now. That's because people wouldn't be playing it. Yeah, no yeah, one would no, be, but No one would look twice at it if it wasn't called Saints Row. I know, but at least then they wouldn't be getting attacked so much. It's like, I, I would rather just make a mediocre fucking game that almost no one plays rather than tarnishing a good game just for the fucking title to get people to play it and then getting a fucking mountain of people being like yeah this is shit obviously no you can't say that about my game <laughs> you can hear Kree's mind melt after talking about this game and we haven't even gotten the rings of power yet oh yeah God. that's gonna be the next part yeah This auto bat saw super powerful gang leaders and mob bosses, but this is why I said in the beginning it doesn't even have gangs in it, honestly. Like what? Ugh. I've already beat it to death. Like what? Are, what is the? What are the? What gang activity do the idols do? What gang activity do the Panteras do? So like that. It doesn't really have gangs. The, the gang activity the idols do is they stole some toys from McDonald's. Yeah. Oh, and car parts from a guy trying to open up his own garage. Yep. Meaning uh... that comparison should not be used as a crutch to criticize, because when playing a game... It's not a crutch, you fucking idiot. Again, co when comparison gets wrong, when people do too many comparisons, they start the whataboutism game, is when it's like... Oh, well, I want to talk about why Elden Ring is bad, so I'm going to talk about Super Mario now as a comparison. What the fuck? This is a Saints Row game, so we're going to use the thing it's rebooting as a comparison to it. Saints Row to Saints Row. That is completely justified and logical. Man, comparing something to itself? What a weird thing to do. Why would someone ever do that as if there's a fucking implication that the new thing would be similar to the old thing because it's the same series. Yeah. Game that is reboot, I consider it as a reboot, meaning same name, same franchise, but possibly a different type of game. And that's... <laughs> So you're the an idiot, fuck then. fuck did he just say? I consider the game... Being the reboot, I consider the game a reboot. Meaning same name, same series, but possibly different game. Okay, so the fact that it's the same name implies by default that it's the same series. You just repeated yourself. You said nothing there. 
But God, this guy is so fucking dumb. Holy shit. But different game, like, okay, yeah, a reboot of anything is going to be different from the original. It doesn't mean it's going to be different to the point of being in-name only, which this is. Yeah. Yeah. This has nothing to do with Saints Row. These people are not likable. There's not a single likable character amongst them. They're all flat, one-dimensional, one-note NPCs. Oh, maybe that's why you like them, because you're an NPC, too. I can't believe Beep, you fucking boop. praised the student loan thing. Yeah, I know. That, I that's how easy it is to please you know. people. That That is how easy it is to please these weirdos. Just throw yep. in a shitty, clunky, ham-fisted fucking line. Oh, well, I need the job to pay my student loan debts. And, and that's, that's, that's enough to win them over. Yeah, that's fucking how you amazing. know this guy is a literal fucking NPC. He's a literal nonsensical NPC. There is nothing special about him. If you look between his ears, you would see out the other side. <laughs> like, you could probably find the batteries in his back at some point if you give him a hard enough pat. And beep, boop, mm, consume product, get excited for next product, beep, boop, beep, boop. It is reboot. It will be different. It's not nothing like game rebooting. Beep, boop, beep, boop. So by that logic, you know, I could take the Saints Row series and, you know, the name and make a game that's all about um, planting flowers in a garden. And it's just, that's all you're doing for 17 hours straight. It's just, you know, planting flowers in a garden and keeping pests away. And, I, I mean... It's a reboot, so it's obviously going to be a different game, right? Fuck yeah. off. Do they run on Duracell, at least, such? No, Energizer. Because they're NPCs, they just keep going and going and going. No intelligence to be found. Saints So? Yeah, that would, <laughs> that, that, that would be the farming simulator Saints Row game. All your uh, farm equipment, your John D. Sorry. It would be a parody, so it would be like Rick Moose or something. All your Rick Moose farm equipment would be painted purple. Your barn would be purple. Gardening and failing to toast your toast for seven hours. Well, you wouldn't be toasting your toast because... By the fact of it being toasted, it would already be toasted. It would be trying to toast your bread. Because the, the, uh, the act of toasting bread turns it into toast. <laughs> Cree over here just... Um, actually, the chat. No, yeah. it, it, it's... Uh, it's real. That's how, <laughs> that's how bread works. <laughs> I mean, if you're only going to toast toast and you're just burning it, then you have burnt toast, and that's not good. <laughs> not be used as a crutch to criticize, because when playing a game that is a series reboot, I consider it as a reboot, meaning same name, same franchise, but possibly a different type of game. And that's what Saints Row 2022 is. It may not be polished or mechanically brilliant, it may not have the same style or feel as the older games, and heck, you might personally not like it. But in no way is this a 1 out of 10 or even a 4 out of 10. <laughs> no, it is a 1 out of no. 10. It is definitely a 1 out of 10. Fuck off, dude. You're making an objective, make objective statement of quality. Again. Yeah. yeah, you just made an objective statement of quality without backing it up with anything, whereas we actually have evidence. We have a stream you can go watch and see all the shit we've talked about to prove that what we, we said was fucking it. true. And we talked about it through here, too. Like, all of these characters are so fucking unlikable. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is... <laughs> You're a fucking idiot, my guy. Just shut the fuck up. Are Dude, you... I love I love that Actman specifically titled his video about this fucking weirdo, and he's like, yes, it is that bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, or even a four. Bruh. Yeah. Yeah. This game is a one out of ten in every regard. It doesn't even look good. <laughs> like... It's, it doesn't have, like, a visual appealing style to it. You saw, like I said, when we were in the museum area, could you pick out the fucking enemies? Jesus Christ. Don't forget how many railings you tried to shoot through and just fucking couldn't. 
Yeah. Keep in mind, this is something they had solved back in 2006 in the original Saints Row, where you could mm -hmm. shoot through railings at enemies. Yep. Out of 10. There's a game that you can come home to after a long day at school or work, turn on for anywhere between 10 minutes and a few hours, and have a good time. It's not... Going to after after coming home from school or work, the last thing I would want to do is fucking torment myself with this dog shit game. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to play this one out of ten fucking game. Hell no. Like I said I only played it because I got paid to. I will play it if I get paid to. I doubt anyone has the money to pay me to. <laughs> Which is actually... <laughs> see, that's a win-win situation for me by putting the price that high. Because... If no one pays it, no one could afford to pay it, then I don't have to play the game. If someone does pay it, uh, pay that price, and hey, I've got seven thousand dollars. Yeah, that's the thing I try to take away from it is I should have made the price higher, but hey, I came away with eight hundred dollars. I'll, I'll fucking take it. Yeah, that's that's helped get the PC upgrade going. I just have a few more parts to get, and it started the bounty system we're doing now. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, see how that goes. Kritosis, do you think they'll rig the Game Awards and have Saints Row win every award for being brave? No. Um, both this They about and... killed themselves doing that for The Last of Us 2, and it, it backfired severely. Yeah. And even Last of Us 2 is better than this game. So, like, they are not going to put the risk for oh, propping this piece of shit up. It would have to be something that does what they want way better. Yeah. ...to make you ponder the deep meaning of the game, and it won't require you to grind and try hard. It's a fun, sandboxy, shoot and drive around the map type of game that has just enough chaos and style to make it unique. Now... Unique no. how? How is this unique? It literally copies everything else. There isn't a single unique thing about it. What's, what's unique about it? Oh, hold on. Kratosis, I know you're Canadian, but do you want 1,000 U.S. or Canadian? Because that's a distinction to make. Uh, U.S. <laughs> wow. Hey. Like I said, I don't sell my soul for cheap. Mm. And I said at least 1,000 for Hunt Down the Freeman. Yeah, fair. Oh, nice. Probably not, but then again, I feel very few games nowadays are worth their selling price at around $80, depending on what country you're in. Ah! If you aren't sure on buying the game, then I'd probably recommend waiting until a sale comes out to try it. But if you have the money lying around and want to experience the game, go ahead. I will always say to never let other people sway your opinions before you even tried something yourself. You let me sway your opinion, everyone. Don't buy this dog don't shit buy game. game. Yeah. Let us sway for you. Don't buy it. Th this we can give you actual legitimate objective reasons why instead of but my feely feels my fifis. Like we also finished the game. We've actually seen the ending, so yeah, we know how we know how much worse it gets. Cree, I have the original cut of the frontier. How much is it for you? See, I I'm pretty sure I have the original cut of the frontier too. How much is it I for have me? It as well, I would have to think about that price tag. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to see on stream what to put that price tag to as well. I have the original version as well. Um whatever Setch's I... whatever Setch's price tag is for the Frontier, mine is gonna be at least double that. Because uh he sells his soul for less than mine, apparently. <laughs> God, fuck I... off. I am not a cheap date. <laughs> oh not, man, not, yeah, no, I would I'm not saying your soul is cheap. You just sell it for cheaper than I do mine. I would need at least two thousand dollars to play fucking the frontier again. That shit. Oh, I vowed to never play it again. It was that bad. So, at least two thousand. I I couldn't go any lower than that and feel. Uh, uh, yeah, I just. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, exactly, Cree. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars oh, is five dollars, such a moat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I don't know. I'd probably do six hundred, honestly. 
Yeah, I think, I think honestly. You just said you weren't a cheap date. You, fuck, you think $600 is cheap? I'm on poverty percent, sir. <laughs> $600 is cheap when you're talking about the fucking frontier. Yeah. I didn't say that's to complete the thing. I'm thinking that's for, like, the one stream of it, to show oh. it. Oh. Oh. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I could probably match that. Yeah, that'd be fair. Yeah, I thought you were just gonna go for, like, the entire, like, an entire, uh... No, like oh the God, NCR no. I would, quest I line break, or the Legion. Yeah, I would break each quest line down into, like, probably, um... But six hundred dollars to do it for one stream day, so that's three hours. <laughs> and then if I wanted to do the NCR quest line, like each break each one of the quest lines down into their own. Sell yeah. each campaign I'd probably two K. Sell each campaign individually and become as bad as the AAA companies. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Quick, someone if donates. If people want me to fully do those <laughs> campaigns, that's absolutely what I would. Yeah, that's what I would do as well. Quick, hey, so I only I only changed the price on the final one to do literally everything in the game because I found out it was on Epic Game Store and I realized, oh Jesus, fuck mother in Christ. So yeah, that's the that's the only one that changed. I wasn't gonna change the initial ones because that would be unfair. I only changed the one that was be the hardest milestone to reach because I realized it was on Epic Game Store and I was like, fuck that. Quick, someone donate $600 before he changes the price. Yeah, that's why I was responding. <laughs> you might, without all the outside criticism blurring your vision, you might actually have a fun time. Just go into... No, I, I hate didn't. this idea, too, that any criticism of a thing is going to fucking irreversibly taint someone's opinion on something. Yeah, that you know what we call those people? We call those people weak. You're yeah. weak-willed. You're man you're easily manipulated. Yeah. Guess what? I played this game without any outside criticism at all. I played this game near its launch because people paid me to. I didn't have any criticism that tainted it. I got to experience it myself and decide that it is a 1 out of 10 dog shit experience. I'll give you five dollars and sixty-seven cents and a dollar menu from McDonald's. <laughs> hey, quick, someone get a job. Implying you even need to hear outside criticism to recognize how shit this game is. Yeah. Yeah, it's the most ludicrous thing ever. It's like, no, people can decide with objective reasoning that something is dog shit. It ain't fucking hard. Critical thinking is just... It's too much for these NPCs. Yeah, it's just... It, it's a thing of the past. Nobody does that anymore. Critical thinking is bad. Stop doing it. Fuck you. Yeah. yeah. Just consume product and enjoy product. And get excited for next product. If you don't think about the story or the dialogue or the gameplay or any of that stuff, it's a really good game, guys. Trust me. Uh... Do it with no expectation by a fuel to hate unnecessarily and stop trying to pick every little thing apart while you're playing it. Just it's not picking every little thing apart, is that the game is done? Like, if something is annoying someone to the point of wanting to talk about it, like that swearing spree section at the start of the game, that that's something that has impacted their experience already. That's something that's annoying them and bugging them. And... If they keep seeing more and more things as they play the game that fucking irritates them, like the character's constantly preaching their politics to you, then yeah, people are going to be rightfully fucking annoyed. It's not, it's not picking it apart. It's pointing out legitimate issues. Motherfucking crap. What? What? Copying image, hold on. Uh-oh. What cursed shit are you about to say? Exceptionally cursed. I've actually seen that one before. I had not. Oh my god, that's amazing. Oh yeah, I saw that earlier. <laughs> Anyways. Just try fun. Because that's what gaming is about. Having fun. Hey guys, hope you- just, just have fun, because that's what gaming's about. What if the game is dog shit? What if the game you're playing is fucking- 
big rigs over the road racing? What if the game you're playing is um, this is that we've we've talked about this multiple times. This is that toxic positivity nonsense. Yeah. What if you're what if the game you're playing is Action Fifty Two? Fifty Two terrible games. Some are completely non functional on original hardware. Um, but man, they're just games. Stop criticizing them. The point of games is to have fun, so just have fun. Fuck off. What if it's Superman sixty four? Yeah. Kratosis, don't insult big rigs like that. <laughs> don't diss big rigs. It's so bad, it's fun. Big rigs. A game where you can accelerate in reverse to fucking infinity. Yep. <laughs> Gaming is having fun with a quality product. It's like standards don't exist. Yeah, anyone who says, don't think about it, just enjoy it. The point is to have fun, so just have fun. Anyone who says dumb shit like that, it's literally just... Don't think... God, I hate this shit so much. Your winner. Yeah. If you enjoyed the video today, I was planning on making a Saints Row video in a similar style to my GTA videos, however, after seeing all the hate and criticism this game was getting, I just had to come out and give my thoughts on the game as a casual player who sees enjoyment as the number one factor, rather than overall quality. And don't get me wrong- What if people don't enjoy it because of the overall quality? What if the overall quality is a deciding factor for a lot of people? Yes. Your review is useless to anyone who comes into this with even the slightest bit of, well, I want to play something that's at least the bare minimum of being well made, and this is not it. Your 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 review was, I had fun with it. I had fun with it. I like this part. Uh, beer back. All right. Yeah, no, not interested in seeing your other videos, dude. You're just a fucking knockoff JXE. You're, you're fucking shit, man. Well, hold In on. Fact, you you oh, should oh, just quit YouTube. Slow down. JXE is actually good. Yeah, I know. I'm saying he's a knockoff, terrible version of him. Well, yeah, it does. It just doesn't quite come across like that when you say just a knockoff without the terrible part. Is that, like, oh. you're you're a bad version of JXE. Yeah, he's nega. <laughs> he's nega J. <laughs> <laughs> how did we get to the point where people feel the need to defend corpos what the hell happened to people i don't know i don't get it um there's always been those kinds of people who like dedicate themselves to a brand for whatever reason and it's just like the most important thing to them i guess um it's weird well, if I had to guess what it was, it's probably the whole, uh, the whole ideology behind it. And this guy shares that ideology. So when he sees it getting bombarded like this, it makes it look bad. And then he has to defend it. So no, 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 guys, the game is actually good. All the woke See, stuff is great. But that's the problem is, is this stuff was happening before all the big like ideology stuff in media. So it can't be the ideology alone. Um, because, like, oh, this game company, they made a game I like. That means I need to defend them forever. Yeah, people are bringing up, like, the, the Sony, um... The Sony shills. Uh, the, the Sony fanboys. Like, fuck, what was his name? Um, JTech TV. And there's another one. Where, like, th these are people who are getting upset that Sony games were being ported to PC because that makes the PlayStation console less valuable as a result. These aren't the people who are, like, investors in the company and have a financial interest in the console success. It is people who are so dedicated to the brand that they're actually getting upset that their games are being ported to different systems. But they, they, they also celebrate and brag when other games get ported to theirs. Like... One of them a few years ago had a tweet out about uh, there's a rumor that World of Warcraft was coming to um, PlayStation. So he was like, oh, looks like PC just lost its biggest exclusive. It's like, wh why are you acting like this is a bad thing for PC players? If anything, the people who like Warcraft 
should be happy that more people have a chance to experience this game now. And I think I even said something like that to him, and he blocked me. I wasn't hostile at all. It was just, yeah, it, it's something positive, and he's treating it like, oh yeah, this is a victory over the PC gamers. It's like, what? The fuck is wrong with you, you fucking weirdo? Yeah, that's just fucking stupid. Because uh, the the people who buy PCs, they usually do it, you know, when they want a game for if they want to, if they choose to make that their main gaming platform, it's usually because they hate the whole fucking uh, exclusivity bullshit with the consoles and stuff, and the fucking the warring between that shit. It's usually just I just want to play my fucking games. Without having to worry about this bullshit like, oh, well, this is going to be exclusive for this. I, I can't even play this game because I own this one. And that kind of shit. It's like, yeah. The, obviously, people are going to celebrate when, you know, those games come to other platforms because that's what they want. Like, I personally am sick of the fucking exclusivity bullshit of like, oh, well, it's only for Xbox. Oh, it's only for PlayStation. Oh, it's only for PC. I hate that shit. Well, see, even then, PC doesn't have exclusivity in the t in the stereotypical, maybe not stereotypical, but in the usual fashion. Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo exclusivity is either first-party games, which, okay, understandable enough, but they'll pay companies to, hey, only release your game on our system so the others don't get it. That, that was console exclusivity. PC exclusivity was different in the fact that PC isn't a system made by a singular company, so there's no actual benefit to any com uh, any company in particular for games to only be on PC. It's just that the developers would either be restrained to PC because of the type of game they're making is too complex for a console, or that they, for whatever reason, they just decided to only make their game for PC. Like, World of Warcraft, that's a game that you would not be able to play effectively on a controller. So it's never been ported to Xbox or PlayStation or anything. Yeah. The the PC exclusivity thing has only been a very recent development, mainly since Epic, uh, Epic Game. Yeah, yeah ever since Epic. Epic came in. Yeah, yeah Epic it was kind of what fucked everything yeah, with, uh, with PC gaming. That's yep. why so many people, myself included, fucking despise Epic for what they've done because you've brought petty console tier fucking exclusivity bullshit to the PC market. If you want to compete with Steam, that's one thing. Make a competition. It's not a competition if the other if the competitor is unable to sell the same product you're selling. It's just an extortion system to get people to use their shitty fucking storefront. Their shitty fucking launcher. Yeah. Yep. It, that it, that still has less features than Steam did when it launched. People are like, oh, but Steam had the same problems. Yeah, but guess what? Steam did it in 2007. What's your excuse? Yeah, there's no excuse for not having the same basic features Steam has when you release in... When did Epic Games Store come out? Like 2017 or something? It was something crazy. It was like... Um, uh, 2018 something? It was late, late. Either way, yeah, they, they they fucked that shit up. Initial was... release was December 6, 2018. Oh. PC exclusivity is usually because it's a hell of a lot easier to develop for a PC because Xbox and PlayStation have dev kits or something, if I recall correctly. Well, yeah, they not do. Not even just that, but there are just some games, like the Arma series. How are you going to make Arma work on consoles? Right? Steel, a, a current example. The Steel Battalion series. Did you see the controller you needed? Stuff to, to emulate what a keyboard would allow you to do? That fucking controller was enormous. That was the meme of, like, actually building, like, a mech cockpit so you could play Steel Battalion. <laughs> I remember that. It's like, yeah, so they're just games that just cannot work on console. RTS games have a hard time on consoles. If you want to make them work on consoles, you have to strip out a lot of the nuance to them. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Arma barely works on PC. That's fucking fair. But you know <laughs> what I mean by when I talk about, like, all of the different mechanics and systems for it? Like, how, how are you going to make that work on console, all the different controls you need? How are you going to make Tarkov work on consoles, all different controls you need? Wrong. I want anyone who speaks bad about this game. Everyone is allowed to have opinions and say whatever they want. But at the end of the day, they are just opinions. You can always decide for yourself what you like. Um, some of them aren't just opinions. Again, some of them are backed up by evidence, so they become facts. For example, yeah. fact. Nina's family only comes up once the time they're trying to emotionally manipulate you into caring about this plank of a character. Yeah, and they never get brought up ever again. Yeah. Fact. It doesn't matter if the monster truck is moving or not. If you bump into the tires, it flattens small vehicles. Fact. One of the main gang members is so fucking stupid as to post their new headquarters of social media, resulting in a raid from his former gang that he was just involved in the murder of one of their leaders. It's literally the preceding mission. Fact. Yeah. You were actually considered so useless that the developers made a different character kill off one of the gang leaders in a cutscene while you watched. Fact. The game absolutely has bugs for a lot of people, including a quite lengthy quest crashing right at the very end because of a cutscene, resulting in the quest having to be played entirely from the start. Yep. Also, this is quite a bit of a turn from his shit he was saying earlier when he started the video. Oh, well, if you're being negative at this point, fuck off. Uh, you, you're not allowed to hate this yet. Uh, stop being negative. Off. What if there's a yeah. reason for the negative? No, he said, he said get a life and stop being negative. Yeah, get a life and yeah. uh, stop being negative. What if there's a reason for the neg uh, negativity, a legitimate reason that people might have an issue with the game even that early in? Because... I don't know, it seems to me like there's a very legitimate ish, uh, reason to have issues that early in. Based on how stupid everything is up until that point. I, I don't know if Hardest Difficulty is actually unplayable. I specifically told my chat, I'm playing it on the easiest difficulty because I'm not here for a challenge. I'm here to get through this thing as fast as fucking possible. Keep in mind how bullet spongy enemies were on the lowest difficulty. Yeah. Good God, imagine dying over and over and over in this game and having to redo those missions. Ugh. Are you telling me you don't want to continually experience the amazing characters of Nina, Eli, and Kevin? Characters that have no flaws whatsoever? I'd rather gargle cyanide, honestly. <laughs> oh, swallow crushed glass. Eat glass. <laughs> And what feel free to call me stupid or weird, but same you're stupid and weird. Thanks for yeah, so far you, you has been a fun experience, and I plan to continue playing it off camera as well. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. Okay, who cares? All right, yeah. good. Next video. Ha have fun with your shitty, get like legitimately have fun with it, but mm. don't be like such a dickhead to people who have legitimate issues with this game and tell yep. them that you know, oh, you're being too negative, get a life, blah, blah, blah. like fuck off. Seriously, fuck off. Yeah. Who knows, maybe in the next uh, Windows update you'll get new instructions to be less of an NPC. <laughs> uh, we already played the Johnny Gat clip, so we don't need to play that again from the, from the courtroom. Um, e. Before the stream, I was checking out a video comparing Saints Row 2022 to Saints Row 3 uh, as far as, like, physics and details and stuff, and uh, it's a very interesting video. Uh, for example, shooting a car in Saints Row 3 will have bullet hole, uh, not actual bullet holes, but the decals to make it look like they have bullet holes in them where you shot them. And sure, they disappear somewhat quickly, but at least they show up at all. In the new Saints Row, they don't. Um, and there's lots of other stuff like that in this video, which is uh, worth checking out. Yeah, um, like how you're glued to your bike when you crash into stuff oh, in the new game. 
Oh, yes. That, that is oh, so God, bad. I was trying to. Sh I, sh I remember showing that on the stream. Like, guys, we were, we're literally fucking glued here. We're just like bouncing into things. We slammed into a thing going as fast as we can. My guy just goes, Ooh. and he stayed with the bike. Didn't have any like animations of it. Didn't move the body. Nothing. So, such answer. Did the protagonist at least get to warm up his waffle at the end? No. In fact, he became so stupid he he hammered the non-existent fan, or he, sorry, he fanned the non-existent hammer on a Glock. Jesus Christ! It gave, me, gave me a stroke. That's not the best part, though. I mean, that is pretty bad. Um, your character, the boss, and the three shitty gang <laughs> members that you've been with for the entire gang, they all have folding chairs and sit on the roof of this building watching the sunset. Um, a little bit of an important detail to uh, point out. The building is on yeah. fucking fire. And exploding. Because in your battle with the Nawale, the building got set on fire because of, like, explosives being fired and everything. Like, God, it, it is so dumb. This entire game is so dumb. Yeah, I said hammering fans. That's why I said, Jesus Christ, this game gave me a stroke. Yeah. Put the lonely waffle into the toaster. God, fucking... Oh, I hate it so much. Yeah. Speaking of hate it so much, there's a, um... There's a series out by a, a small little company, a, um... A small probably business... probably haven't heard of them. ...by the name of Amazon. Um, yeah, very tiny. Up and coming, it, from what I hear. They are attempting to solve the world energy crisis by creating a turbine that spins so fast that it just produces infinite uh, electricity. And that is Tolkien rolling in his fucking grave. At yeah. the way they're desecrating his work. Um, this video... In it's actually surprising how few videos I've been able to find even attempting to defend this show, because I thought there would at least be some shills out there defending it, and they are a little bit sparse right now, at least as far as videos go. Um, hey, maybe next week we could cover an article or something. Who knows? But, for now, this is a video that was made before the release of Rings of Power, and it's kind of what you would expect from someone being like, Stop criticizing the billion dollar company. Uh, yep. Stop being bitter in defense of the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, Amazon. Oh. Alright, let's, let's see where this goes. The Lord of the Rings has created an uprising on the internet. Rings of Power is going to be crap. The Rings of Power have tried various different marketing strategies, but today we're in for a new one where the showrunners are just blatantly lying. I, I want to point out, first of all, both Shad and this guy are right, but yes. um, the music is kind of overpowering their voices. Don't do that. Yeah. How gullible and ignorant do they think the fans are today? This is shaping up to be the next Last Jedi and probably an even bigger financial disaster for Amazon than The Last Jedi was for Disney. It's is he wrong? Yeah, he's not, by the way. Keep in mind, Dude. this is, this is again, before the show came out, there's a lot of good evidence people had to be skeptical of this show and to believe the things they do. And similar to people with Saints Row being vindicated uh, based on the first trailer, every single one of these people are vindicated for being critical yep. of all the pre-release stuff of uh, Rings of Power. Absolutely. Yep. And what's it, what's it sitting at now on Rotten Tomatoes? Thirty six percent or something? And that's a company that Amazon owns. Um. Uh, no, Amazon doesn't own Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, they own uh, IMDb, I believe. Oh and yeah, that's right. IMDb I, has and, it more time. And IMDb is the one that fucking purged all ratings below six stars. Yep. A little bit, a little bit suspicious there. Um. Not something that typically happens. It's, you know, maybe implies that Amazon is a bit worried about the uh, the state of their billion-dollar show. Yeah. So keep, keep, keep talking about it, guys. Keep spreading the word about how awful this show is. Because this show is genuinely 
one of the worst shows ever created by man. House of the Dragon is absolutely uh, blowing the fuck out of Rings of Power. I haven't watched House of the Dragon, but based on what I've heard, it is actually pretty decent so far. Um, yeah, I'm, Ma- I'm going based off the numbers and everything uh, so far. Mahler, um, um, nerd, getting- Mahler Nerd Roddick, and uh, Shadowversity are doing streams talking about each episode after they come out. In fact, they've probably got another one today, I think? Uh, talking about the latest episode. But um, from what I've heard, they they all think episode three is pretty good. It, they have said that they're not going to recommend it until the end of the season, if it's worth recommending at all, just because of how burned they are over uh, Game of Thrones. But the fact that they think, hey, this isn't too bad so far is like a big sign, especially with how critical these three are of media. Like, holy shit. I'm actually yep. tempted to check it out because of that. <laughs> that was my whole thing with uh, with it with Terminal List was like I was watching. I was like, it's pretty good so far, but I can't make any statement on if it's going to keep that quality because you just never fucking know these days. Yeah. Then no, it turns out it does. Like Terminal List is is fucking great. I just got a notification about that video thirty minutes ago. Oh, so are they streaming now? Are they just scheduling it? Let me check quickly. Subscriptions. Yeah, I don't think they're live right now. Um, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, these people here in this video are absolutely vindicated so far. Um, at this point... I doubt Rings of Power could turn it around for the rest of the season with the quality we've seen so far, especially in the third episode. And, uh, like, we are three episodes into an eight-episode season, and barely fucking anything of significance has happened. <laughs> in fact, it is, it's crazy that things are getting worse and worse by each episode. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. Ugh. Don't worry, Such. We'll wait for you. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm kneecapping both of you, and then I'm going to run up the hill and say, we wait for you. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> if I recall correctly, Amazon is selectively allowing reviews to come through and are keeping it at a 3.7 out of 5 stars. Yeah, they had a lockdown on reviews on their own uh, Amazon Prime system. Yeah, so. the platforms that they control. They uh, they have absolutely censored as many bad reviews as possible because they're terrified. Yeah. So we're three paragraphs in, and the author of this article has yet to show a single shred of proof that shows that the fan complaints look stupid. <sighs> now let's talk about Amazon's Rings of Power. It's almost like Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, is doomed to fail. To be clear to all my- um, correct. Yeah, again, all of this is correct so far. Like, what? Where? Come on, you gotta get to this part where you gotta show them up. Wargs more like pugs. The wargs look like a mutant crossover between a chihuahua and a pug. It's fucking insane. Yeah, it looks yeah. horrifyingly bad. Oh, it looks so terrible. I couldn't believe it when it came out. I was just like, oh, no. They ruined it. This point that Amazon is not going to stay very faithful to the source material. I'm not very impressed by the release material by Amazon so far. How long do I know it's going to be crap? You don't know because you haven't seen it yet. Because when I see someone with their pants down, push doing this over a plate, I can get a fairly good indication that it's going to be crap. I've watched endless videos as. Absolutely true, by the way. Yeah. Everything, yeah. everything we saw about Rings of Power revealed that it was going to be dog shit. We just didn't understand that it was going to be so much worse than Halo. Yeah, this That's is something. A fucking accomplishment. This is something I was actually kind of saying yesterday. Rings of Power is so bad that makes me look back upon the quaint, good old days of fucking Halo with like reverence and like, man, I miss, I miss the good old days of Halo. Here, I'm gonna post my meme in our chat too. Uh-oh. For when we get, for when we. 
<laughs> God, but yeah, imagine <sighs> that's how that's very telling of how bad it is, though, guys. Because remember, remember how much we hated Halo and how much we wanted to go back to Bebop flicks. Like, oh, the fact that somehow Halo ended up being more enjoyable to watch than this is just. Oh, uh. well, even Halo, as dog shit it was, uh, as it was, you could pull out a very small positive here or there. Like, oh, did that gun grease get into your hair and fuck up your brain? Whatever the quote was, it was amusing. Considering, like, oh, hey, someone. You ever someone... wonder? You ever wonder why you don't wonder why? I wonder if that gun grease seeped down into your hair, into your brain to make you ask me all these stupid fucking questions. Yeah, exactly. That is, like, a, a tiny nugget of gold in a sea of shit that is Halo. Um, I also didn't mind the actress who played uh, Halsey. I, I think she was just given terrible material. But, like, everything else was terrible. CGI wasn't good. The alien designs were fucking... Tra like, Awful. Yeah. But even that had more positives to it than Rings of Power so far. Yeah, so far, this has been extremely just boring and nonsensical. God, the fucking dagger thing. Oh, <laughs> it still bothers me so much. There's literally a fucking scene in between where he has nothing in his hand. Yes. Fuck! And I fucking tell it was so blatantly obvious. And I even said, I was like, it's so blatantly obvious that he stole the dagger. You can see it in his fucking hand. But the thing that could, that I was like, but what annoys me the most is that we look in between and we find, and Curry finally went back and we went through and it's like, you can see that he doesn't have anything in his hand in, in the scenes immediately proceeding when he steals it. And then it's just suddenly magically teleports back to his hand again. Fucking, oh. Yeah, it's so bad. And then they stand there and talk with it and he's just holding it openly in his hand with guards that are escorting them and they stop to talk which obviously the guards are going to turn and look at you and wait for you to come they would obviously see the fucking dagger and they're in a room full of people with the queen and no one trusts them because of the fucking elf because yeah, Gladriel, Gladriel is there Gladriel is such an uptight moron oh, it is God. shocking she yeah. is constantly giving everyone death stares. Like, she wants to do nothing more than pull out her knife and fucking slit their throats and stab them 122 times. It... She even threatens the queen. Like, Jesus Christ. They are being cordial and everything. They're being curt with you. Granted, you know, they're being short. They're not, they're not like, extending you all courtesy. And it's like, I... The elves gave you this island. No, yeah, we trying to earned hold this it over island. Them. We're in this island with blood. Well, if you earned it with blood, then I shall pay it in blood. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, you fucking wank stain. She's just completely unlikable in every way. And yeah. we thought she was the worst part of the episode. Um, <laughs> yeah. Something happens yeah. a little later that's so much worse. Isildur is alive before the rings are made. Yep. Yep. It, 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 trust me, trust me. The timeline is completely fucked. It, it, if you know anything about Lord of the Rings, it doesn't matter because this will shit all over it. Isildur yeah. was born more than fifteen hundred years after the rings were made. Oof. Yeah, I remember. <sighs> I remember hearing people like Nerdrotic say something to the effect of, "This is thousands of years of uh, history and lore that's being condensed into like three or four years." So that's why we have shit like Isildur. Alive before the rings are made. Yeah. It, it's it's just completely fuck. And again, I was I was already pissed off when I saw the fucking ship. That ship. Oh my god. Oh my god. The ship designs are so stupid. They are so bad. Satch, why don't you tell us how bad the ship designs are? Actually, you'll probably be here for like thirty minutes going on about the ship, and we've already been going for. Four and a half hours, and we've got a 15 minute video to get through. Yeah. Um, yeah. God. You trust me, I say a lot about the ships and how fucked they are. Yeah, it's in the recording. I'm going to try and get those edited and up as soon as possible, but who knows how long that will take. 
Kratosis. Bezos wanted this to be his Game of Thrones. Rings of Power doesn't even reach the high, high quality of Season 8 of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, mm. The first two episodes, mostly nothing happened. It, even though it was a lot of nothing, it was still stupid. That wasn't quite as bad as The Long Night or The Bells. Episode 3. Yeah. Episode 3. Oh, boy. Yep. Holy mother of God, Episode 3. I do find it kind of funny, because I, I mentioned this in the recording, but I want to say it here as well, that it's just funny to me that, like, one of the things that we were the most worried about was the dwarves. Like, we were certain that, like, it is fucked up. The dwarves do suck. But at the they same the time, highlight. they are, they are even though they are terrible, they are easily the highlight of the show, which is hilarious, because that's the thing we were the most worried about, because it's like, that was what was shown, and you know, the marketing and stuff made it look like it was going to be very uh, woke and uh, female empowerment. And, you know, we're going to have a toxic bitch in charge of everything. And it just looked like it was going to be so bad. And now it's like, God, I pray every second we watch that show that it's going to cut back to the dwarves because it's just the best part of the show. Unironically, yeah. yes. The, the, the Black Dwarf Queen, uh, she's actually a princess right now because the dwarf she's married to, his father is still alive and he's a prince. Point is, yeah. she is unironically the best character so far. Um, she, she, her character is nice and uh, friendly and that's it. Really. I, I wouldn't mind so much if she l l played a different role in the series, you know? Like, whether it's positive or negative, like, her character's good or bad or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just that the dwarves live under a mountain. Like, they don't get exposed to sunlight. They're not going to be dark. Kratos, hey. you mean the first female dwarf of color we've see, uh, ever seen on screen? Yeah. Um, yeah. She is unironically the best character so far. Yep, so far. Um, and that's because everything, everyone is so shit that... Yeah, because you know, if, if everyone's a one out of ten, her being a two out of ten, automatically she wins. And it's not even that she's like bad in any way the way she's written, but in any other show she would just be like a generic nice person. It's just kind of there. Yeah. Yeah, she'd be like a, a side character that you rarely see who's just who's just nice. They're just okay, yeah. but because everything else in this show is so shit, it's just like. Oh, thank God we got something that isn't complete fucking ass to look at. Yep. And the more we learn about a lot of these races and everything like that, the more it, everything's completely fucked. <laughs> everything. When we get to the Harfoots. Whoa! Yeah. You mean the that legally distinct hobbits? Yes. Yeah, I can't believe that the Harfoots are what ends up being, like, the worst aspect of any of the fucking race building. It's, like, the world building for the races and stuff. It's... I did not expect the Hardfoots to be the thing that would be, like, we, this is what we need to focus on right now, because this is... Oh, I just can't believe it. Well, Le Legionary Hunter, I need I need to correct you there. Gladriel has the perpetual resting bitch face. She does until she's riding on a horse, then she emulates it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was weird. Like, she just suddenly gets this weird, like, goofy grin on her face. Also, the weird, like, slow motion, blinking, uh, you know, horse face thing was so weird. I was like, what? is the horse supposed to be a main character now? What's happening? Yeah. Gladriel decided that because she didn't have a character, she would try to emulate something that had more character. Thus, she tried to be a horse. Yeah. The, the horse... <laughs> The horse is unironically a more interesting and likable character than Galadriel is so far. Galadriel oh, has yes. the Amber Heard face. <laughs> 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 yeah, Scrub Lord's net. He's he's figuring it out. Yeah, he knows. Uh, it's so much worse than that. But yeah, we're we're gonna get into it eventually. But man, the Harfoots are so fucking yeah, you know, bad. We their entire society is completely fucked. Yeah. Like, they are evil. They are unironically evil. Yeah, even before it got to that part, we were like, so they're literally just thieves. That's all they are. That's all their society is, is that they steal from other races 
and they contribute nothing. And then it got yeah. even worse. It somehow got worse. Like, it, oh, it's not just that. They are, they're also just straight up psychotic. Yeah. As to why power is an absolute disgrace to Tolkien's work. How it is. he's rolling over in his grave and they are obliterating everything with a political woke agenda. I don't think it's... Which is, they are. They did, They by are. Way. Yeah. It is it is complete dog shit and he is he is absolutely he is tunneled all the way to China and is coming his way back. Like fucking hell. Yes, the Harfoots are the stereotype gypsies and swamp Irish. It is really fucking bad. And and then throw on top of it being sociopathic monsters on top of it. <laughs> I can't wait to get to the hard foot. Holy shit. Yeah. It's going to be as big of a deal as people are claiming it is. And I've endlessly watched the director's cut on repeat of that entire franchise. I've seen The Hobbit. I'm not as big into it. I don't love The Hobbit films, but I do They're love terrible. The Lord of the I agree. They're terrible. The Hobbit films are terrible. They, tr they, they stretched it out. It was too little. It was too little stretched out uh, too much. Like butter spread across too much bread. Thank you, Bilbo, for that. The reason Bilbo was special is because he was a hobbit who stole. It was out of the norm. Why the fuck did they, uh, did they make the hobbits thieves? I don't know, but yeah, the Harfoots. Because, and again, the reason we know that they steal is they're completely racist. They don't trust any outsider, anyone at all. Even other, like, little people. They don't trust them at all. They'll hide from them. But somehow these people that are all living in carts have metal, metal rings and bucket handles and tools. Hmm, where'd you get that metal from? Hmm? Where, where'd you get all that metal from? Yeah, they don't have forges. They're never anywhere long enough to actually set up a forge. Like, there's no way that they could have processed metal. They don't mine or anything like that. Yeah, and they even they, they even make a point of that, that the dwarves have their mines, the humans have their farms and stuff like that. Like, we don't have any of that. They're fields of wheat. Yeah, like, and they don't have any of that stuff. And it's like, oh, well, then how do you have this stuff? Also, yep. I know everyone has already pointed this out, but I just wanted to be on the record that calling them the Harfoots is fucking retarded. Because in the first few pages of the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, it's explained that Harfoots are not an entirely different species on their own. They're a breed of Hobbit. Yep. There, there's three different kinds of Hobbit. They're all the same race. They're just slightly different from each other, so they get a distinction of, oh, these are Harfoots. These are whatever the other two are. I can't remember them. So it's just stupid to call them Harfoots. Yeah. Yep. God, it's so bad, though. There's just so much wrong with that whole society. It just doesn't work. Completely unlikable, too. Like, by the end of episode three, there's just no sympathy for them whatsoever. Yeah, no, three completely. Like, I, I, I was straight up saying during the episode, like, this entire fucking society deserves to just be wiped out. Just they, they should not exist. Yep, they need to be cleansed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they they fucking suck the rings trilogy it is one of the best trilogies if not the best movie trilogy of all time okay and do you understand why that is of course not so it was respectful to the source material and the source material thought about plots pacing made realistic characters the struggles felt real they were larger than life but you could understand the struggles it understood that nobody, like, everybody that sided with Sauron and the orcs weren't all bad. In fact, it went into detail about the um, Easterlings. Like, what's his story? Why did he sign up? Why is he angry? Where did he come from? What's his family like? They are Warhammer halflings, not Lord of the Rings ha hobbits. Oh, 
God, no, I can't, I can't even say that. These things, are, trust me, we'll, we'll get there. We'll fucking get there. God, they tried to make the orcs that, though, because, God, remember the fucking voices for the orcs? Yeah, oh. they, they've given the orcks all this British, like, cockney... Well, no, I guess well, maybe not cockney, but some, they give them British accents. Well, sometimes they do, and sometimes they just straight up sound like World of Warcraft orcs. Yeah. Yeah. is a master of his craft but when i watch the new trailer for rings of power it strikes me that it could be an equal or possibly better for a dive <laughs> <more> <laughs> no. sorry uh, to break it to you buddy it is how did not you get that at all from the trailer at all I, I i'm morbidly curious how these people think how their brain functions how did you how did you get that in the slightest from the trailers? Oh god. My overwatch on the TV show. My name is Cult Leader Z. I discuss things, I react to things, movies, TV, I talk about it all, so you should subscribe to the page. I would appreciate it. Beat that like button into a bloody pulp. That would be awesome. Let me Okay, stop with the music and sound effects are drowning out. Everyone else's voices. Yeah, including yours. Yeah. It's yeah, fucking ridiculous. Annoying. Correct a couple things. First off, everybody is online raging about how that Sauron, Sauron is Eminem. Like, that's. Okay, so that was a lot of people's assumptions at first because one of the leaks said it was Sauron. The leak was yeah. wrong. It yep. still doesn't change the fact that this person looks like Eminem. Right? Yeah. He's about to explain this, but this is uh, some, like, female priestess or cult leader or whatever. Doesn't change the fact that she's fucking feminem. Yeah. This is not Sauron. What? <laughs> there it is! The real Slim Shady, please stand up, was Sauron. No, it's not. Oh, sh They have come out on multiple occasions. It is a known fact that that is a priestess. That is a it's a known fact after people came out, like, the yeah, people behind the Yeah, after people show. ripped it apart. Yes. So, like, this is retroactively holding people, like, oh, you're spreading something that's been proven wrong. It's proven wrong after these people talked about it. Yeah. yeah. Unless Angry Joe really did that after uh, the company came out and said that's not fucking uh, Sauron. Yeah. Which he might have. I mean, Alex you know, started to say no, it time. wasn't. So, yeah, but do you really trust his opinion either? No, I no. especially not his. No, no, especially not his. I just don't know. Maybe he, uh, he didn't play the full clip, so I don't know if he was gonna say like, "No, that's not him." Like we know now, or if that was just, "No, that that's not him. That's not my Sauron." Yeah, yeah. It's like who knows? It's a different character, a different villain. Next on the agenda. Oh, they're adding races. Oh, women have power in this show. The Second Age does not have much to work off of, of what is known. It does, though. The Silmarillion. <laughs> yeah, so, you're, you're just straight up wrong. So part of the problem is, even if there was not a lot there, that doesn't, like, people treat a blank space in uh, a world or lore as a blank space to write in whatever they want, even if it's incongruent with what comes later. Case yep. in point, oh, look at all the black hobbits and dwarves that won't exist in a couple mm. thousand years. Case in point, Halo fucking Reach. Yeah, that too. Mm. Yeah, this is just pathetic. Why does it always have to be a straw man about women having power? I don't know. Because yeah, here's the I was thing. Just... There were women with yeah. power in the original, like, in the books and in Peter Jackson's trilogy. Um, Did you think Galadriel didn't have power, sir? Well, no, because she was just, like, kind of in robes, and she, like, talked a little bit. Of course, that's not power. Yeah, no, her being incredibly, like, strong-willed and terrifying when literally, she was put to the test about with the ring. Literally, I passed the test. Yeah, and she was, she was pleasantly surprised with herself, because she was worried. She was truly worried that she wouldn't pass the test. Then, uh, then you have Arwen and Eowyn. And, like, there are strong women in the originals, even in the books. No one has a problem with women that are strong. People have a problem 
with bullshit, terrible writing. The problem yeah. with Galadriel in Rings of Power isn't that she's, you know, a strong woman. It's that she's not acting like what we know Galadriel to be. She's acting like a fucking... Entitled, arrogant piece of shit and a fascist. Just insane. I kid you not. Insane how much she hates everyone. Like, she threatens murder at the drop of a hat in episode yeah. three. Um, she, her like, entire personality is her dagger. Yeah. Yeah, the problem isn't strong women. It's just the, it's the fact that they don't know how to write strong women. They uh, think just making making a woman butch and basically giving them man traits makes a strong woman. It's like I'm well, sorry, no, which, that's that's but, not how which that works. The thing that we that we noticed was that these weirdo leftoids and everything like that, weirdest weirdo social justice crowd, they think that a strong woman is to make a woman into the toxic masculinity nonsense. Yeah, exactly. And they keep and doing it. This is far from the first time. Um, yep. S. Scott says in chat, Amazon didn't uh, doesn't have the rights to Silmarillion, only the Lord of the Rings appendices. So they've oh. got even less to work with than, yeah. Jesus Christ. Ugh, and they shouldn't have fucking made the show. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, they should not. If you don't have the rights to all the material, to the source material, don't fucking make it. Yeah. Yeah, because apparently God. they can't show Morgoth, but they can mention him. That's how restrained they are. So Jesus you're, Christ. You're already trying to squeeze blood out of a stone here, but you're also doing it while, like, with all this fucking dog shit writing and yeah. with people injecting their politics into it. Oh my God, speaking of dog shit writing, I need to, I need to explain this, chat. Centuries for centuries... Galadriel and the elves have been hunting down Sauron for <laughs> centuries. And Sauron's been throwing up his gang signs, yo. I'm the third street Sauron. And only now, when Galadriel sees it sideways... Wait a minute, that looks familiar. It's not a gang sign. It's a map. Sauron has been leaving fucking maps to his exact location, wherever the fuck he goes... To the and point, even worse. To the point he carved it into the corpse yes! of an elf. He carved it into Galadriel's brother's chest. I thought it was his shoulder. Either way, it, it, it was there. Matter. This Either is way, where was... I will be in Mordor. <laughs> Nobody God. in centuries, not a single person looked at this sideways. The moment, the millisecond, she sees it sideways. Wait a second, I recognize this. And she immediately goes to a map and realizes it's Mordor. Instantly. Well, yeah, no, you also remember... It, you don't get it, so also, she explained it away with, how could I be so blind? Yeah, how yeah. could everybody... Not a not a single elf in the whole time that they made this marking and passed around, study this marking and everything like that, nobody took a sideways glance at it, saw from the side, and was like, wait a minute. I'll be right back. Not yeah, a single that. elf. And remember... They said that they've scoured the lands. They've they've searched everywhere, but yep. not Mordor, apparently. Yeah, they said they checked everything. They they no stone has been left unturned. Sauron is gone. Oh God. God, yeah, it's so shit. But this guy is literally just trying to do the fucking like he's literally just doing the same shit that fucking uh, idiots did for uh, the Last Jedi. Uh, you just hate strong women. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, nobody had an issue with the movies when there was literally a fucking scene where... Uh, nobody had an issue with Leia. She was a fucking strong woman. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the girl's name, because I, I haven't watched the movies in so long, I can't remember her name. The one who stabs the... Uh, uh, God damn it. God, it's been so long since I've seen these movies. Fuck. The thing that rides the Nazgul, she stabs it in the face and says, I am no man. No one had an issue with that. Nobody mm. had an issue with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, her, uh, the king's daughter. Yeah. You fool. No man can kill me. I am no man. <laughs> yeah, no one had an issue with that. That was a perfectly even, good scene. Even better, it was a double setup. Because how did he get into that weakened position? A hobbit, not a man, stabbed him in the shin. A hobbit brought him low, brought the witch king low. And then a woman 
killed him for good. Yeah. God, it's such a good scene. And it's, it's a perfect way to show a strong female character without making her an unlikable bitch. Yes. And like I said, it does double duty. You fool. No man could kill me. Now die. And then, um, uh, I think it was Mary, stabs him in the shin. And yeah, it, it counter reflects and it hurts Mary. But he falls to his knees and that gives Eowyn time to stand up and then she delivers, I am no man. Fucking amazing scene. Him saying that he can't be felled by men? Well, you weren't. You were felled by a hobbit and then a woman killed you. How yep. fucking great that was that moment. Just, oh. Yeah, exactly. So the, this criticism that he's trying to levy against the people criticizing this show, it, it just doesn't work. It does not fucking work. People don't have an issue with strong women. People like that scene in the movies. There's nothing wrong with that. The issue is that these people don't know how to write strong women. They think just making a woman a plank of wood who's nothing but a bitch to everybody and can just kill everything in one hit makes them a, a strong, independent woman. It's like, no, it just makes them a cunt. Yeah. Yeah, and again, as Darren Rogers brings up, remember, Amazon fired the Tolkien expert they hired because he was calling Amazon on their shit writing. We knew it was going to be bad then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was right. It was it was Mary. Thank God. I, I couldn't remember if it was Mary or Pippin. Nah. Yeah, and it was. Courage. Courage for our friends, Mary. I remember that line now. Yeah, they, they have problems with writing anybody, generally. Like, <laughs> the Harfoots are so fucking evil. Yeah, oh my god. I, I, I'm i having to restrain myself from just going on a, like, yeah. a tangent, just covering the whole thing. Because it's so fucked. Mm. Oh, it's so bad. And I'm still trying to understand what the whole shit with Gandalf is, assuming that's Gandalf. Yeah, but, again, the... Uh, the the gods send this retarded man child down to battle Sauron. If it is, if it is Gandalf, he can't speak and he can't understand anything. What is he going to do? Yeah. Like had he not landed, you know, next to the Harfoots, and there just happened to be one good person among them, among this group of psychopaths, like, he would have been totally fucked. Anyone else, if he had done that shit, that ring shit, and attacked somebody, they would have killed him. Yeah. So it makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And it's also extremely contrived that the, the whole thing of like, oh, well, the only reason that he's even alive and is able to, to continue is because there was one good person in this group of just utter psychopaths who literally have a law that says that if mm. you make friends outside of our group, you are out of the caravan. Yeah, you are you are literally to be abandoned to die. Yeah. And, and they, they were totally fucking sure, considering... We, we gotta stop, we gotta stop. We're uh, going to do it. We're going to... I can't! <sighs> it's Dude, so that, that's my guess. My guess would be, wouldn't it be amazing if he saw Ron? But it, 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 there's more clues... For the guy Galadriel's with, the human Galadriel's with being Sauron. There's more clues towards him. Um, but Galadriel's stupid speech about in the presence of evil, fire gives off no heat. And then when the Harfoot falls in with maybe Gandalf, mm -hmm. she lands on the fire and she's like, it doesn't burn. Yep. So That was the thing I noticed Like later. I was just like, wait a minute. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, because they said that evil that causes that to happen. So is he evil? Is it not Gandalf? Or is it evil Gandalf? What is it? Oh, and weird things keep happening around him. Like, when he broke the stick, it broke her father's leg, or broke his ankle. When he was showing the thing about the, the star constellation, it killed all the fireflies. It's, it's, it's fucking weird. Now, is that what happened, where he broke the stick and it caused it to break the leg? Or was it like he saw a premonition and was trying to warn her to go, and he like broke the stick as like a representation of what's going to happen if she doesn't go to help him fast enough. 
Because yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was literally like, oh, he could see the future, and he's like telling her to go. That's why he's like getting standoffish could, and telling her to run. If he could see the future, then he would understand language and shit. I know. It doesn't make any fucking sense. I don't get it. None of it makes any fucking sense. The English hobbits are kind of nice, but the Irish hobbits are xenophobic and evil. Yeah. It's yeah. legitimately what it is. It is. Also, how convenient that he, for whatever reason, it, it well, we actually learn later he can say friend, but for whatever reason, he specifically says her name during the bit where he goes into the village and fucking fucks her over and it's like why did you say her name <laughs> you yeah. fucking dickhead like you could have just said friend friend but no he straight up just says her name and everyone looks at her like oh like oh. <laughs> they all collectively looked at her and said <laughs> we will wait for you oh my god <sighs> yeah you're, you're straying a little close to the fire pagan I know. I'm, I'm, we are trying our hardest not to just go into everything, but oh, we want to so bad. No, nope, Nathan just spoiled the thing for me. Um, uh, such that is Sauron on the raft. Nerd Rodic has spoken up about the leaks he got. Well, so um, much for that. Yeah, so I I was putting it together. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I got so, such calls it early at least. So I, I if it's true. That's a spoiler. I did know. And I was wanting to hold out for you guys to find out on your own, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said we didn't want to know. Well, I guess I'll I won't mark that off as a such calls it because I have no idea if that's uh, you know if, if it turns out that the leak maybe is wrong. So we'll see. But like okay. I said, there's more evidence towards him that he is actually Sauron and his weird obsession with smithing. <laughs> Sech takes a guess. I don't know. There's a reason we have Sech calls it on the card. I don't know. I, I have a functioning brain. <laughs> Actually, wait. That makes it implies that Pagan and Cree don't. No. Um, yeah, fucking rude. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that. I was like, oh, well, I, I guess it's true. I don't have a brain, but. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, there's a reason that that's on the card, though. I, I keep nailing these things. These fucking weirdo, off the wall bullshit things. In fact, it, it, it became such a thing that when Cree called it during the Vincent Martin thing, we actually have a full joke about that. No, you're not the one that's supposed to be psychic. That's me. Hoot hoot, I called the shoot. Hootie hoot, I called the shoot. They to infer whatever they want. Well, to begin with, if there was LGBTQ plus representation in the show, it would be going directly against Tolkien's books because there was none. Now, to say that adding races to this changes everything about Lord of the Rings because he wanted it about European blah blah blah. On the same hand, Tolkien also said he didn't want it to represent real life and he wanted it as its own thing. He didn't. What a fucking weaselly way to get around this. So, yeah, it was supposed and, and to be so, so a mythology for um, Britain, first of yeah. all. Um, secondly, adding all these races in, by extension, adds a fucking genocide and a race war somewhere down the line between this show and the Lord of the Rings, or between yes. this show and The Hobbit. Yeah, it has to. The these cannot coexist. Uh, uh, A.D. Krauser says, Sech, your filthy lizard friends make up this horrible stuff in between ruling the world, you monster. That's how you know. <laughs> oh, John, see, I got the insider see, trading. That's a true secret to how we're able to cover all these uh, terrible videos. The, the lizards working for Sech convince these people to say stupid things so we can continue the show. <laughs> yeah, it's totally. really... It, and the whole thing is just a big scam. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Didn't want it as an allegory, which is a very common thing that everybody is yelling about all the time. Allegory. Al which this has turned into. Like, the, this is the problem. They do, this is what they're doing with it. So it's I don't know if you two heard something about this, but... 
I remember hearing something about the Black Elf being made a slave of the orcs to be a commentary on slavery. Yeah. Wasn't it convenient that the the orcs the orcs are enslaving people to dig trenches to stay hidden. Trenches on the surface and they burn the trees to either side for a quarter of a mile to either side. It's like, insanity. And yeah. it, it, it seems like it seems clear that they're digging these trenches to go in a particular direction. They've got a destination and they're weaving back and forth into the fucking horizon, meaning it's yep. taking even longer to dig this trench than it would be if they were just straight. Which is weird because we see they dig tunnels and their tunnels are accurate. So it's like, why are you digging these trenches that anybody can spot? From, like, miles and miles away. Uh, yeah, and trust me, they they need... They had to sew cloth over the top of the trench lines. Where are they getting all of this fabric from? They're burning the trees so the trees aren't providing shade from the sun. Exactly. In fact, Scott just mentioned that in chat. If they wanted to reduce their exposure to sunlight, why would they burn the trees? Because... Orcs bad, I guess. Trees good. Did yeah. they make a big deal of cutting down this one tree and having the elf do it? When this is the only tree in this fucking wasteland that's still standing because they just arbitrarily didn't burn it. Even though they were clearly already digging around the side of it. Yeah. It, it's, it's fucking baffling. None of it makes sense. Why have hidden tunnel when you can have an obvious trench? Well, their entire thing was to remain hidden so that Gladriel and the elves wouldn't find them and they could take people underneath the villages and stuff. The elves even yeah, say this is how they've avoided our detection. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the tree thing was something I brought up during the, um, when we were watching it because I was like, why would you cut down the forest if you want protection from the sunlight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the, the trees would cover you. What the fuck are you doing? It's just none of it, none of it fucking works at all. Like, again, the sheer logistics of the amount of cloth they need, because you see this fucking trench stretching for miles into the horizon. Why? Why do you need, where the fuck did you get all that cloth from? Because they're not taking off the elves. You know, they're not, they're not taking off of any of their prisoners. You know how much more dehumanizing and demoralizing it would be if they made them all work naked? And then you would have, you could stitch their clothing into the, this fucking sun protector you've got going. God, I, do, I don't understand any of this. It is it, None of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. Oh, and they're making them dig with bone. Bone picks and bone shovels. And they give them, they give the, the elf an axe to cut down the tree. And it's a double-headed axe. But not like a normal double-headed axe, like you would think, where one axe head is one way and the other axe head is the other way on the other side for counterbalance. No, it's a double-headed axe where one axe is above the other axe. Oh. Oh, it's so fucking shit. My hatred for that axe is fucking unreal. Yeah. It, it, it would not function. It's, it's completely a non-functional thing. It's just so... It's just so fucking stupid. Allegory. Talking about modern day situations, it's not modern day ideals, no, these are timeless ones that just happen to be applicable to everything that's happening to us right now. But... If it's not about allegory, then it shouldn't matter if they're adding whatever race and genders they want to whoever and whatever they want. No, it should matter. Like, what if Galadriel was a man? What if, what if Amazon made Galadriel a man instead? That's all you gotta ask these fucking weirdos. Okay, well, we're gonna make Galadriel a man. Well, you see, Setch, the orcs are dumb, so they do dumb things. That's the problem, though, is they, they obviously do smart things unless the thing, unless the show demands stupidity all of a sudden. 
God, yeah, they tried to portray that one scene as fucking smart, you know, where he's like, oh, yeah, you're showing strength. Oh, you've just earned you and your friends a water ration. And then yeah. he slits the throat of the one because he was distracted by chugging the water. Yep. It's like, okay, so they're trying to uh, portray them as, like, clever and, you know, somewhat tactical and shit like that, but then they also just do dumb shit for no reason. Mm. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. That's the fucking thing. The, uh, the nod. It isn't that the elf gets a spear. This woman, um, might be a female elf, I'm not sure, gets a spear, and instead of pointing it at the warg, which... If we got to show a picture of this fucking warg. Instead of pointing it at the warg and, you know, stabbing it or skewering it, they twirl it around like a fucking cheerleader baton, <laughs> and they get jumped on by the warg and her stomach ripped out before she can do anything. It's like, well, if you're yes. dumbass that had the spear point pointing at the warg instead of spinning it around like you're on a fucking football field, maybe you'd be alive right now. Spun it around and instantly fucking died because she wasn't using the weapon as a weapon. Yep. I'm going to find that image you posted in the uh, Lord I, of the Rings channel. No, I've almost got it. I'm almost there. God. Just see... Excuse me. Just seeing Done. it again is pissing... God damn it. Just seeing it again is pissing me off. I hate it so much. This creature needs to stop existing regardless of whether it's fictional or not. Hold up. Alright, you guys ready for the amazing design of the warg in uh, Rings of Power? Keep in mind, half a billion dollars. Half a billion dollars. The hyenas in the Lion King remake look like fucking dog shit. They still look so much better than this. I don't know what the fuck this is. Yeah. It, it is truly terrible. Yeah, this thing looks like a fucking abomination. Yeah. Yeah, Scott, you're not the, you're not the only one that said it. So many people, we've all come to the same realization. Look, that word looks like a giant chihuahua. Crustless King's comment. Yo, quiero a Taco Bell. Yo, quiero a Taco Bell. <laughs> I forgot yeah, it's like they a used mixed... to have the chihuahua fucking mascot. Yeah. I, God, my, yeah, it's like a mix part, between a fucking a fucked up Chihuahua and a pug. Yeah. The best part about the Chihuahua mascot was the ones for the that really awful Godzilla movie that the the one guy was in. That's a lot of fish. Um, and it just goes Godzilla goes stomping past the Taco Bell, and it's just the Chihuahua and it looks up. It's like yo quiero Taco Bell, and Godzilla just takes the Taco Bell and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't represent a belief or, or thought process that Tolkien had. It shouldn't be a direct allegory to a certain people or a certain place. It's just its own world. Now, yes, if this show starts in its endless woke statements, right? If it, it doesn't ever allow me to feel like it's in Middle Earth, yes, I will be frustrated alongside everybody else. But so far, the trailer has given me nothing to be concerned about. In interviews with the... How? You have no critical lens if the trailer gave you nothing to be concerned about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you needed to watch that trailer and focus on it a lot more. And especially the interviews and everything, talking about how, like, we've never seen Black Elves before and shit like that. And it's like, that should have been, like, a giant klaxon warning of, like, of, like, the agenda is coming! Woo! Woo! Good God. Nerdrotic is right. This is the worst television disaster since Game of Thrones Season 8. Yeah. Yeah, um, it really is. I think a lot of us saw that coming too. It's just a question of how bad this was going to be. And it honestly already put Season 8 of Game of Thrones to shame. Mm. Um, 
The general lore was still there. Galadriel was uh, one of the strongest elves during the Second Age, but her power was not of arms. It was uh, the elven art. Magic. Yeah. This is the worst television disaster since the last eight disasters. <laughs> well, see, <laughs> the problem with that is something like Bebop Flix and Halo were still disasters, but they still weren't Game of Thrones season eight tier disasters. They were yeah, fucking they weren't, they weren't worldwide like phenomena disasters. Yeah, they were still dog shit through and through, but they still didn't even reach the level of sheer bad that there's um, that season eight was. Mm. Well, keep in mind that was that was something the entire world. Mankind itself all experienced it. Wow. A little hyperbolic there, but it was okay, hyperbolic, the... but it was across all continents and everything. Yeah, it, it was one of the biggest TV shows of all time. There was watch parties and like bars and stuff like there. there it was massive and all that excitement and hype died fucking overnight. It's incredible. Yep. Dude, I, yeah, I can't believe that this show is getting worse and worse per episode. It's like, oh my god. We're almost halfway. The next episode, next week, it will be the halfway point. And nothing has happened. Yeah, well, these things have happened, but the plot... The plot has gone nowhere. That's what I mean. Nothing is progressing. Yeah. Yeah. We just found out in episode three <clears throat> that Sauron might be in Mordor. Like, we just found that out. And you know yeah. what? It's fine to learn that in episode three, as long as other things are still progressing. What happened in episode ones and two? Gladriel was told to stop her fight. They sent her off to the Undying Lands. She jumped into the fucking ocean to swim across it. Keep in mind, this isn't like, you know, a mile or two away from the dock or any kind of landmass. This is extremely far out into the ocean, to the point she's swimming for god knows how long, which she wouldn't be able to do, even if she is an elf, before she gets picked up by this raft. And they're on the raft for what appears to be several days before they're picked up by a ship and brought to Numenor. And then we finally see a map showing just how big the ocean is and how much distance there is between Numenor and fucking Middle-earth. Yep. It's insanity. It is, yeah, it's ludicrous. And we were talking about, we were discussing this thing, and I'm mentioning that, like, the sea is not your friend. It never will be. If you're in the water for so long, it doesn't matter if you get too tired and drown. The sea is eating away at your body. And I mentioned the USS Indianapolis incident, where the USS Indianapolis went, went calms dark, <laughs> and went an unknown heading for a time and it got sunk by a Japanese submarine and those men were in the water for three fucking days and when the rescue ships finally found them and got there and they tried to grab them from the water their skin came off like right. as if they I... peeled off a pair of pants it just whoop right off you mentioned this uh, yesterday I just remember what exact incident that was I was thinking there, there, yeah. there was an, also an incident where um, I'd seen a video of where a ship was sunk, uh, I think at Pearl Harbor, and there was people trapped in this ship uh, after it sank. They were there for days before the, the banging stopped, because like, no one could get in to rescue these guys. Yeah. Um, I thought that's the one you were talking about at first, but then you talked about them being in the water and the skin coming off. Yeah. I was kind of, oh fuck, which one was that? I knew I heard about this, but yeah, I, I've connected it now. I know which one yes, you're talking about. Yes, the, the USS Indianapolis was the incident where sharks ate a ton of the survivors. Yeah. And they laid the blame entirely at uh, the feet of the captain, and they gave a kangaroo court, and he, he got completely, like, run through the mill and blamed for everything, um, even though it was not his fault at all, and he, he committed suicide. Lovely. Uh, but yeah. And then they covered up the entire story until a child uh, was doing a report on it and uncovered all of it and let loose the floodgates and everything 
to the and it was so bad the 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 the, can, the court was such a kangaroo court. Uh oh, it was, it was so that, bad the Clintons assassinated the child. I can't believe it's such. Holy shit. No, they had the jet, the captain of the Japanese submarine that sank the USS Indianapolis. They made him come in and testify. Oh wow! And he kept going against. He's like, he's like, no, the captain, the captain of the Indianapolis was not at fault. There, it didn't matter if he would have zigzagged or what he would have done. I was stalking his ship. There is nothing he could have done to stop me from sinking it. Because they were saying, well, he didn't do the zigzag pattern and stuff like that, like he was supposed to, and everything. It's like. You had him on a secret mission to deliver the nuclear bombs. That's why the USS Indianapolis was so important, why they didn't want to discuss what happened to it, because it was the thing that delivered the bombs to Okinawa so they could be flown into over Japan to begin with. And then it was trying to get back to the fleet as fast as possible, and it got sunk on its way back. And they didn't want to reveal why the USS Indianapolis was alone without escort. They didn't want to admit that they fucked this ship over. Because trust me, even though the Indianapolis was a heavy cruiser, you don't go alone in the ocean. Um, <laughs> These comments. <laughs> I can't believe that child sunk the Indianapolis with a torpedo. Man, yeah. I can't believe the child committed suicide by toilet paper hanging. <laughs> <laughs> um... Anyways, back to the amazing high quality show Rings of Power. Um, yeah. If you want Galadriel to meet this guy, I keep forgetting what his name is. Um, doesn't really matter. If you want her to run into this guy and still keep the dumb warrior Galadriel thing, you could just have her stumble upon him in a battlefield or traveling on the road or something. They happen yeah. to be going the same direction. Um... But no, it has to be this contri insanely contrived shit of I'm going to jump into the ocean to certain death and just so happen, by pure happenstance, by pure luck, run into this raft and then by pure luck again get rescued by a ship. Yep. And by pure luck, air quotes, maybe, um, for that raft uh, not getting eaten... By the sea monster, it it just left the other raft part alone that that Sauron and Gladriel are on now, for reasons. Like why why didn't it just turn around and smash their ship as well? Yeah. Again, was that because Sauron told it not to? Like, or is it that fucked? Speaking of, it, since like since we know now that that guy is Sauron. This is kind of what I was hinting at yesterday during the recording, you two. Oh, why the fuck would he uh, rescue Galadriel if he's Sauron? Because I wanted you to remember that for when you found out it was him. Because why the fuck would Sauron rescue Galadriel? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I, and the, and the multiple that, the, times. Yeah, his his motivations don't make any sense with Galadriel, like at all, like. Or his doing again. They they do the red herring like maybe you called the monster there. So did did Sauron call the monster to their original ship? Like why did he do that? Was he was he specifically trying to get to Numenor? And if so, if he was trying to get to Numenor, why did he take the elf? Because he knows the Numenorians don't like elves. We don't know why they don't like elves, mind you. They just hate elves. No, you... and to be to be fair, Gladriel is such a a bigoted piece of shit. But I understand why they don't like her. <laughs> you see, such he read the script in advance and knew that he had to meet Galadriel and uh, get to Numenor. So he had his ship destroyed by the sea worm, and um, had it kill all those other random humans too because they weren't important. Uh, yeah, because so <laughs> because uh, Sauron is a Skywalker, duh. What is your name? <laughs> Sauron. Sauron Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God.
actors do not bother me because actors are actors. They're not the creators. They're not the writers of the show. They're actors. They're allowed to say whatever they want. Their job is to act. They, no, no, they should not be allowed to say whatever they want. Yeah, you are no, an also, actor. You are not PR. Shut your fucking mouth. Yeah, like a also, certain that's other show that had true. a certain other show that had a certain actor that said, "Oh, we're ma we're fixing the mistakes of the past." Yeah, no. Yeah, that, that just uh, comes off as completely assholeish. Fuck off. Yeah. Also, he's just wrong. Where he's saying like, "Oh, it's just the actor saying whatever they want." Uh, no, I actually. Sometimes the actors aren't allowed to say certain things, and then sometimes when they do, it's because they were told by the higher ups to say that specific thing. Yeah. So no, like that whole speech that the um, the black lady gave about being like, "Oh, the first black dwarf," and it's going to be so good for you know for uh, young women to have a a powerful role model and stuff, and all that. Like I can guarantee you, all that stuff she said was she was told to say. By the upper up, by the higher ups. She was so fed if, those lines. If you're making a show or a movie or whatever else, you typically don't want the people working on it talking about how fucking dog shit it is. This is why, after a few statements that uh, looked bad for Disney, Mark Hamill suddenly turned around. Oh, Last Jedi is good. It's it's a fine movie. Blah 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 blah. Completely doing a 180 on his stance from before. Um. It's possible he saw the conflict amongst the fans and wanted that to end. It's also extremely possible, probably even likely, that Disney was like, Nah, -uh, you don't get to talk shit about us. This is our product we're trying to sell, and you're a part of it. That does not give you free reign to fucking talk, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Jenical Dude, that, the funny thing is, because he says, uh, Hey, Pagan, she will also mysteriously be the last Black Dwarf. Well, the funny thing is, she said, like, oh, I, I'm going to be the first black dwarf. And it's like, but then people started sharing that uh, that stuff of the Hobbit that had a dark-skinned dwarf with no beard in it as well. And it's like, oh, so you're not, you're not even the first. <laughs> yeah. She'll be the second to last then. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just eating right now. <laughs> just like the last Disney character was the first one to be gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing how many first gay characters Disney has. They are so progressive for having the first gay character in a Disney work with each and every single fucking release. And it is so stunning and brave and powerful <laughs> of them to cut those scenes out for foreign releases. Yep. Have, you seen, have you seen that meme where it's the guy reading the articles or whatever and he's like, uh, it's like a cycle where like, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, the first female-led Marvel movie. It comes out to great appeal. Gets criticized. Men hate women. Uh, Marvel movie gets released. The first female-led Marvel movie. And, like, it just, like, it, he shows, like, the each uh, poster for each movie and everything. It just it, it, It's, like, an endless cycle of this shit where first <laughs> gay character in this movie gets criticized. Uh, every <laughs> fucking studio calls everyone homophobic. <laughs> Literally, the next movie, our first gay character, it, like it's just a cycle that repeats over and over and over and over again. <laughs> wow, Pagan, you're you're to me. It sounds like you're a homophobe who hates uh, women. Oh man, I hate them fucking gays, man. I fucking hate them, <laughs> <laughs> especially just, myself. I was going to say, just for anyone new here, uh, Pagan is gay. <laughs> well we're a third of the way through this video already we're making better progress than the other one yeah that, that other one was so bad though it really was yeah it was fucking terrible act their job is not to represent the entire show 
this is the... Sometimes they are, though. Why do you think the actors go on, like, fucking press tours and shit and put out articles and statements about it? it like... Yeah, wh- how clueless are you about how any of this works? Th- this is just bizarre, like... It's just blatantly wrong. Yeah. Like, oftentimes when a movie comes out, or a TV show, there'll be a bunch of interviews with, like, some of the lead actors and stuff. Um, how many interviews have the actors of the MCU been in regarding, oh, the, the new movie that's coming out, and, like... <sighs> I just don't get how someone could say this unironically. This one that my kids are going to see, um, perhaps the actors and actresses on the show haven't gotten the memo. So the showrunners out here essentially running damage control while the interviews that we've set, that we've seen from certain members of the cast fly in the face of that so before you so what the fuck he he played the clip from the quarter so he knows interviews with the actors happen yeah so you and you know that the interviews the the actors aren't allowed to talk about the project unless they're given the go-ahead by like as part of the contract they can't speak on the project unless they are given the go-ahead to yeah, there's usually like, a clause in their contracts where it's like, yeah, you can't talk shit about this. Fucking hell. Yell at saying, oh, well, what the creator is saying contradicts what the actors are saying. Who cares? It's the actor. And the you crea- do. You should care. Because it means they're talking out their fucking ass. No, the people- creators, I mean. Two different people working on the same project are saying completely incongruent things. You shouldn't care about that. What the fuck? There's a reason people point it out. It's nonsense. Like... Yeah. Okay. Picture this. A new movie is coming out. It has a $200 billion budget. And the director is like, oh yeah, this is a... A high fantasy setting with swords and uh, magic and everything. And then the lead actor says, oh yeah, this is a cool, like, sci-fi movie with um, laser guns and spaceships and and Dyson spheres, which is a pretty interesting concept, by the way. Um, And and all this sci-fi shit. It would be a big fucking deal that these two people are saying, like, two things are completely at odds. Yep. Just use a hyperbolic example. Creator, the same role. The actor has no idea what's going on at any point with anything from the creative standpoint. They're- um, they do. What the fuck are you talking about? What? This is insanity. They work so, on the set. What apparently, fairy tale universe do you live in? Apparently, this needs to be explained to the guy. So the showrunners. Um, they usually deal with, like, the script and what the plot is going to be about and all that kind of thing. And uh, the actors, um, they're a bit of a small part in production. They only play the fucking roles that are written for them. Jesus Christ on a fucking cross, what is wrong with you? How do you, how do you fuck this up? Yeah, and they're given PR packets and everything and told what to say on all these fucking talk shows and everything. Like... They are guided by their agents, like with the contracts and what the fuck are you smoking? If they don't what know what's planet going, do you come from? If they don't know what's going on, then that's a big problem. Well, there's another uh, piece of media that came out recently, a movie, that um, the actors didn't know what the fuck was going on with the movie because so many changes had been made and it bit, uh, didn't even the director not know how it ended after they started shooting. Uh, it's, it's a little film called The Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange. Yeah. Like, it's just bizarre to me that this guy sees such a massive fucking contradiction and doesn't see a problem with it. Yep. Um, for everyone who hasn't seen it, check out Mahler's video on uh, Multiverse of Madness, by, by the way. Great video.
They're there to do as told. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're very talented as long as they do their job well. But they do as they're told. What the fuck do you think happens on the talk shows and everything, my dude? And in the press releases. They're doing as they're told. Oh, God, man. What the fuck? How often is it that we see an actor or an actress uh, come out to talk about a movie on an interview that they've worked on that is either in theaters now or soon to be released in which that actor or actress talks mad shit about that movie and talking about how terrible it is and how poorly, like, how poorly written, how poorly acted, how poorly shot, how poorly lit, everything. Like, that doesn't really happen. Even... Prior to Game of Thrones Season 8 being released, the actors were all being really fucking coy about it because they couldn't yeah. outright say that it was bad. Oh, what do you think of uh, Season 8? Best season ever! Then they yeah. laugh about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, or Tyrion. Fucking, when Peter Dinklage is on, he's like... I, I, and so... you. you Tyrion is smart, and so he tells the people to hide from the undead in the crypts, um, which is, uh, yeah. But you can tell he is, he's trying to point out how fucking stupid this is. <laughs> he's trying to just outright tell you, guys, it's all fucked. It, it's all fucked. It's so fucked. Well, Peter Dinklage himself got a little fucked after that. Yeah. But yeah. But to talk about all these contradictions and who cares? People who people care about quality. Attention. People who actually pay attention. People who understand that if the if if the directors are saying one thing and the actors are contradicting it, there's some fucking shenaniganry going on. Like, I'm not sitting here to just say, like, oh, all these people hating it. I understand your concerns, right? This is not me calling. I'm not going to talk about any specific pages, but the whole internet is blowing up about it. And somebody needs to sit there and finally just say, it doesn't look bad. It looks terrible. It looked terrible in the trailers. So, what are you talking about? Yeah, in the trailers, too. But in the actual show, like... Okay, here's a shot where everything's all orange. One of the things people were making fun of prior to release was Cheeto Dust Galadriel. Because she was yeah. in this big fire and covered in orange powder that looked like Cheeto Dust. I understand your concerns, but shut the fuck up, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Then you don't understand our concerns. The visuals are stunning. The world... Uh, the visuals are stunning when you're, you're showing, showing Cheeto Dust screen. Land. Yeah. And also, this, this, this fucking ice castle. Fuck off. Fuck off so much. I hate this place. World ...looks and feels like Middle Earth. And I don't care if they shifted a little Ow. bit here and there. Peter Jackson also shifted things from the novels as well. There's entire... Peter Jackson shifted things in the novels... Arguably a couple of things he maybe shouldn't have, but he didn't outright butcher the lore. He didn't take a character like Galadriel and completely change her character to be this constant uppity bitch who wants to... Who's constantly giving us, like... Fuck, it's so annoying. She's constantly scowling at everyone. She gets saved from the ocean and wakes up on a ship, and she steps outside, and she's looking at every single person on top of that deck like she wants to fucking murder them. And she's doing this constantly. Sleep? I'm gonna kill you in your sleep? I'm gonna kill you in your sleep. Yeah. It's why I made the uh, the comment of, like, it feels like she's just racist towards every other race because she just... Anytime she looks at anyone else, she just looks like she wants to kill them. And it's like, oh, so she's extremely racist. And then yeah. we find out, no, it's not that she's racist. She's just a cunt. Yeah. Well, an even bigger cunt than just being a racist. Yeah. And as for some of the sets in the show, some of them look like straight up 3D printed. There's like these carvings in a tree of the, the fallen elves. And 
The carvings look so plastic, it's fucking unreal. The only change I know of uh, Jackson made was the reforging of Anduril originally happened in Fellowship, but the movie saved it for Return. Not just that. There was some stuff with uh, Faramir that was changed. Um, in the books, he decided on his own to let Frodo go. Uh, in the movies, he kept him for a little longer and brought him to... Oh god, why the fuck am I forgetting the name? The the place in between Mordor and Gondor, the, the city on the river. Um, uh, Osgiliath? Osgiliath, yes. Imagine how she'll look at the Black Elves, I emote. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. T uh, Peter Jackson also removed Tom Bombadil and the Scouring of the Shire. So Tom Bombadil is understandable because... There's... It's a nice section of the book, but I don't feel that would translate so well to the movie. Because... Look, people are already like, oh, why did the eagles just fly it there? Why did the eagles just fly it there when fucking arrows exist? But besides that, if you had Tom Bombadil in the movie, this, this fucking unkillable god um, who can't be corrupted by the ring, it, it would raise the question with people who don't pay attention, well, why didn't Tom Bombadil just uh, deliver the ring? Tom Bombadil broke shit? Yeah, that too, kind of. Um... Yeah. It was for the quality, though, to make the universe more believable in cinema, plus Tom Bombadil breaks the book. Somewhat, yeah. They do explain a way why they can't just give the ring to Tom Bombadil, because he would, like, eventually forget about it, because he's that... I don't want to say careless, but that inattentive, maybe? It would just seem like some trinket to him after a while. It's not important, and he would toss it away. Um, But also... I think he's, like, connected to the forest and can't really leave. I forget. I'd have to go through it again, but, um... Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, um... What was the other... Oh, the Scouring of the Shire? It is unfortunate that we lost that, but... Those are some chonky fucking movies. That probably would have added another half hour to an hour onto those movies if they kept yep. that. Yeah. in the Lord of the Rings trilogy that was one or two pages in the book that Peter Jackson created into massive sequences. Who cares? They're allowed to do what they want as long as it is entertaining and as long as it's still in... No, 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 no. Okay, maybe, maybe this is where he's going. We gotta see what he says because now he's trying to walk back that statement a little bit. Capsulates the feeling. No, okay, he didn't. No, it's gotta be respectful to the source material. Yeah. Did you notice that Peter Jackson was respectful of the source material. There's interviews of him saying, yeah, we didn't want to put our own political messaging in. We wanted to stay as true to the books as we could. And that's why those movies are so good. One of the many reasons why those movies are so good. Um, the actor who played Aragorn, he wore his sword around, like, off the set... So he would get used to feeling uh, the feeling of having it on him. Which I, I really like that he did that. Of Earth, right? Okay, well, oh, but it needs to feel true to blah, blah, blah. Okay, why is it that in a fantasy world, all these characters in Lord of the Rings had British accents? Why is that? Is that because Middle Earth? You, okay. you fucking plank of wood. It was meant to be a British mythology. Yes. This is supposed to be the British version of the Viking sagas. This is supposed to be their ancestry. Like, their legends, their lore... Vigo also hated the Rings of Power, Kratos. That's fucking based. Um, yeah. Just because now Amazon is bought and paid for whoever paid Fro Frodo, I forget. Um, oh, he's, Elijah he's Wood? Yeah, Elijah Wood is apparently going up to bat for these. 
Yeah, when uh, when I was at Fan Expo, they had a big banner for Rings of Power hung above them. They had a lot of advertisement for Rings of Power at Fan Expo. Yeah. Um. Also, what the fuck are the showrunners, or sorry, the movie creators supposed to do? Just invent new accents out of thin fucking air for the series? No. Of, of course... Uh, God... It's fine to have real-world accents in a fictional world. Because you're never... Everyone has an accent. Even if you don't think you have an accent, you have an accent. I have an accent. It's what everyone else who lives around me sounds like. Well, I shouldn't say everyone. A lot of people. But the way I speak is going to sound different to the way someone else speaks who... Like... God, I, I hate these petty, stupid fucking arguments that don't mean anything. Yeah. It, it's just yeah. this desperate fucking cope to try and defend something. Oh, well, they, oh, they had British accents in the movies, so the fuck what? That doesn't change anything. That's not substantive, you fucking plank. Fuck off. Yeah. Also, his statement of, like, so long as it's entertaining, the fuck does that mean? It, so this That's such goes... an empty, hollow fucking, like, oh my god. Yeah, it's it's a completely meaningless phrase because what is entertaining, similar to what we said in response to the other video we covered today, is fucking subjective. There's people out there who legitimately have no interest in anything fantasy related. So, Lord of the Rings, Elder Scrolls, whether it was the old good ones or the new bad ones, um... Game of Thrones, anything like that. There, there's people out there who just take zero interest in that shit. Doesn't mean they're not entertaining works. At least the good ones. Um, like, it's a, as long as it's entertaining. Some people are entertained by watching fucking paint dry. God, I, I am so sick of these meaningless, stupid fucking phrases. Vigo is also based for saying, even if they don't like my movies, you have to speak up for quality, in response to Quentin shitting on a movie of his. Quentin Tarantino? Huh. I assume that's what you meant, and not... Yeah, because the other guy spelt the other way. Anyways... The American accents in Dishonored are actually really distracting because the world was designed to be as English as possible. Actually, yeah, I could see how that would be distracting and how that could take uh, people out of the experience. Yeah, but they don't talk about needing a cuppa or tea or anything like that, you know? It's not ludicrously over-the-top British. Yeah. Earth had accents? Or is that an allegory to England and to European heritage? No, you uh, idiot. It was, Tolkien is literally on record saying this is a mythology for England. That does not make it an allegory, you fuck. Mm -hmm. The fact that Vega remains C-list after the trilogy is either a tragedy or a blessing, I'm not sure which. Yeah, I, I I feel like everyone from those movies deserved far more recognition than they got after the fact. Not to imply that, you know, Ian McKellen wasn't a big actor or um, Orlando Bloom didn't go on to do more. But, yeah, it, it, it's... They, they should have been treated better after that, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Creed, did you really think that Quentin, here's the thing, I fucking hate Trump, reviews, would be capable of uh, self-reflection like that? Well, no, it's not self-reflection. It was Vigo saying something in response to Quentin. So I assume that was Quentin Tarantino, because that's the kind of person he would hear the criticisms of and respond to. And he probably wouldn't respond to a fucking weirdo YouTuber like Quentin Reviews. Yeah. Yeah. God, we're probably going to have to cover one of his videos at some point. Probably. L let's hope that's far in the future. 
So stop with this allegory thing. I'm sick of it. It's so annoying hearing this contradicting thing. Yes. You misunderstanding what an allegory is does not invalidate the criticisms of people saying Tolkien didn't like uh, allegory. Fuck off. Yeah. You not you don't even understand what actors do. Like Jesus Christ. You don't have no idea about any of this PR nonsense. He just judging on his background, he builds himself up to be a really big movie buff. Um horror movies in particular it seems, which is fine. Horror movies can be good. Um yeah. but the fact that someone who's appears on the surface to be a movie buff doesn't know like basic shit is just weird. Yep. And again, this is not saying that you need to know the movie process to critique it at all. No, but he's making factual statements about, like, the actors don't know anything that's going on. They just say whatever the fuck they want. It's like, no, they don't. The fuck is part of your contract, you idiot? Yeah. Um, if you do, emphasis on if, because I wouldn't wish Quentin, uh, on anyone else, please try your best to avert your eyes from his dead-eyed sex doll. Jay Longbone is still traumatized. Oh, I don't doubt it. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone cares if this fucking weirdo is like, stop with the allegory criticisms, wah, because they're... The allegory criticisms are legitimate. I'm sorry, dude. That's not how it works. Yeah. I understand that that is truly what Tolkien wanted it to be. That he wanted it to be lore specific to European culture. But... There's a difference between European culture and, and British culture. Yeah. Or English, yeah. Hey, Kratosis, are you guys planning on covering Hello Future Me's video on Ring of Power? I have nothing against him as a person, but there's just a lot in his video that is blatantly wrong. Um, I'm not sure I've heard of this video, but I can look into it after the stream. Might be something worth covering next week if, um, if it's as bad as you say it is. Yeah. I, I should make it clear to you, we're not going to be covering Rings of Power every week until the show is over. Thank God, or I think my sanity would lose it. Yeah, I'd have I would to die. watch the show. Yeah. We truly want it to not represent any existing belief system or allegory, then you need to just include whoever and whatever, whoever you see fit. The race and the gender of these characters should not freaking matter. In but it, it, it would. Okay, if you have. Right. Let, let's just do you the have easy a one. bunch of desert dwellers. Well, right, and they never go outside because the sun will kill them. They won't have melanin because they never go outside. Well, let's just do an easy one, Setch. Let's say someone wrote um, a fictional story about an, a, an adventure across the world with a cast of highly endearing characters. It was all based on African culture, and it was a mythology for Africa. And then someone came along uh, years... Sorry, not just years after the original creator died, but just a couple years after the creator's son died, who, like, protected the series long after the original creator's death, and turned all those characters white or Asian. I think the people attached to that story would have a good fucking reason to be annoyed by that. Yep. What if we re remade Petey Wheatstraw, but we made all the characters white? Make mm. the next Black Panther a white guy? Yeah, exactly. That kind of shit would piss yeah. people off. Um, that's the thing. I don't want the next Black Panther to be a white guy. I don't want African stories to be changed to have white people in them where there naturally wouldn't be. Just stick to this fucking source material. Why is this such a big deal? Why is it yeah. so hard for people to just be like, this is what the source is, I'm going to stick to it. Yeah, it's... Uh, I hate that fucking, like, double, double standard bullshit of, you know, like, oh, it's fine to, you know, 
it's fine to change the races of white people, but if you do it with any other race, no, 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 you're a racist. You're, you, you, uh, 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 you can't do that. But it's totally fine for them to be like, oh, a fucking British story, but with British history, fuck, it doesn't matter. It's just so annoying. It's oh, just, just don't do that. Just don't do it. Either way, both ways, don't do it. Why is didn't, that so hard? Didn't Tolkien even include a way to include differently colored, um, like different skin colors of character to be within that world? Just not, you know, the people native to that world. Not, I shouldn't say that world to that location of the world. Yeah, uh, it could have just been that. Don't know. Hmm? Don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, but I would assume that yeah, I, if, like I thought I have heard that um, there there's ways that that could work in. Yeah, I had not, so I I don't know at all. <laughs> I just realized something. Oh. Yeah, there wasn't a genocide. No, the reason why there's no black elves or dwarves or anything like that is they wouldn't vote for Joe Biden, so he had to take their melanin. (laughs) Even then, if they wanted dark-skinned people so bad, why not just make a different setting within the same world? Yeah, you could even have, like, again, you could just have the people from this other land interact with Middle-earth for some reason. Yeah. Maybe they're visiting there. Maybe there's an ancient uh, blood debt that needs to be repaid, so they come to help the elves fight or whatever. You could do anything. <sighs> oh, yeah. Didn't they say something like the Easterlings were supposed to be like... Yeah, they, um... they were darker skin. That's um, the guy we covered last time that was super racist because he sh- he said shit like... Oh, the ogres are obviously Mongolians and stuff. Yeah. They, like, holy shit, that was insane. And the lizard um, men are obviously Mexicans and stuff. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, when we covered that weirdo racist video, um, he even brought up the Easterlings as being the only example of uh, dark-skinned people. And, oh, well, of course they're evil because it's racist. So, Yeah. Unless known otherwise, yes, Disney has a tendency to go a little in your face with their political stances, and I'm not in love with it. I'm not in defense of ruining a piece of art for the sake of fitting in a political message, right? Like, Middle Earth needs to be Middle Earth. But my point is, is we have seen nothing in the trailers that leads us to believe that this is a highly political world, that this is a highly political show. All we have. All shit we have. We have, though. In fact, I would say that the trailers portrayed it more than the actual show does. Yeah. Like, the trailers, the trailers made it seem like this was going to be, like, a hyper-political TV show, and it's only been a little bit political in the actual show. Yeah, but, and to be fair, it has a lot of the social justice traps that you always see everywhere. With these yeah, I know. You fucking, the... They just cannot, the fucking female, the strong female character thing. They just cannot fucking write them. God, well, I mean, I I guess I shouldn't be surprised that the people who can't even define what a woman is couldn't actually write a strong one. Yep. is actors and creators that are contradicting actors that claim that this is a big allegory but they are actors their job is to find whatever their belief is to get them through and nobody can tell what (laughs) what (laughs) you're just supposed to believe whatever will get you through the job okay that's 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 wonderful thank you wow what is what is this guy talking about Again, what fairy tale universe do you come from? Just pretend it's the movie you wanted. No, he's saying that the actors have to pretend. <laughs> just to get through the, the shoot. They have to pretend it's what they want. <laughs> it's just so fuck. This guy is fucking Looney Tunes. Yeah, this is insane. I didn't expect this guy to be this 
fucking out there and just neither did I. Completely insane. When, when oh I previewed God. the video, I saw some of the bullshit at the start. I didn't get this deep into it to see like this wacky shit. Yeah. Tell them the way of acting is. If the way they act as the characters is by pulling from their beliefs and their feelings about the world, great. That's what actors do all the time. That's how you direct an actor. When you see behind the scenes, directors literally try to pull trauma from people. They, they, they put them in situations that they can relate to as ways to play different characters. That doesn't mean the entire show is based around that person's belief. Uh, what does that have to do with anything? I now he's talking about now he's talking about acting method, and he's trying to to correlate that to the interviews and stuff to explain them away again. Like what? I I, I don't get what he's trying to do here. This this doesn't connect to anything. So, was it Alien Two or one of the later Alien movies where, um. Ellen Ripley had a picture of her uh, daughter who was dead at that point because she grew up into an old lady and died. But aliens. Yep. It, that was aliens. And in the real world, that was actually a picture of the actress's own mother. And that's a way you can um, use like the actor's experiences to draw motion out of them. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't translate to... <sighs> He he's trying to argue that oh yeah all this stuff is coming up because that's what's being used behind the scenes to draw these emotions out of the characters or out of the actors to play the characters, but we don't see any of the behind the scenes shit of hey think of this thing so you act this way. We're not seeing any of that. We're just hearing people talk about the political shit. Oh god, it's so fucking weird. It's just like. A complete bizarre rant about something unrelated to the to the discussion. So when an actors are saying these statements and you're taking them so true to their word just to get some views on YouTube, it is crazy. Why do you think people are doing this just to get views? Do you not think they're... This is another thing I can't stand. There's a lot of things I can't stand, uh, clearly. Yeah. This is another one I can't stand because it just comes across as such a dismissive, disingenuous argument to discredit whatever the other person is saying. Oh, you're just doing this for views. What if they're doing it because, sure, they'll get some views out of it. That's the point of making any YouTube video. What if the reason they're complaining about it and making an issue out of it is because they find it to be a legitimate problem? Because it hints to problems that might exist with the show that hasn't been released yet. When, when, when a Tolkien work is being used to, to push like political agendas and stuff, and this is what a lot of people are hearing pre-release, it seems a bit fucking justified to me that that's what they would get their impressions from, and they would come to the conclusions they do. Like, like, this is the point of interviews and trailers and everything, is that, oh yeah, we're going to put our best foot forward, we're going to show you some amazing stuff to draw you into the show. And when that stuff is, here's our agenda, uh, here's why we're changing these things from Tolkien's lore, um, that he absolutely wouldn't agree with. Uh, I can understand why the people critical of it make the comments they do. Yep. Did he even say anything proper yet? Every single sentence I've heard so far was subjective or just straight up false. Well, he is being covered by Stag after all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have more installation zero zero. That dude was actually pretty chill. He had he was smart enough to um, acknowledge that yeah, I'm super subjective about Halo and I can't look at it with like the proper objective lens, so I'm not going to do this type of content anymore i'm just going to stick to what i'm good at talking about you know the lore and world of halo the way i like it i'm not going to go out and say you know 
the show is great with nothing to back it up. Yeah. Doesn't change the fact that his video was pretty bad, but, like, genuinely, all the respect for him for acknowledging that. Don't spread hate. Literally is silencing harsh criticism. Fuck this guy and all the soy boys who can't think outside of the small box called woke media. Now everyone's an NPC without opinions. Yeah, I... I, I hate the sentiment so much. Oh, stop being a hater. You're, you're just a hater. Stop spreading hate. When people are just being criticized, like, being critical of dog shit. Installation had the stones to admit his faults. Yeah. I wish yeah. there were more people like him. Absolutely. It is unfortunate we never got to talk to him, though. Um, but it's understandable yeah. that... He took a step back and... Yeah. I, I'm sick of seeing all the negativity in Lord of the Rings. I am going to defend it. I think it looks phenomenal. I think that it truly looks like it could be a master class of television. <laughs> uh, Sorry to break it you again, but no. Your fucking barometer for quality is broken, my dude. Yeah. Holy yeah, shit. I mean, we'd, I'd have to ask him what he thinks about it now. You know, if he still holds the same opinion, then I'd be like, yeah, you're, you're fucking clueless. Yeah, you're just... Well, um, unsalvageable. I decided at one point earlier to, um, hold on, to, to check out his YouTube channel, see what kind of, like, maybe are we wrong for going after this video he's, uh, we're responding to now? Maybe he's seen the first couple episodes and, um, oh no, and changed his mind on them, you know? So I, I went to over to his channel and, <laughs> uh, ignore the hate. Rise of Power episode one and two, um, review slash discussion, and it's eight minutes and thirty seven seconds long. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Yep. No. All right. Yeah, Don't ignore so the hate. All the haters are correct. Uh, this <laughs> show is dog shit. Yeah, so he's just an NPC brain that has to defend the company. Uh, <laughs> stop attacking the multi-billion dollar company! Oh my god, that's actually one of the most brutal comments I've ever seen. Rings of Power is the Fallout 76 of TV. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's as damaging to Amazon as we think it might be, as we hope it might be, uh, then dear god, yeah, that is terrible for uh, Amazon. They even came out and said in advance, if, like, the future of our streaming service depends on the outcome of Rings of Power. This is part of the reason we're telling people not to watch this dog shit. Don't do it. Do not yeah. watch it. Yeah. Don't give them the view time. It, it, like, to me, it looks like an equal to the trilogy. <laughs> wow <laughs> you're you have awful fucking sense of quality like you just cannot tell anything like how is it everyone else was able to tell that this was going to be absolute dog shit and you're just like oh it's gonna be the next best thing since sliced fucking bread okay what drugs is he on and where do I get them I would like to know too <sighs> Uh, it's a drug called Twitter, probably. I still can't believe how incredibly scummy Amazon is being and trying to hide the reviews on their show. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty puck, uh, fucking pathetic. What do you think would look worse, an extremely low rating on their show or the fact that they're hiding reviews? Hiding reviews easily. Yeah. yeah. It is super suspicious every yeah, single fucking it's, time. Remember, it's clear they're terrified of for, just how bad the reviews are. Remember when uh, Rise of Skywalker came out, and within like a day or two, it had a uh, 67, I believe, for the audience score, and it was fucking deadlocked. Sorry, did I say 67? I meant 87. It had an 87 score, and it was fucking deadlocked on that. 
like no matter how many audience review scores came in, it would not budge from uh, 87. And to this day, I believe it's still at 87 audience score. Bit fucking suspicious. Yep. Rise of Skywalker is still at uh, 86. Okay, that's what it was, 86. I knew it was something like high up there. As some love with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I have multiple, I have the, both the 4K as well as a Blu-ray and a DVD full collection of the... No one cares. Doesn't matter. None no this, one cares. None of this... Cha like, okay, we get it. You like the movies. That's fine. The movies are pretty good. Um, this does not change any argument about Rings of Power. You liking the movies and saying, oh yeah, Rings of Power looks good doesn't change the fact that to fucking everyone else, Rings of Power looks like dog shit. Even other channels uh, that often shill for, like, the next big thing to come out is not positive about this. Um, like, it is few and far between to find someone trying to defend this shit. Aside from articles, of course. Extend editions, physical copies of Lord of the Rings, and I have them for a reason. They are some of my favorite movies of all time. And I've talked to so many people that are not on YouTube that think the show looks phenomenal. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> Dump Seriously, the dumpster defenders case needs to come up soon. Yeah, Nick Riketa hasn't really been streaming on YouTube lately. I no, kinda... he got he got ya yeeted. Oh no, is he not on YouTube anymore? Uh, yeah, as far as I know, they've got him on a suspended account now. Oh shit. That's unfortunate. Yeah. So, he, that's why he warned people, he's like, hey, make sure you've got me on uh, Locals and everything like that. He's been going on a bunch of other channels, stuff like that. And they've been hosting him in, in, in his place. Hmm. Well, you have people parading and going around to this negativity just to get some views, just to talk about the travesty that is Lord. Just to get some views. How incredibly dismissive of you, jackass. Yeah, I, I hate this dismissive said, Look bullshit. how awful this is. Look how awful that scene you just showed was. Phenomenal. Well, you have all these people parading and going around to this negative. Well, there's a retard. Look at this. Just to get some views, just to talk about the travesty with a stick. that is Lord of the Rings. Look. I I really really can't stand this fucking dismissive bullshit. Oh, you're only doing it to get views. Like, sure, there are people on YouTube who do stuff purely for the views. We know these yep. people exist. They're the kinds of people who do fucking spirit box sessions with people who are missing to try and get clout from like, oh, oh, is this Gabby Petito's ghost? Are you responding to me? Like that kind of disgusting bullshit. The people complaining about the show have God, I, it is so frustrating to constantly see any valid criticism dismisses just chasing the views, chasing the algorithm, chasing, like, just attention-seeking or whatever. Stop, like, fuck! Yeah. Also, he shouldn't throw, you know, stones in glass houses because we could just turn it right back on him and be like, well, you're just making this video for views. You just want to get the woke crowd to side with you and give you a bump in views. It's all, that, like, I, I could easily just say that that's all the your video is, so... It, it doesn't matter, like... Your fucking statement of this is all it is is no more it, it, it's no more meaningful than if I were to say the same thing about you. Yeah. Stop repeating yourself should be on the new version of the bingo. It should. Um, mm. No joke, some of the costume and armor in the show straight up look like the costumes we used in my high school plays. They were that cheap. Yeah, that yeah. fucking wooden armor that the elves were wearing. Yes. Yeah, that looked awful. Oh, oh, and that's something I gotta fucking talk about. The translation to the family name. Mm. So, they they ask the sea captain, what's his family name? And, and he gives it to the queen, and the queen goes, 
do you know what it means? And he says, yes, the people who love the stars. She's like, that's not its only meaning, is it? And he's like, in the ancient tongue, it means elf friend. And are you? God. It's like, how? The elves in this show are obsessed with trees and ancestor trees and we have leaf armor and everything. They are so fucking, like, tree obsessed. It's insane. So how the fuck did it trans did the it originally mean elf friend and now it means those who love the stars? How did that happen? Like they aren't even remotely close. Yeah, they don't correlate at all. And then the fucking thing that comes later, and then it turns out, oh, the queen was right. It turns out yeah. names actually do have like underlying fucking meanings where it's like, oh, well, if your name is Elf Friend in the ancient tongue, then you actually are a friend to elves. Yeah. Wah, like, fucking, wah. Yeah, fucking what? Yeah, it's utter fucking lunacy. Oh, God. Such they made them that Fallout 3 faction that had twig robes. Yeah. The, uh, oh, God. The, fucking the tree minders. The tree yeah. minders. Oh, God. No. Stop. Stop! Stop! Uh, for anyone on the Discord server, by the way, that is a new emote uh, we've got on there. One of the Half-Life <laughs> 1 scientists with his mouth open, presumably streaming, and the emote is STOP! Yeah, he fucking... <laughs> Cree posted his thing today with the, um... I posted the thumbnail. the thumbnail of the pain, and I just sent that in response, and he was like, yep, that's, that's gonna be a new emote. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've been using that emote on my server for years. Oh. Not looking like a travesty. It looks like it's going to be the biggest television event of all time. <laughs> I mean, hold on. How does it feel I, now to know I, that? I mean, he's not wrong. It just, it's in the opposite direction of what he's saying it will be. No, 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 no. And it's not even that. People don't give a shit about this show. We found out the viewership numbers are actually really, <laughs> really bad. It's worse than House of the Dragon, which, yeah. uh, apparently House of the Dragon is doing pretty well. Yep. And keep in mind, it is, it is not a perfect sampling. Like, they don't literally know every single person on it. Yeah. But when you have, what is it, 1.5 million for... Amazon's Lord of the Rings, and then you have 3.8 million for House of the Dragon? Mm. <laughs> Especially for mm. something as big as Lord of the Rings. Only, like, one and a half million? That's a massive fucking oof. Yeah, it's something somewhere around there. God, yeah, and that's only for, like, the initial episodes. As it goes on, there's going to be even less and less viewers. Yeah. Especially if it continues on the quality it has now. Oh. Absolutely. It's getting so shit. God, yeah. If I was actually enjoying this show, I, I think episode three would be what it would make me go, ah, uh, never mind. I've lost all investment. All right. People yep. in chat are bringing up the starlight thing. Elves existed in Middle Earth before there was a sun. They, they lived under starlight, the fairest of light. Uh, to mm. be fair, if memory serves, there's a mention... Of one name for the elves, Eldar, meaning something like people of the stars, because the elves were the first people to see the stars or something. Oh. Mm. Yeah, but that's not established here in this show at all. Yeah. Like, yeah. at all. This, the show doesn't follow the book's lore, so that doesn't really matter. If it's not yeah, stated in the show, fact, it, it doesn't exist. In fact, the very first thing they do is they mention the tree, and she Gladriel goes and sits under the big tree, and the tree is all they know and everything, and it was because Morgoth burned their tree that they got pissy. They're like, Ree! He burned the tree! Like, it's going to be one of the most riveting pieces of fantasy ever brought to screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Holy shit, this video aged like goddamn milk. Yeah, it's it feels like he wants people to hate him. 
Jesus maybe, Christ. Maybe this is just another contrarian. Uh, everyone is saying X, so I'm going to say Y. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Especially funny in retrospect after seeing the first two episodes where nothing happens, and the third episode where nothing still happens, but far, far, far worse. If I'm proven otherwise, fine. That's okay. But I'm not going to spread negativity on the internet about a show that's not out yet that people have put a lot of time and energy and passion into. I don't give a shit how much time and energy oh and passion God. went into it. It's still bad. It's this argument yet again. People worked hard on this thing, so we're supposed to just be nice to it. People putting oh time God. and effort into something doesn't necessarily mean that thing will be good. Case in point, Rings of Power. Case in point, Vincent Martin's response video. Um, <laughs> spending time or putting effort into something is not a guarantee that thing will be good. And if something is dog shit, and especially if something is disrespectful of the source material, that should be called out. 100%. Yep. <sighs> Fucking, we're getting Neo-Jesus again. Oh, it's not quite that bad, but it's still pretty bad. I mean, he's using the same arguments now. <laughs> it's getting there. And if you people have no passion, you haven't actually seen behind the scenes of people working hard on this show. You don't know anything about what it's like creating movies and creating... I well, we've don't seen the... give a fuck. Yeah, we don't care and we've seen the show now and no, you're fucking wrong. They have no passion whatsoever. Alright, so... Yeah, this is pretty fucking soulless. If, if you're the kind of person who doesn't know anything about video game design, if you don't know anything about coding or... 3D models or uh, physics in a game engine or any of that kind of thing. Man, you have no right to talk about how bad Saints Row 2022 is. Um, no, that doesn't work that way. You don't need to know this shit. You don't need to know what kind of work went into it. If the fi it's It could be interesting to know, and if you're arguing against something, finding out the behind-the-scenes stuff could strengthen your arguments, or maybe change your perspective at least a little bit doesn't change the fact that the final product is still goddamn dog shit I feel like this is another argument that we're going to be dealing with a lot as time goes on oh you don't know the kind of effort that went into making this thing so stop being mean to it yeah and we all have the same response from don't give a fuck yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter how much effort went in. It's still dog shit. Billion dollar dog shit, mind you, but still dog shit. Television, hours, the crew, and, and teams put into it. 16, 17 hours a day for months on end, focusing on every little detail of the armor and location. Every little detail of the armor. Oh, um, yeah. The armor that is some of the worst armor I've ever seen in any fantasy schlock doesn't protect the arms, the legs, the head, nothing. It is fucking useless. What? What is this? What is the elven armor? What about the elven swords with the four-foot hilts and the, um, the, the sword guards that slope downward so the blade will slide... so the enemy's blade will slide off that sword and into you? Yeah, the, the fucking cross guard is is angled so it cross bounces guard. the sword into you, and then the the hand, the, the fucking grip itself is, it, it's like it's supposed to be a war sword in length, but they're not using war swords. I don't fucking. Get also, do we know that these people were working seventeen hours a day? No. Oh, so, almost seems like he's kind of making that up, especially without showing his source. I mean, if he has proof that they were working 17 hours a day, then okay, I guess he's right on that. But he's not showing the proof, so... And at this point, I don't trust this motherfucker to take his word at face value. Exactly. Also, the fucking Balrog.
I, I can't wait to see the Balrog awaken and murder Durin and his entire family. Oh, 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 and not give off any heat because in the presence of evil, fire gives off no uh, warmth. Fuck. Why would they yeah. write a line that fucking stupid? I don't Yeah, that get causes it. so much problems down the line. That is such a huge issue that they wrote themselves into. Why even add that fucking line? Oh. Also, maybe we shouldn't celebrate making your staff work 17 hours. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's maybe crushing I, isn't such a great idea. I work 12-hour days and let me fucking tell you, they can drag on like a bitch. They suck. Location, story, and acting, all of it takes a lot of time. Doesn't and to just matter. come out and just act like you know everything. And that it doesn't matter how much time it takes if the end product is dog shit. And guess what? The end product is a literal dog brownie smeared across the fucking lawn. Legitimately one of the worst pieces of entertainment media I've ever seen. Um, That's why I like how he's fucking saying, like, oh, acting like you know everything. Like, motherfucker. Just because everyone else has the common sense to see obvious dog shit when it's right in front of them and you can't doesn't mean that these people think they know everything. Yeah, also, and, and especially coming from a guy who doesn't even realize that the actors have fucking contracts and PR statements that they have to do in these interviews, you fucking noodle. Also, who is claiming they know everything? Point them out to me. Because what I've seen, at least from the people I watch, are people who like the movies or like the books or um, are big lore nerds. People like Nerd Roddick or Critical Drinker. Um, this is stuff they've been into for years upon years. In, in Nerd Roddick's case, decades. Literal decades. And he's not claiming to know everything. He isn't claiming... Um, he knows every single thing that happened on set or behind the scenes or anything like that. But from the knowledge he does have, uh, based on the promotional material, based on being so familiar with the series, he's been saying it looks like garbage for a long time. You've included a clip of him in this video saying as, uh, as much, pretty much. Like, no one is claiming they know everything. It's the same as the perfection claim. Point these people out to me. Point out who's saying they know everything. Point to me the people are demanding perfection because I don't fucking see them. Yeah, exactly. I may not be a world-class chef, but if I know that my fried chicken uh, has blood pouring out of it, I know that chef did a shit job. Yeah. Exactly. You don't have to know everything about creating a work to know whether or not you like it or if it's good. Yep. There is no amount of, like, behind-the-scenes footage of people working on a game or movie that will 180 my opinion from this thing is shit to this thing is actually really good. Like, I, I don't believe that can be done if it's something as bad as, like, Fallout 4. Because all the plot elements with Fallout 4 still exist in Fallout 4, regardless of what goes on behind the scenes. But then we find out what goes behind the, uh, goes on behind the scenes when ML does a stupid fucking speech and just shows what a shit show it is in Bethesda HQ. Mm. If anything, knowing what goes on behind the scenes makes it worse. If, if these people this guy is showing clips from... Um, uh, the one British guy, uh, Nerd Roddick, who else was he showing? I, I don't remember. Um, uh, Jeremy from the Quartering. Jeremy from the Quartering, right. If all these people got to see, like, behind-the-scenes footage of, you know, the writer's room as they were deciding what should happen where and uh, any references they were looking into for the books uh, or Tolkien's letters or whatever else, I'm sure these people would have far more ammunition to criticize the show with.
If anything, that makes me uh, that would make me more angry. Um, I assume you mean seeing the behind the scenes shit, because yeah. You know what Tolkien wanted, and exactly what Lord of the Rings needs without seeing the show is mind-boggling. Because Tolkien left a lot of information behind before he died that said yeah. what the series was supposed to be. What yeah. he did like and didn't like, the thoughts he had about aspects of the world that he created. And he left behind the Silmarillion. Like, the fucking Silmarillion is very important because it kind of fills in all the gaps. And it is unbelievably stupid. See, Annie just came running over because she knows how dumb that is. This is the kind of thing you cut from your video. Why do you have the door to your studio open when you're recording? So your dog can run in with their collar clinking about? And like, yeah. adding unnecessary noise to the soundtrack that's probably going to annoy some people. Some people who are probably already annoyed at how dog shit your video is. Bro, your dog is trying to tell you to stop. Yeah. And she just... But... I just am sick of it. I can't. I just keep seeing video after video filling my feed. Comment after comment on my videos. Of people saying how horrible this show looks. I'm done. I don't want to hear it anymore. It is ridiculous. No one cares that you don't want to hear it anymore. These people are not only justified in their criticism of the pre-release material... But now that it's out, at least part of it is out, they're completely fucking vindicated. 100%. Yep. Yep. And even before this came out, personally, I was saying, you know, there's a chance. There, there, There is a chance it could be good. Sure, it is 0.000001% chance. It's still a chance. I just had very low expectations based off of what we were shown. For good fucking reason. There's a history of stuff coming out that looks like... Our... Saints Row got the same treatment with its trailer. Because it was so fucking stupid. Uh, yeah. Dispro is the British critic of Rings of Power. He's pretty sarcastic about the whole thing. Oh, um, yeah, he's been on like Friday Night Tights and stuff. And uh, I think Critical Drinker's Open Bar... I didn't know that's uh, what he looks like. I, I usually listen to those things when I'm at work, so I don't actually get to see a lot of these people a lot of the time. At least as far as the guests are concerned. Uh, no Cree. It's 50-50. Either it will be or it won't. Yeah. God, yeah, I... <laughs> I tried to go into this like I went into this with super low expectations, but kind of hoping that it would it would miraculously actually be good. Yeah, I even I even kept trying to give it wins at certain parts where I was like, oh, well, that didn't sound too bad. And then and then I would come in as I found the b-ball cord, jump up in the air and slap that ball down. and be like, <laughs> No, no. Like, listen to what you just said. And then like, uh, fucking uh, it would come back like a second later where it would. Uh, fucking Reese show a section that happened earlier and then it, I would hear a little bit more or they would add more on to it just a few seconds later and just fucking ruin any good fucking will I tried to give it. It's just like, oh my god. I was literally trying to be nice and be like, oh, that, that was a decent scene. That wasn't too bad. And then like a second later, it's just like and no, that whole fucking scene is ruined because we're going to add this in that completely removes the context from that scene and just completely fucks it up. It's just like, oh my god. Fucking hell. It was possible that the show could have been good. It wasn't plausible that it would be good given all the trailers and interviews. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, side it's note. Advice, such, such is disease that cannot be helped. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's a callback. <laughs> um, 
Side note, Friday Night Tight's new theme song is fucking awesome. Yeah, the Dan Vask one, that's- it's a great song, I love it. Ridiculous. The show is not even out yet. We don't have much else other than the trailers, and- What? My dude, what that, the fuck do you think the trailers are supposed to be? Yeah, that, the trailers were more than enough for people to realize how shit this was going to be. And yeah, like Kree is, is saying right now, like, what, what do you think a trailer is supposed to do? It's supposed to tell you what you're going to be watching. It's supposed to tell you whether or not you're going to be interested in this show. It's supposed to entice you to watch. It's supposed to be, you know, the best foot sh uh, forward. We're going to show them. Uh, the best aspects of our show uh, or movie or whatever else video game uh, to get people to want to watch our thing or play our thing because that earns us money and all the uh, pre-release stuff has been dire all the trailers all the interviews and articles yeah not not very much not a good look yeah god don't forget their fucking uh uh, their fucking fan thing of like the fake fan shit. I, I don't remember what they called it. Oh, um, the um, the super fans. The super yeah, fans. the super fan shit. Oh my god, remember how awful that was? Holy fuck! You and, should have known just from that alone that this was gonna be shit. Yeah, all those fucking weirdos going on about how they can see themselves in Tolkien's work now, so they can like it finally. Yeah, yeah what a yeah. great super fan. Because. <sighs> I've I've always found that thing to be dumb. I don't need to see myself in a work to enjoy it. Yep. Yeah, I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> I don't need to see myself in something else for me to relate to it or enjoy it. It's oh, that's so fucking narcissistic and just yeah, it's insanity. Fucking entitled. Yeah, it's really bad. It, it's because they're sociopaths. Yeah. Trailers are made to be judged. It being judged badly just means they messed up at showing off their story, or they just didn't have anything good to show. But yeah, the point of trailers is to be judged. I I am going to make this trailer so the audience can judge whether or not they want my thing, my movie, my video game, my TV show. And the more people who are on board with it, the better. There is no negative outcome for more and more and more people, as many people as possible, liking my thing. No, oh, please. We all know you only watch movies with owls. That's completely untrue. I watched Predator the other day with such a pagan. There's no owls in that. Oh, rest in peace, Such. We hardly knew ye. Oh. I can't well, believe I think you fucking died. Yeah, no, I accidentally clicked on the hang up button because I was seeing what somebody posted and down in the bottom corner, whatever for whatever fucking reason, in the center of Discord screen, there was the button there where I clicked and I was like, what the fuck? And it just boop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? But it's like the button followed me. I can't see myself at Sonic the Hedgehog. It's so negative. Yeah, it, it's always been a bizarre argument to me. I... I clicked on the Discord, I immediately saw that fucking picture of the stupid warg again, and I had to click off of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It's... Again, they're, they're... You know, we haven't seen any dragons in this, so, you know, I'm, I'm immediately not interested. I yeah, can't you, like that. Yeah, but you're not actually a dragon. Yes, I am! Cree! Re! Re! I'm not a lizard! <laughs> How dare you not acknowledge his other kin status, you <laughs> bigot! Oh god, other kins are so fucking weird. <laughs> I, I still other ki other kins are so weird. I still can't believe that's a thing. Let's ignore it and move on. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost done. Well, statements are contradicting because they're getting yelled at by fans, and they're trying to find ways to tiptoe around things. <laughs> I have to ask if that was deliberate. <laughs> Holy shit. The, the the legally distinct hobbits are sadly hugging each other while he's saying, oh, the actors are being yelled at. Yep. 
I don't think anyone was yelling at the actors, at least not that I've seen, until the actors started coming out and saying shit that's like, again, yeah. politically motivated, agenda motivated. Most so people... So they open their oh. mouths. Okay, here's another example. Bebop Flex, because it is such a great example of absolute dog shit. People, when they saw, like, the previews of that were critical, that Faye's costume was wrong. Faye's costume was wrong. And then the actress comes out and throws her little fucking bitch fit video, like, talking shit about the fans, because... I don't even know why she did that. But the point is, she went and attacked the fans, which, by the way, don't fucking attack the fans ever. Um, well, I shouldn't say ever. There, there's, If you're a med like a big media thing, don't attack the fans. Because um, it's, it's just a bad look all the time. If you're a YouTuber and there's someone that's like genuinely hassling you and giving you shit, then yeah, you can, you can tell them to fuck off. But don't, like attack your fan base. And that's mm. the important thing. Don't attack your fan base. And she attacked the fan base because they were critical of her costume and she took that as a personal offense that, oh, they're criticizing me for how I look. No. No one gives a shit how you look. Well, some people do. <laughs> it's the costume that was the issue. And rather than understanding yeah. that, you took it personally and fucking made things worse for your own show. So congratulations. Biting the hand that feeds you is such a stupid marketing strategy. Yeah, exactly. Well, pitchforks. Yeah, of course they're tiptoeing around things. Because crazy people on the internet are yelling and screaming before the show even comes out. Are people on the, Crazy people on the internet are yelling and screaming before the show even comes out. So, let's take a hypothetical. Someone makes a video about the trailer before the show came out, and they're critical. This looks bad, that looks bad, this doesn't align with Tolkien's work. Um, but they're not directing it at, like, towards the actors. They're not sending it towards the actors. Is that a problem? Because, judging based on the rest of this video, that's kind of what it sounds like. Um, I can't speak for any of the other videos because I haven't watched them, but the Nerdrotic one, which I also haven't watched, by the way, he mentioned he was reading an article three paragraphs in, and they haven't uh, said something about the fans. There's something that the article is trying to justify. Oh, that the fans were fine with this, I think. And three paragraphs in, and the article hadn't justified that. Doesn't seem like it's going after the actors to me. So it's just the fact that people are critical about material that's meant to promote the show and does not look good, resulting in justified criticism. Yeah. Are you angry? Are you that upset that you're getting a Lord of the Rings television show? Even if 1% of it is good, you're getting more Lord of the Rings. Oh, uh, don't use this fucking argument, you it's degenerate off. fucking cunt. Oh, you're getting more of the thing. You should be happy. No, fuck off. More doesn't equal good. You absolute fucking tool. Yep. Yeah, I'd rather get nothing at all than get shit. Genuinely. No, yeah. Fallout would be better off without Fallout 3 and 4. Uh, Halo would be better off without, from what I've heard, Halo 4, 5, Infinite, and the TV show. Lord of the Rings would be better off without the shitty Hobbit movie. If they'd done a good Hobbit movie, that would be different. Um, and Lord of the Rings would absolutely be better off without Rings of Power. Uh, Saints Row would be better off without Saints Row 2022. Star Trek would be better off without the JJ films and discovering Star Trek Picard. And Star Trek fucking Upper Decker. Like, I, I just... I, I've... I don't get why people use these stupid fucking arguments. There's more, you should be happy. Who cares about the quality? Who cares if even only 1% of it is good? You're getting more. I don't want more for the sake of more. I want more that is well made, that is good. That respects the work, that puts in the effort to make something fucking at least half decent. 
if the if the Lord of the if Rings of Power was mediocre, that would still not be great, but that would at least be better than what we've got. Who cares about constant dilution, Lamau? Yeah, exactly. And here's part of the reason why I hate this. Oh, uh, you're getting more. You should be happy because of the dilution thing. Because of shit like Fallout 3, 4, and 76, we have people who now believe that this is what Fallout is, or this is what Fallout is now, and it's not going to change. And all you people who like the original games, who like the complexity, who like the uh, the, the characters and choices and well-written stories, this isn't your space anymore. This isn't for you anymore. And we see this kind of shit time and time and time and time of fucking again. It is so goddamn tiring. Fuck off. Mm. Kratosis, thank you for acknowledging how great Halo Reach is. Such never provides his reason for disliking it. Halo would be better off without Halo Reach. Thank you. Halo would be better off if Fall of Reach was canonized. Yes! Which it was originally. There's a reason that Fall of Reach, the book, came out before the fucking game. Yeah, to set up where the game, like, the, the backstory to the game. Yeah. Wait, does such like uh, dislike uh, Halo Reach? Why? Well, we'll get in there. There, there the is a super chat coming. or two. Yeah. And we are close to being done with this video. Yeah, oh, come on. Let's Even go. though this video is getting worse and worse by the fucking minute. You're getting Mythos in Second Age. Who cares? Mythos, uh, mythos of the Second Age, who cares? The Mythos doesn't matter if it's poorly We've... written. How do you not understand this? Yeah, we have Mythos of the Second Age. The Silmarillion, you fucking idiot. I am so glad that Fallout 4 added the amazing Mythos to the ghouls that they don't need to eat or drink. Even though that fucking ruins a major choice in the original game. Who cares? You're getting more Mythos. <laughs> ATST, ATST, I'm gonna come! <laughs> that, that's almost what it comes across as. Oh, man. Pairs are percent of it is good. If it's bad, nobody's going to watch it. It's going to bomb. The world moves on. That's that's <laughs> not how it works. Not you, not you, though. Not you, though. Fallout 3 and 4 were fucking dog shit, and people still defend those games to the fucking death. Um, Yeah, Rings of Power is bullshit, but oh, what's this? Oh, ignore the hate. Ignore the hate. I, I do genuinely wonder what's in that video. It's probably just more fucking defense of the, the show. Because why would you say ignore the hate if you're going to be negative about it? You're just trying to get clicks. You're just trying to do all this and that to get the, the negative press and to stir up a movement. No. Oh, my God. To stir up a movement. They don't need to stir up the fucking movement. The movement existed the moment the trailer came out. You realize people realized how shit it was going to be. You realize when it comes to shit like this, it's legitimately extremely fucking difficult to just start a movement out of thin air. It, yeah. it has to be people coming together and genuinely disliking a piece of dog shit. Like, why do you think Backlash Against the Last Jedi was so harsh? Was it just people trying to stir up drama for clicks, trying to stir up a... Be no, it's because the movie was fucking shit. And people saw that it was shit and were frustrated by it. Frustrated by Luke Skywalker being a fucking character assassinated to hell and back. And, and then dying like a bitch. And then all the merry fucking sewery from uh, Ray Palpatine. Like, yeah, people... The reason it received so much backlash was because a lot of people saw the same problems and complained about it. The same thing is happening with Rings of Power. This isn't people just stirring up pointless drama or complaining for no other reason than they get clicks. They're complaining because this is a shit that bugs them. This is a shit they would be complaining to themselves with their friends when they're playing fucking Xbox Live or sitting around a, a, a Dungeons and Dragons game or fucking whatever. They're talking to their friends and this is the shit they would be complaining about. You know how I know? Because this is the kind of shit I did before I had a YouTube channel. I would talk to Pagan, hey, 
this shit in Fallout 4 is pissing me off so much. It's so fucking stupid. I would talk to other friends. Oh, this shit in Oblivion is bugging me. This shit in Skyrim is bugging me. This... The idea... The, the dismissive fucking idea that people are only doing this because they... Be, for disingenuous reasons is, is fucking infuriating. Yep. Whatever happened to, if we ain't gonna do it right, we won't do it at all. I don't know, but that, that belief needs to come back. That dude is basically saying just consume and don't think about it? Yeah. Your opinions don't matter. The average public does not truly believe that. <laughs> I doubt oh, it. Oh, boy. That did not age well at all. Cause, no, uh, that that, aged ter that applies more to you, my friend. <laughs> Your opinions do not matter. The public does not agree with you. Oh, my fucking mother and God. Hang on. Is it the thing Tentacle Dude did? Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, Tentacle Dude has gone and turned Setch into a, um, a Warhammer Lizard I'm, Man. I'm a Mexican bandito. No, Warhammer Lizard Man. You saw the video last week. No, 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 no. This is clearly a Mexican bandito. I have a, I have a revolver. And I said a Reba. And I have talk. Look, based on the video we watched, we watched last week... Of the extremely intelligent person who totally knows uh, Warhammer very well, this is a <laughs> lizard man from um, from Lizard Man Land, from Warhammer. Oh God! I like how I have like the Luigi mustache as well. <laughs> <laughs> this video might as well have been a self diss. Yeah. Bandito. We might not get to the Harfoot thing within this video, so we'll talk about it after. Because for yeah. anyone who doesn't know, holy shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I am I am struggling to hold it in so we, bad. We are almost done. We're probably going to get some self-shilling and it be over with. The public is excited for this show. The <laughs> common lord... Hold on! The average public... <laughs> the public is excited for the show? You have it in your thumbnail! There's These trailers have got to 20 million downvotes. Those don't happen because of a select few YouTubers who... Yeah. <laughs> How do you get this fucking wrong? Holy shit. <laughs> what fucking fairy tale universe do you live in? A video doesn't get 20 million dislikes for no reason. A small group of angry fans who are only making videos for the clicks, for the drama, aren't going to fucking get 20 million dislikes on a video. These are people who, they do have successful streams and videos and so on, but they still don't get millions of luck, uh, upvotes on their own videos. Let alone getting that many dislikes on someone else's. Yeah. Holy fucking god. This... This is what a self-awareness -aware level zero is like. My mm -hmm. god. The dislikes are just Russian bots, Kree. They can't keep getting away with it. Yeah, if something is happening that you don't like towards the franchise you do, it's just the bots doing it. It's just the bots are giving bad reviews to that thing. Because that's the only reason anyone would ever have to be negative towards something. Lord of the Ring is excited for this show. It's the cultist uh, Tolkien people that are just so hyper-obsessed with Lord of the Rings that are nitpicking every little thing. Oh boy, we uh... got the nitpicking. Yeah, also, I love that he called them a cultist. Uh, what's the name of this channel again? Yeah. <laughs> Cult Leader Z. Mm-hmm. Right, but it's the people who are fans of Tolkien who are cult. Like, I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, definitely not projection. I wonder if nitpicking should be the, um... 
the new free space on the new bingo card instead of Cree such pause war. Because it is <laughs> that that common of a uh of a fucking thing with these videos. Maybe. Cause like it it's quite often the default go to defense for any criticism. Remember, nitpick means um and a criticism of something inconsequential, pretty much. So, yeah, it's a casual conversation at a dinner table, and the level of water in a glass changes, and that glass doesn't go on to do anything like... It's not used in science to kill an alien. It's just a glass of water on a table. So, the level of the water being inconsistent, well, that's a flaw. But it's such an insignificant flaw that it doesn't change anything. That is a nitpick. Something like Megaton not having a goddamn food source in Fallout 3 is not a nitpick. Something like uh, Doctor Strange doing even a quarter of the dumb shit he does in Multiverse of Madness is not a nitpick. People pointing out these problems with Rings of Power and the pre-release material, those aren't nitpicks. Those are, some th those are things that appear to be contradictive to the world Tolkien built. You know, like the fucking fact that black elves and uh, dwarves and hobbits by default imply a fucking race war somewhere in the timeline. You know, when Lord of the Rings movies came out, People were angry about that too because Peter Jackson was changing things. And it wasn't until. Where? There were some things. Um, apparently, I know, but. Apparently, to this level? Not to this no. level, no. Um, apparently, Arwen was supposed to be at Helm's Deep, and that's something they changed because. Uh, well, the elves weren't supposed to be at Helm's Deep. That's one of the changes that annoys me. Yeah. Like, because it kind of undermines the whole thing of man proving that it can stand on its own two feet if, you know, if you the have elves are gone. 300 elves that show up yeah. to do it for them. It's like, hmm. It, it is a bit of a mixed bag, because I could see that criticism, but I also like the idea that the elves are like, we are here to help you. Or, like, it, it's a yeah. sign of friendship between them. In ages past, we fought as one. Let us do so again. Yeah. yeah. I know that's not the direct quote, I'm paraphrasing everybody. But it is convenient that all the people that make it into the Hornburg, all those elves, magically disappear! Rip. You see, because the extras were obviously told, you know, get inside, get inside, and you, you know, run, escape into the Hornburg. So all the elves, you see all these elven archers run inside the, the main keep, and then they're just gone and don't exist anymore? <laughs> My theory is the elves were used as the barricade. <laughs> I I just imagine them stacking living elves against the door like cords of wood. Yeah. Well, I love I love it gets so desperate when you get five people in a room and they're trying to they're trying to stick wooden benches up against the door. <laughs> oh, Mars Ninja pointed out something in chat. It's the everyone hated Empire when it came out argument again. Yeah. Which is like one of the dumbest arguments people could fucking make. Holy shit. That... Seeing Disney shills and fanboys use that argument just shows how fucking desperate they are. the movie and especially until the director's cuts came out that people realize how masterful they were but leading up people realize why do you think so many people were on board with how great those movies were from the very fucking outset of them being released yeah. like it wasn't until the extended editions came out that people realized they are masterful it's that you could only put a movie so long into theaters because very few people are going to sit down for three and a half hours to watch a movie. In a theater, in, where in they can't theater. pause it. Where, they, where if they take a piss break, they're going to miss something. Yeah. Trust me. It's reason, one of the reasons I stopped watching movies in theaters. Okay? Because uh, my bladder and having irritable bowel syndrome will pick the perfect time to say, go fuck yourself. 
while I'm watching a movie. I kind of need the ability to pause and shit. Yeah. Um, even when I was a kid, uh, I remember these movies being a huge hit with people. Um, my mom and grandmother, huge Tolkien fans. They read the books numerous times each. They were Fair crazy back. about the movies. Speak of the devil, I. Eh? <laughs> um, yeah, they they were huge fans of the movies too when they came out because they had been so familiar with the works. <sighs> I just I'm I'm so sick of these dog shit arguments. Having an empty bottle in a cinema is pretty frowned upon. <laughs> yeah, I fucking wonder why. No, Empire was an instant hit. Yeah, people loved Empire. No, Empire was universally loved, but it did take a while for people to prefer it over Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I could see how that might be the case. Help, Setch is drowned in his own piss. We hardly knew ye. Rest in peace, Setch. It's not only dumb Kratosis, it's historical revisionism. Yeah. Bro, the world stopped when Vader was announced to be Luke's father. Yeah, that was like one of the big, like... One of the earliest big examples of a big spoiler for a movie. I had precisely two issues with the trilogy. No scouring of the Shire. I understand that change. The way they handled Faramir's encounter with uh, Frodo. This one still bugs me. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, having gone through the books recently and having watched uh, Two Towers somewhat recently, I do see why people would find that to be an issue. Um, I do feel it was handled better in the book, and I'm not sure why they made that change. Besides, he used the set for Osgiliath more than once. God, this video is almost over. I can't wait for it to be over. It's so bad. Yeah, I am so sick of fucking watching this dude. Yeah, so am I. Um... So, uh, Alvent, Al Alenchi, of Alenchi, not sure how to pronounce that. There's O two V's and an L E. Um, sent me a picture, but it's a really small picture, so I can't tell what. Oh, okay. When I leaned in, I I saw the issue, but it's such a small picture that it's hard to tell at first. Um. It's a crowd of people, and it looks like some of the characters are being reused in the scene. Which can happen from time to time. It's just this doesn't look like a particularly good example. I assume that's what it is. If I'm wrong, um, I'm going to say Avalanche. No, there's no N in there until the end. Avalechny. Um, yeah, if I'm wrong about that, let me know. <laughs> okay, I'll show that one after, Pagan. <laughs> um, right. Image. Alright, I mean... So I'm not sure where this is from, but, um... If you look at the circled people... You can see them sort of repeating in the crowd a few times, I believe. That's kind of what it looks like.
But I'm not exactly sure because the image is so small and blurry. Oh, apparently he sent a better one. Nope, that's still... Oh wait, that's just the same one. I just thought he sent it again. Rip, my bad. Mm, yep. Um, And now for the one Pagan sent, which... God, I hate this ward so much. It is so... So terrible looking. Oh no, Varg is coming to kill us. Aw, it's retarded. <laughs> it, it is so stupid looking. Um, yeah. Anyways. Well, let's get to the end of this video so we can talk about the Harfoot. Yes. And then do the it. He was angry. Peter Jackson was going to change this. He was going to change that. But he changed things in a way that made for great freaking movies. Phenomenal movies. Except for the things that he decided not to change after fans were like, that's fucking dumb. And there's still fans that complain about some of the changes. Case in point, Scouring of the Shire and the change with Faramir. Yeah, and I... I can understand why the change was made, but I don't, I don't like the elves being in Helm's Deep. I still don't like the elves being in Helm's Deep. I guess it's a nice callback to their history and everything like that. I just don't like it. I, I prefer the humanity proving it can stand against its own, especially against this entirely new threat, the uruk <laughs> This fucking cat, man. I am back. Sorry about that. Where's the sound? They were being quiet while I was go checking on the cat because the cat was meowing like crazy. And it was the wrong cat. Huh. Right. Some of the of all time. Hold your damn judgment until the show comes out. You're gonna watch it anyway. You're sitting there yelling, screaming about, oh, how evil, I hope it bombs, but you're still gonna tune in and watch it so you can get clicks online. You're, you're still- <laughs> Man, that aged poorly, did God, it's just such bad faith dog shit from this guy. Um, some people are tuning in to criticize it like we are, so other people don't have to watch it because it's an interesting subject to talk about how badly they are ruining this thing, how they're shitting over Tolkien's works. Like, why the fuck do you think people are critical of things, you weirdo? Like, oh man, all those people who hate Star Wars, they're, they just, they, they, they're just watching it for the sake of hating on it and making videos for clicks. D did you ever consider that the people who hated the Disney movies were fans of Star Wars? And they were frustrated by what was done to Star Wars. So they decided to talk about the problems with Star Wars with other people who had problems with Star Wars. And a lot of other people who had these same problems fucking watched those videos because, hey, this person is talking about the thing that's frustrating me. D did you ever take a moment to consider that? No, of course you didn't because you're a fucking idiot. Mm. Looks about as smart as Hassan Piker. Yeah. Still going on your money as you're yelling and screaming, being miserable. Ah. This is all about the money. There's, there's no other reason possibly for it. Um, sure, some people make careers off of being a critic. They talk about 
uh, why this movie isn't good, or that movie isn't good, or this movie is good, or whatever else. Because you notice a lot of these people talk about the things they like as well. Critical Drinker has videos talking about how um, different movies he likes that he thinks are good. That's the Drinker Recommends series. Uh, EFAP will occasionally cover something they like, uh, such as um, Arcane, which they did three episodes of their stream to get through. Or uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once, which is a fantastic fucking movie. Yep. Um, Nerd Roddick in Ads from Heel vs. Babyface do a show called uh, The Real BBC, which Mahler and Nina Affinity are now guests on, where they quite often talk about the things they like as well as the things they have issues with. Um, it started off as a show for as a nerd Roddick to uh, bag and board their comics, BBC, bagging, boarding comics, um, and they would uh, talk about them, and early on they were, I, I maybe shouldn't say early on, I don't know how long the show had been running when I started watching it, but between each week they would uh, read a comic and they'd be like, okay viewers, this is your homework for this week, you need to read this comic because we'll be discussing it very thoroughly next week, and they had been doing that for a while. Um, as also had his miniseries reviewing Squid Game, yeah. It's not that these people are trying to monetize hate or negativity, it's that a lot of the things they're interested in, a lot of, th a lot of the things we're interested in, are turning into dog shit, and it's frustrating us, so we're talking about it with people who are interested in those things. Yep. And clearly people care if these YouTubers are getting so many views, if they have such a big audience. Why being miserable? And why don't you be excited for a new television show that other people are excited about? Just pretend it's what you wanted and see how you feel. <laughs> I hate these fucking positive. So we finally got positivity there. Positivity, shitheads. Yeah, stop being negative, just enjoy it, forehead. Lower your standards to the bars below the fucking earth so you'll enjoy this dog shit. Let people be excited for the show. I don't care. I think the show looks... You clearly care. You wouldn't have made a fucking 15-minute video talking about how you don't want to hear these complaints anymore. Yep. And why don't you be excited for a new television show that other people are excited about? Let other people be excited for the show. I don't care. I think the show looks great. It looks phenomenal. I think it looks like what we've been wanting from a Lord of the Rings television show. No. Because you have no standards and you're easy to please. Yeah, maybe for someone with no standards, this is what you wanted from a Lord of the Rings TV show. Most people would have preferred something far better to what we got. Yeah. Who's the we in this case? Uh, him and his dog, I guess. Him and his yep. multiple it clown figures. Yeah. Him Funko and his Funko Pops. Pops. Oh, Funko Pops. You know what? At least he doesn't have a fucking entire wall covered in Funko Pops. At least he's only got the three, Shelf. four, five. Five of them. Uh, the one yeah, in the, I see him. The, the fifth one, just in case anyone is missing, is the uh, the plant one there. That is, um, what's it, Sydney or Aubrey from Little Shop of Horrors? Yep. Um... I'm a green, green the thing only, from outer space. The only reason I know that that's even a Funko Pop is because my brother has that one. And he's even said, I fucking hate those things, but that one I got because I had to get it. So that that's how I know what that one is. My brother has it. <laughs> and that one I'm not even going to fault him for because that one doesn't look like the typical Funko Pop, which just looks like... How did... Genuine question. How did Funko Pops become a fucking thing? They're so fucking unappealing looking. They're these big, dumb, blocky heads with. It's like, all these weird collectible things become a thing. Like, it just. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's like how Beanie Babies and Thai. Thai Bears? What, Beanie, what was it? Beanie Babies or whatever? Became a thing. It's just like. Eh. 
Oh no, Cree. He could have them in the other wall where the camera is set up. Please no. <laughs> I like how I'm asking about how Funko Pops become a thing, and then Speedy Acorn just says, God has a sick sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Cree, it's okay to admit you love Funkos. I fucking don't. I hate them so fucking much. I do too. I hate Funko Pops as well. I'm proven otherwise, yell at me in the comments after it comes out, and I'll happily admit defeat. Until then... <laughs> oh, oh boy. Uh, there. Ignore the hate! Ignore the hate! Ree! God, he really thought he was gonna get a gotcha with that one. Yeah. Oh, God. It's great. And stop hating on people that just are excited to see a TV show. Who the fuck is hating on people for that are excited for this show? I mean, we're hating on you for being an insufferable fucking idiot, but that's not because you're excited for the show. That's because you're dumb. They aren't related as much as you might like to think they are. You're just an idiot. Kretosis. Well, time for me to dip out, lol. I hope the rest of the stream goes well, guys. Uh, great stream as always, Kree. See ya, guys. Have a good one, man. Um, we are actually almost done anyways. There's like 30 seconds left of this video, and then we're going to uh, talk about the Harfoots, read the Super Chats, and then we're done. <laughs> it's me. I'm hating on them. They should stop being dumb. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's just try to get to this. Come on, come on. Yeah. I want to get to the super chats and everything. So do I. Based on one of their favorite worlds in movie history. How is it ruining Tolkien's legacy when it? How is it ruining? Because the shit's all over it, you idiot. Because it goes against it, and this is the kind of thing that will be used in the future to excuse more and more changes and turn it into something else. This is how. Fallout became a crazy, wacky, gonzo world. Uh, this is how Saints Row turned from a game about, you know, just simple gang violence and some uh, cheeky jokes here and there to it's all wacky and weird. Like, this is the erosion of fucking quality and standards. You're still seeing this shit with even stuff like Star Wars where, oh, well, a stormtrooper bumped his head in 1977, so Star Wars has always been silly, so it's fine to just put any number of stupid, silly fucking bullshit into the new Star Wars stuff. That's what's going to happen with this show. Oh, there is a scene in uh, Rings of Power where the fat hobbit girl is doing an embarrassing fucking distraction. The stupid, dumb, fu uh, fucking cringe scene. So it's going to be fine for future Lord of the Rings works. Fuck off. It's just it forward and keeping the relevancy of Lord of the Rings alive. D drawing people to the original works and making them realize, oh, there's movies too. How many people who don't have... know that the Lord of the Rings are that there are Lord of the Rings movies? How many people who have played Fallout three and four and seventy six have gone back to play Fallout one and two or even New Vegas? I'm going to guess it's a very small amount. There's definitely some. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the majority. <laughs> extending the legacy it's me it's not extending no, it isn't. the legacy it's, it's damaging oh. the legacy yeah oh my it's god it's taking a big old turd and wiping it across all of his work god this guy's a fucking idiot yep. pagan that is rude how how dare you insult this fine gentleman who has said nothing <sighs> stupid this entire video <laughs> Hey, at least I haven't told him to, you know. Yeah. Commit self don't self delete yet. Yeah. No, he hasn't quite earned one of those yet, but it's still really yeah, fucking no. dog shit. Yep. Making it 
Tolkien is a name that you remember because in a world where names are always forgotten, this TV show is helping to ensure that Tolkien and all this drama will be remembered. No. No, it the won't. Fuck? The Lord of the Rings is a beloved series, both the book and the movies, for fucking decades. Why do you think the movies made in the year 2000 were so fucking popular, like, 50 years after the books were released? Yep. The fuck? What are you talking... Like, clueless idiot speaks out his ass. News at 11. How many people still reference Lord of the Rings as being such a great series, like even two or three years ago, before all this Rings of Power bullshit? I know I did. I know I did. Like, I, I would have to go through the different movies that I, I really like to find, like, take a full list of them to find out which ones I would consider the best. If the Lord of the Rings trilogy is its number one, it's in the top fucking five easily. <laughs> Rings of Power is the black face of Lord of the Rings. Holy shit. <laughs> accurate. Very accurate. Uh, video around. Make sure people know that not everybody nope. is angry about this show. It looks good. Stop. No, it doesn't. Just stop. stop it. No it does not look good. It stop. looks good. Let's just be excited. Be just be excited. No. Don't think just about it. Excited. Just be excited. No How critical thinking. How fucking pathetic are you? Look at the jangling keys. Look at hey. the jangling keys. Hey, you you remember that Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episode where the zombies are rising and they're looking for brains, and they grab Homer, and they, like, knock on his head to find out it's hollow. Homer tries to sacrifice himself to save his family, and his zombies angrily push him away and go, Brains! Brains! <laughs> <laughs> That's this guy. The zombies would take Homer over this guy. <laughs> you've, you've got two cents into your Amazon wallet. <laughs> <laughs> optimistic can't we just do that can't we just be pessimistically optimistic what that's the fuck does that mean first of all it's pessimistic not pessimistic you fucking idiot secondly that's an oxymoron you can't be pessimistically optimistic that's fucking neutral that's saying like <sighs> and guess what people actually neutrally watch these trailers, realized they were shit, and voted for it, and said, it's fucking shit. You're in the weirdo minority. You're in the, you're the fucking contrarian. Just don't worry, don't worry though. You just get excited. Watch new episode be excited and get ready for next episode that's all you gotta do because you don't think an oxymoron from a real moron fucking yep. nailed it absolutely consume <laughs> leader z yep you things a little hesitant and still be optimistic and hope and believe that maybe the show will be good no Okay, look. No, because I... we used our eyes and we saw the trailer. You clearly didn't. I hoped the Halo show would be good, but I didn't have optimism that it would be good. I didn't think by any means that it would be good. I was hoping Rings of Power wouldn't be dog shit. But realistically, there's, I've said numerous times, almost a 0% chance that it like wouldn't be dog shit. <sighs> And yeah, this is just stop complaining about the thing before it comes out, even though all those criticisms were valid. Yep, everybody that was complaining about it has been vindicated. Um, he's Pete Consumer with those Funko Pops in the background. Well, at least he doesn't have a promotional Black Widow uh, popcorn bucket. <laughs> yeah. That is one point I can give him. Um... 
yeah, absolutely. You, you gain a point by not having a promotional Black Widow popcorn bucket in your background. Oh, wait. Okay, that's like a coffee cup or something next to Audrey. Or uh, whatever the plant thing is. For a second, I thought <laughs> that was a popcorn bucket and I jinxed it. <laughs> I believe it's going to be good. And I'm not just going to cause a shit show on the internet. Just because, oh my god, they changed all blah. Stop it. Stop it. No. Over it. Nobody cares. Nobody. Lots of people Clearly care. they do. Yeah, clearly they fucking care. Okay, you want... And so do you, because you're still making videos on it. You want to know a good barometer for how people care? So, someone, like Nerdrotic or Critical Drinker or whoever else, make a video, or Disbrew, make a video talking about, you know, here's the things they've changed, here's why this doesn't work, whatever, blah 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 blah. And then those videos get hundreds of thousands of views. That would imply, and lots of upvotes too, and positive comments towards the video maker, that would imply that a lot of people care. That thousands of people care. I want to say hundreds of thousands, because some of them might do repeat viewing, something like that. There's ways to inflate the numbers, and not everybody that clicks on the video is going to agree with it. Yeah. But it implies, with that many views, there are thousands of people that give a shit. Yeah. Well, these are channels that have... Hundreds of thousands of subscribers and uh, even millions and, and million in the case of uh, Critical Drinker, where clearly enough people agree with a lot of the things he says that they follow them. Doesn't necessarily mean they agree with every single thing they say, but clearly these people are on to something. <laughs> They're doing something right. Yeah. When did this guy, Weirdo, post this video? Um, I believe it was like August 4th. Let me check quickly. August 3rd, 2022. Why? I'm just curious on his view, how many people viewed his video. 2081. Uh, 113 upvotes, 260 downvotes. Oh, wow. Look, more people gave a shit <laughs> than, than cared about what you had to say. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Not even that, but I'm, I'm like looking at his channel, man. He is all over the place. He's chased every trend I've seen. Like, holy fuck. Has he really? Yeah, he's like, these are reaction videos all over the place. Yeah, his reaction videos get like 1.8k. Oh my god, his reaction video to House of the Dragon got more than any of his Lord of the Rings ones. <laughs> oh, there it is. Stopping bitter one. Fucking nobody like you're in a small little minority. <laughs> Are you looking in the mirror right now? I think he sees his reflection in the camera, uh, the lens of his camera. Yeah, and he had a brief momentary awareness that he realized that he's a contrarian and in the small, tiny minority. <laughs> How's it feel to be a loser? Everybody excited. I'm part of that group. No, my name everybody is, is not no, you're excited. Not. Subscribe to the page. How, how can you fucking unironically say that everyone is excited when literally in your fucking thumbnail you're showing... A dislike counter in the 20 millions from yep. one of the promotional videos. That... Edward Cuddy's <laughs> excited. That... No, clearly the vast majority aren't. That would very much imply that uh, people are not... Not only is not everyone excited, but a very significant of people are specifically not excited. Are specifically looking upon this thing very poorly. Not, like... Look. Like, it is hard to get people to like or dislike a video, typically. Um, even if you dislike something, you're more likely to click off of it rather than hit dislike and leave. And this video that he took this from still got 20 million downvotes. Didn't one of them get like a, a hundred million downvotes or something? Yeah, and they started rewinding the number of downvotes. Yeah. Amazon paid YouTube to start rolling back the downvotes.
beat that bloody pulp. If you truly want to make one of those Tolkien fanboys cry, subscribe to the page and like the video. Prove that you're <laughs> in the, the army of people that truly do think that the show looks great. Boy, what you didn't pathetic, get anything from this, did you? What a pathetic way to end the video. Holy shit. <laughs> if you're one of those, if you want to make the fanboys cry, subscribe to me. How well did that work out for you? Not very oh, well, judging. Yeah. Oh, fuck off. Holy shit. I am glad that is over. Um... But there is one slight little topic to cover, please, quickly. Yeah. Um, the, the amazingly well thought out culture of the Harfoots, the uh, <clears throat> legally distinct I, hobbits, the, the people the who dirty. care so much about their own kind, they would do anything to save their own people. And, the and would dirty never. The swamp Irish gypsy thieves that are the Harfoots. I, I still find it fucking hilarious in the first episode. There's those two guys walking by with the moose antlers on their thing. And then one of the Harfoots just pops out of the ground with, like, weed on his head. He's, like, got this derp fucking smile on his face. Like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> We're in the clear. Everybody come out of your hidey holes. Um, and, it's, again, like I said, it's obvious that they steal everything. They, they don't make anything themselves. Um, or at least, they steal a lot of things. Hold they on. could make some things. I, I, I need to grab a comment here. I inhaled a piece of Big Mac. It can't stop coughing. Have I become Acer Thorn? No, because Acer Thorn didn't cough on the fly he inhaled. Yeah. <laughs> you have not uh. reached its level yet, Tatters. Yeah. <laughs> Your and training then, is not yet complete. Yeah, so again, we know they steal all their metal items because they, they don't have forges or anything like that. They don't, they don't they mine or do anything. Yeah, they certainly don't have mines. Jesus Christ. Yeah. They they steal people's food. Apparently they steal from farmers in the local area. Um, that's what it looks like. Uh, yeah, and then... And then... They talk about... In their harvest thing about... Mm. Nobody leaves the path. Nobody walks alone. Nobody leaves the path. Nobody walks alone. And then after they get their feel, their fill of stealing everything, and they're fat and lazy. Now we have here the big books of the left behinds. We wait for you. And they go through in detail in this book about how they don't wait for people and they leave them to die. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember if it was an example we made up or not, but one of them got stuck in a uh, crevice or something. It's snow. He got snow. He, he got caught in a little crevice in the mountains in the snow, and they left him behind to die. Very awkward for any travelers uh, going in the opposite direction who now have to cro crawl over his frozen corpse. Yep. Um, they talk about another one that uh, fell to the wolves that they didn't help, and. We were joking on the recording, you'll see this when it eventually gets uploaded, that, uh, what if they just, like, saw the wolves and tossed one of their own to the wolves so they, they the rest of them could escape while the wolves tear this one Harfoot apart? Yeah. And um, again, their, their whole thing that they say to all these people, we wait for you. When they clearly don't. Like, <laughs> when they so, do the exact opposite, they run away and leave them to die. It's so psychopathic and fucking cultish that they're... Their way of memory, like remembering the people they left fucking behind, is we will wait for you. We wait it's, for you. It's like they're trying to gaslight the dead into believing that uh, what they did wasn't fucking terrible. So, Cree, would you like to put up my meme while we talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, give me. Yeah. Oh, oh, no! Wait a minute to grab you. Get back in place, fucking overlay image. Actually, you know what? I should probably lock that so I can't move that anymore. Yeah. Um, God, I just click into our Discord again. I see that fucking image Pagan posted. <laughs> uh, oh, God, where is it? There it is. Um, there's another one where they're, they're still going through the book and talking about those that have died before, and they mention this one Harfoot who died... And the cause of death is bees. 
and they all fucking start laughing about it. He always was an idiot. And yeah, like and they, they say he always was an idiot. It's like, what? yeah, and they don't explain anything else. It, it literally just sounds like this poor hobbit walked into the woods, maybe was trying to get something or something, and just got swarmed by a a, a bunch of bees and what? was stung to death. And died, and they're just like, oh, that's so funny. He's so stupid. He yeah, got mind, to be. Keep in mind, the time when that happened would have been fucking horrifying for everyone to watch. And it would have left behind a very ugly, bloated, discolored corpse. Yep. But, you yeah. know, haha, oh, that silly guy. Keep in mind, one of the people who is laughing is literally a guy whose ankle is broken and is about to be left behind by the entire caravan to die. And yep. he almost does. They almost do get left behind to die. It's only because Gandalf is there that they survive. Well, legally maybe distinct Gandalf. Gandalf. We, don't, we don't know for sure if he's Gandalf. Yeah, okay. We don't know for sure if it's Gandalf, but you know what I mean. For now, he's legally distinct Gandalf, just like they're legally distinct hobbits. Yeah. He's gonna be... Yeah. He's gonna be, um... The great and powerful Dolph Gan. That's what it is. There you go. <laughs> God. God, it's so fucking stupid because they're, they're setting up for a festival literally, like, the day before they're gonna leave. And the fucking uh, father of the main character of the Hobbits, Harfoots, whatever, uh, since she's not there to help him, he has to do it by himself, which is fucking stupid because there's a bunch of people around him just watching, not helping. Yeah. As he's pushing this big piece of wood up with a, with some others on the other end of a rope pulling it. But because he's by himself, he can't hold it up and they slip on the rope and he breaks his fucking ankle. And it's like, but they, they could have helped. Like, why was he the only one doing it? There's other people literally just mm. sitting there watching, not helping. They could have helped. <laughs> And then they start being like, oh, no, we're going to get left behind the caravan. And he's like, oh, no, don't worry. We're not going to get left behind. Meanwhile, the fucking show then goes on to show that, no, they do, in fact, just leave people behind. They don't help anyone. They won't yep. help it's, carry the wagon. The, the it's book not is just... literally, the book is literally called the, the Book of the Left Behinds. Yeah, it's not just that they leave people behind. It's the fact that it's, it's part of their fucking culture and they celebrate it. It's yeah. a fucking punishment for breaking their laws. You'll be left behind. Um, mm -hmm. You're laughing. You lost your man to a gruesome hive attack and you're laughing. Yep. <laughs> and then Gantard, Tistic Gandalf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gandalf. Yeah, it's so fucked, though. There's so much wrong with this fucking culture. It just doesn't make any sense. They don't make anything of their own that we can tell, other than, like, putting food in their hair and cloth, I guess. But everything else they fucking steal from other races. They celebrate leaving their own behind. Which, keep in mind, they're a very small society. There's not that much of them. So you would think it would be a good idea to actually try to help each other and ensure each other's survival, but no, they actively encourage leaving people behind to die, which is extremely fucked. They they won't help. They're like, yeah, no, we're not going to help you carry your cart or anything until your foot gets better. No, you, you and your whole family are just fucking dead, and we do not care. In fact, we're going to put you in our book, and we're going to laugh about it in about a year. It's like, what the fuck? These people are psychotic. It's insane. And then, yeah. they, and then we find out that they have a law that because – so apparently if you make friends with people outside of this small community, if you make a friend with somebody, that's technically giving away the existence of the community. So therefore, your punishment is to be exiled. You will be kicked from the caravan to die. And they almost consider kicking a child out of the caravan to die. But they yeah, realize it's, like, it's pointless when the caravan is going to fall behind and they're all going to die anyways. Yeah, yeah and anyways. I think that's the only reason that he your, ends your up... Your true punishment is that your caravan will be at the back. What do you yeah, mean? So the you back? will you be mean, You mean the back of the front group? What are we talking about? The back back! No, can I, can I be the back of the front group? It's like, oh my god. 
Well, he also yeah, said the back of the middle or something. It was completely pointless, yeah. stupid dialogue. Yep. Yeah, it's so fucking stupid. But it's so ridiculous because he... Because th there's the two old, like, nag w women or whatever who are like, Oh, yes, we must leave her! <laughs> leave her behind! <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, he's like, no, 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 hold on. She is still young. She does not have sense in her head, you know? And stuff like that. He's like, just says she does not have hair between her toes and on her feet. Which yeah, is which is weird. So he gives this excuse like, oh, but she's young. But then it, it it's completely invalidated. His mercy, if you want to call it that, is completely invalidated because he's then like, well, you're going to be at the back anyway. And your fucking father can't move the cart. So you're going to get left behind to die anyway. So it literally doesn't matter. So technically, you're still in the group, but you're going to die. It's like, it doesn't fucking matter. This whole society is fucking psychotic, is psychotic and makes no fucking sense. It is completely insane. Keep in mind, there's only like, what, 40 of them in this camp total? Exactly! Those, those are not survivable numbers, my friend, for your species. Yeah, yeah um, and they just willingly toss people to the fucking wolves and shit and just leave them behind to die. And they're just like, yeah, fuck it, we don't care. In fact, we're gonna laugh about it in a year during the festival. Um... Uh, I mentioned this in our recording. It's worth repeating here just for the audience. Um, like, it see you can almost see the strings in the background pulling this drama. It's, oh, uh, people are supposed to care about Nori, because that's the Harfa girl's name. Um, so we need to give, like, some some conflict to make people sympathize with her and care about her. What if... They're at risk of being left behind, and they could potentially die from this. Okay, let's let's write that into the story, and it it can't be just this one thing. It has to be established that um, it's something that happens. So by trying to build up this fucking tension, they just turn the entire society into complete psychos. It's insane. Are you guys sure this is not Acer Thor and Amazon script bot? God, I'm almost tempted to say he could probably write better. Yeah. And we've seen his horrifying fucking fanfiction. Oh, God. I I forgot that existed. I was happy not remembering that that existed. And then you reminded me, Satch, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The pain. But yeah, that is uh, the Harfoots in this wonderful, amazing show. I hate them so fucking much. Like, we legitimately thought Gladriel was going to be the worst part of the episode because she was constantly being a hostile cunt and staring everyone down and just being a complete piece of shit constantly. And then she we got... She threatens the queen. <laughs> she threatens the queen when they've been nothing but accommodating up until that point. Maybe not happy that she's there, but at the very least, it's like, yeah, they the, the Numenorians don't want her there, and she wants to go home. This seems like something that will be very easy to solve. And then she has to be a fucking cunt to the Queen and the Numenorians and causing a scene, and like, it, it's just insanity. And we thought that would be the worst. She pulled her dagger on a guy who is uh, made to watch over her, not even a guy who's done anything wrong. This is a man who pulled her out of the ocean and saved her fucking life. And she was ready to kill him. Until he was like, oh no, I'm on your side anyways. We thought that would be the worst of this episode. Mm. And then they decided to tell us more about the Harfoots. And we realized this is a society that just doesn't uh, deserve to exist. Yeah. God, then we got the fucking... The warg and the fucking... Oh my god, I just remembered, yeah, the whole fucking fact that their plan ends up not working because when they get out of the trench to run away, the dude gets shot with arrows, meaning there's an entire battalion of orcs on top above the trench walking along burning the forest, which means why the fuck are they digging a fucking trench? Yeah. <laughs> if you're just going to walk along the top anyway, why build a trench? I'm going to be turbo fucking mad if the only reason they took the slaves is to build the uh, trench, to dig the trench, so they could travel. 
even though it's slower than walking through the dark at night or in the trees during the day under the shade of the trees or sleeping during the day like i don't know what the fuck is going on but it is just so stupid it makes no yeah. sense it would be faster and stealthier to just walk through the trees rings of power is lord of the rings what sonichu is to sonic yeah almost it's it's still stupid. I don't know if it's Sonichu bad, but it is fucking insane. I hate it so much. <sighs> Anyways. Um, membership message for 11 months from Rage vs. ML. Thank you. Have you guys heard of a VTuber named Maya? She's doing a Dark Souls 3 playthrough right now. And she just finished a Bloodborne co-op playthrough. No, I oh, haven't heard right. of her. I hmm. have not heard of her. I have not heard of her either. Uh, membership message for 11 months from Peace Was Never an Option. Thank you. As a truck driver, I can confirm that Big Rigs is 100% accurate to driving trucks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. I believe you. <laughs> That's why you guys all drive in reverse, right? Yeah. Why do you think you hear that constant boop, 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 boop sound every time a truck is nearby? It's going in reverse, duh. $50 from Jylan Brunson. Thank you. Kretosis, can you explain to Setch why you think Halo Reach is the most biblical Halo game you have ever played? <laughs> and can Pagan... And Pagan, can you explain to Setch why you think the new Saints Row game is the most biblical game you've ever played? Um, no. No, because no. I haven't played the game. <laughs> and I haven't... I've played a bit of Halo Reach ages ago, but not enough to remember it. Five dollars from a guy under a bridge. Thank you. <laughs> Life-size Space Marine cosplay is just cardboard, my guy. By the way, Space Engineer or something made a very articulate set of power armor. Good times. Yeah, there's a lot of respect yep. for the people who make these highly intricate cosplays like holy shit yeah absolutely um five dollars from Jalen brunson thank you also the guy in the middle looks like he just got done watching breaking bad and now he makes his own drugs uh he called hey i know how original uh two pointing emotes at a horse emote yeah, horses eat hay, don't you know? Okay. Uh, I'll have to show that after. <laughs> $2 from Scoopmeister. Thank you, Urkel Tell Slapping Eli. I still want to see Urkel in the Sam Hyde chokehold pose. Uh, choking the fuck out of Eli. Holy shit. Five pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. My favorite part of the new Saints Row is when Setch wanted to give up on life. Seven out, seven out of ten, middle of... <laughs> hold on. Seven out of ten, middle of kicking the poison well of proof down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god. That was a miserable experience. Two dollars from uh, Holdra Dancer. Thank you. Uh, Saints Row, a real review. Delightfully restrained. Mm. <laughs> what? Somebody actually reviewed that? The new Saints Row is delightfully restrained? Yeah, it might be like, um... Oh god, what's the video game review site that's sort of like Rotten Tomatoes or IMDB? Uh, Metacritic. It could be the Metacritic review someone made. Yeah, fair enough. Five dollars from Light of the Twin Lamps. Thank you. Do you guys know of Rings, uh, Wings of Redemption, Dark Side Phil, or Low Tier God? Um, aware of all of them, don't really keep up with the deep lore behind them. I do know Low Tier God is the, uh, the gentleman with the lightning behind him in that one image. <laughs> Did you care to show the current fan art that Pagan just got? Well, that actually seems like, like a very appropriate time <laughs> yes, to show exactly. that, yes. considering the coincidence. Oh, I saw the Harford I... image up. Uh, yes, I channel low-tier god <laughs> almost every week. 
Well, we certainly uh, channel low tier god anytime we play Seven Days to Die and have to deal with Traitor Wrecked. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look, there's a lot of fictional characters I want to die. I really hope Traitor Rex swings from a fucking tree. <laughs> he sucks so fucking much. We got so unlucky with getting him as our fucking starter uh, traitor. Ugh. Like, we got lucky with the Horde base being right next to the, um... The mansion. Where we wanted to... Yeah, but God, did we suck with the fucking luck on getting the traitor. Ugh. Um, and then our second one was also a traitor wrecked. <laughs> yeah, that was fucked. I that that genuinely fucking bugs me. Yeah, we were starting to think that we only were gonna get traitor wrecked. Like every single traitor we go to is just gonna be traitor wrecked. Um, five. Sorry, ten dollars from Adam Riley. Thank you. Sitch, not Sech. Uh, <laughs> wrong person. Sitch is someone else. I've began my Halo lore dive. Any videos you can direct me to on how slash why reach damages canon slash lore. I've caught you mentioning it a few times on streams. I will finish my video when it's done. It's ready. I'll admit, it's definitely easier working on the Halo Reach video than it is the Dark Souls video. I think part of that's because I'm just focusing on the critical aspects of it, whereas the Dark Souls video, I'm going through the positives and negatives, so it's, it's much more of like a complete package and i feel like that i don't know i i don't know the tone to set for that kind of video to to make it interesting while going through all that information and explain like why this is a fascinating change they make why this this and that like explaining why estus is such a huge game changer of a system in comparison to grass because grass is what they use in demon souls so people would just farm the shit out of grass and they'd just be munch fights. Be people eating fucking salads every single PvP match. Gump, 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 gump. Uh, and now you have a limited system of heals and everything. And it was such a good system. Huldra Dancer in chat uh, answers the question about his super chat. Um, I believe it was IGN that said it was delightfully restrained. Don't quote me on that, though. All right. Um, yeah. Two dollars, uh, two Australian dollary dues from Deep Fried Lettuce. Thank you. I want to come inside Halo Reach. All right, then. Mm. Um, okay, I guess uh, I've already mentioned some of the gameplay problems with when it comes to Halo Reach, Adam, because Adam is like, can you at least give a sample? So some of the problems with it are the weaponry involved, right? This goes into the whole idea of weapons that are way better than what we have for both sides, by the way than what gets used later in the war. Like, because Earth gets attacked after Reach. This is this cannot be changed. Earth happens after Reach. But we have technology available to the Covenant that they didn't have in Halo 1 and 2 or 3. We have technology available to the humans that they don't have in Halo 1 or 2 or 3. Um, and then I guess gets into gameplay problems of like, this, a lot of these weapons are really, really fucking good. Like the grenade launcher that lets you... can You can prime how long you want to fire it for. So if you fire it, you then hold in the button, and then you can let it go and it will detonate it. And if you detonate it near a vehicle, it, it EMPs the vehicle, even if it's Covenant vehicles. Incredibly fucking useful. Like, Jesus Christ, it renders race and everything completely obsolete. Don't see it later on, right? And in terms of gameplay, it's a fucking grenade launcher, so it just wipes the floor with everything. You get lots of crowd control abilities, it's like having your normal grenade ability, but now you have one that's just better, and you could choose the timing of when it detonates. It's just, ugh. I fucking hate shit like that. Or the DMR, which is the rifle everybody wanted the battle rifle to be, but Bungie, the original team of Bungie, realized the battle rifle having a single shot mode was actually too strong. So they made it a three-shot burst um, to kind of nerf it a bit. Um, but the DMR is just, it's just not good. And part of the problem is, even in Reach, we still have this fucking annoying-ass issue where if you get hit, you de-scope. I fucking hate getting de-scoped so much. Instead of just getting hit and throwing off my aim a little bit, 
it de-scopes me. So if I'm trying to aim in on somebody, I get de-scoped and the entire sensitivity changes and I wildly shoot past my target of where I was trying to aim at. Very, very fucking annoying. And then we have the suit modules, right? The different Spartan suit modules. What, what is good about armor lock in Halo Reach's gameplay? What, what purpose does armor lock serve? Why would you never get sprint? Or, in another case, why not get the the, the jetpack? The jetpack is just better at everything. Oh, fuck it. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, and the as part of the gameplay, you get a bunch of new vehicles, but none of the AI seem to know how to properly use the vehicles at all. So you get like this warthog that has missile pods on it, and it's really, really fucking strong, but the AI doesn't have a clue how to fucking use it. And if you try to get in the backseat, naturally the AI tries to drive for you, and the AI tries to run people over. When this thing should be should stay back at range and plink away because it's so fucking strong. Mm. Um. Anyways, five dollars from. Uh, hold on. There you go. There's your yeah. There's a brief sample. Yeah, five dollars from Captain Professor Doctor Horatio Fallacio Flungus McDingus the Third. Thank you. Salve Flygets. Today's emperor is. Uh. I want to say honor, 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 honorius, because it starts with honor, H-O-N-O-R, but it also could be uh, honorius, because I don't know if it's like honor or, you know, honorius, like, you know, um, yeah. he's the worst duck him, duck him specifically and his chicken. Oh. <laughs> Ten dollars from Huldra Dancer. Thank you. About the car, I do know someone in real life that does have this dumb logic that held on to a falling apart piece of shit car because it's a family heirloom. It was my grandmother's. This person was not smart. But see, that's the thing. Even if you have, like, a really old car, you could still, like, get it repaired. Yeah. That's something you can make into a good vehicle, like... Even if you yourself don't do it, if you just put money into it, you can start upgrading it, make it nicer, make it usable again. But if you got the wherewithal and the know-how, you can do it yourself. That could become like a, a key project for you, of like rebuilding, you know, the legacy of, of your, your your grandmother or their grandmother, I should say. I just find it weird to like keep this car because it's a family heirloom, but not take care of it. Yeah, because it's falling apart. Five dollars from Ted Comet. Thank you. It's going to happen no matter what. So how long till people start tea posing the Queen's grave? And survive? That'll be the thing. Because I'm pretty sure they're gonna have like the the beef eaters and stuff like that. Will probably be watching over it. It's a royal grave, right? So. Hmm. I feel like that's a dangerous game. Yeah, that that seems like um, not the type of game you would really want to play to me. Ten dollars from Huldra Dancer. Thank you. Off topic, but thoughts on this statement? I find more to do in Fallout Three than Fallout New Vegas, and that's why I like Three more. Paraphrased quote came from a, fr a Frontier interview by Mike Burnfire. Quote was not from Mike. Um. How? How the fuck can you find more to do in Fallout 3 than you vi- Like, do you just like plundering random na like, dungeons with no quests associated with them? Yeah, because like, what- New what Vegas honestly, literally has several times the quests that Fallout 3 does. Yeah. That's, that's fucking weird. I think a lot of people who are big fans of Fallout 3 don't fully grasp the scope of how little content there is. Yeah. Or they've not to like, be condescending worked... or anything, but like Jesus Christ. Yeah, or or they've worked all their time with mods into the equation or something. I don't fucking know. A lot of people do conflate that kind of thing. Yeah. Um 
two super chats from Dailyokan for 10 Australian dollar reduce and 5 Australian dollar reduce. Thank you. Hello, Kretosis. Feeling a, dip, a bit depressed this year because of another franchise I love once again being uh, ruined by woke crap. This show hit me the most because I grew up watching the movies and playing the games. Very worried of what's going to be the next one to be ruined this year or after. Um, yeah, I understand why a lot of people would be feeling this way. I kind of feel this way too because I grew up with the movies. I remember, like, watching the original, the, the movies in theaters and being so excited for the next one coming out. And Yeah. Like, when when a kid that young has has that much of an excitement for like live action movies and stuff it, like goddamn yeah um it, it's very very unfortunate what is happening in our world currently as far as as far as media goes um yeah I don't know what else I can really say about that. It is just extremely unfortunate that we constantly have to see the things we like getting damaged and destroyed and yeah. bastardized. Finally, $2 from Tony Soprano. Thank you. Art is dead, guys. Rings of Power is the 9-11 of cinema, in my opinion. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say art is dead, but it's certainly not in a good place right now. There are people, there are people out there who are working on making something genuinely good. There's plenty of indie games out there that um, are coming up with new and unique ideas or uh, sequels to previous games that were good. Uh, Slime Rancher Two comes out this month, which is a neat game. Um, there's others I had in Wait, mind. We saw Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Elden Ring. It's still fantastic. Um, you've got Eric July's comic, Isom, that is uh, out that you can go buy. Um, that campaign is still running for a few days, I believe. Um, there's, there's definitely people out there who are working to make new stuff that is good or... At least they have the sense to not make something as bad as Bebop Flicks or Halo or Rings of Power. It's just unfortunate that the ultimate fate of any big franchise at this point is either to fucking die unfinished, um, turn into complete garbage like what had happened to Fallout because of incompetent writers, or... Just these weirdos pushing their agendas into whatever they're making and, and turning it into garbage. Like, I forget what series it is, but there's... It might have been Star Trek, I heard that it had this, but... Uh, women c can't be mentored or beaten by men in any situation. They, they can't gain their powers from men. It's like, why restrict your... like? In trying to not be sexist, it's actually being more sexist, which is weird. Like, y you could just write things to be good and not have to worry about any of these stupid fucking, well, we have to do this for the politics shit. It is so goddamn tiring. But, uh, we're done with the super chat, so that's all for today. Um... Thank you for coming out, everyone. Hope you had a good time. Hope you enjoyed these uh, two wonderful videos that have no problems at all with them. Uh... Oh yeah, Isom is going to fuck this industry. I love it. Fun the Ripovers. If they don't want to appease the fans, then we go to other companies or make our own. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Support the Ripovers. Um, at least if you guys are interested in comics. Uh, and yeah, that's all I've got for today, I guess. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Um, hope you're all doing well. Yeah. Hey, and hey, hopefully I'll see you guys over in my streams, and Pagan will start uploading, and maybe he'll see you over there, too. Right, Pagan? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, totally.
Re. Well, okay, I guess I guess I'm lying to the people, but hey, you can still come over to my streams. <laughs> yeah. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah, see you next time.